short ball. Babin moves back and pulls fastly past square leg. So this is victory. Victory to the Australians by eight wickets. He's got him. Got him. Oh, he's got two. Beautifully caught. Oh. He's done it. That is an excellent run. This has been a wonderful series. It's held our attention from first to last and it reaches its finale today. Welcome to the Sydney Cricket Ground and the fifth day's play in the final three mobile test match. A match that will be long remembered for stirring individual performances and for the McGrath family who have touched our hearts. Fantastic day we've got here too. Quite hot, a cloudless sky. Ian Healy, Healy is alongside me. Morning. Morning, mate. And you said yesterday, not only has it been a superb game of cricket, but as ever with the Sydney Test, just goes on and on. This Sydney Test is such a physical and an emotional draining uh, event, and it comes on the back of two Test matches in Perth and then Melbourne, and we've seen tempers fray, we've seen tension yesterday, and guess what? We've got a full day's play where both teams are still to be fully tested today. It is going to be extremely stressful for both teams. Does your instinct pick a winner? No, no, I cannot. It, it's just got to be ball by ball, hour by hour. Australia get early wickets, they're on top. If South Africa survive to lunch, they're on top. It's a beauty. All right, let's have a look at how it stands uh, overnight, because as Ian Healy says, it's quite well balanced. One for 62, the South Africans, needing a further 314 to win the match. Mixed views overnight about Ricky Ponting's declaration. I thought it was perfect. Outstanding declaration, and uh, I'm glad it happened. Some players in the team wanted to bat, get in and bowl early earlier but I think he can't do any better than that. The, the run total is just out of reach of South Africa which means they've got to survive but the Australians have given themselves enough time to bowl South Africa out. How about that yesterday evening the Australians let Dougie Bollinger lead them from the field of play. His first test match wicket is Mornay Morkel and is he going to add to that bag today here at the Sydney Creek Ground on this pitch. I've got Shane Warne and Tony Gregg with me. Boy, we are excited and how hot is it out here? Oh yeah, real hot. Yeah, look, if, if he doesn't add to it, he'd be disappointed because you know, I think the bowlers are going to quite enjoy this. But Warney, I, I suppose the first question is in this area which you love so much over the years, where McGraw used to churn it up for you <laughs> so that you could spin the opposition out. I mean, Oritz, is he going to play a role today? I mean. Yeah, I think he's got a huge role to play today. Every, all the talk has been about the fast bowls and the cracks. That's what it's all been about. And fair enough, you know, look at this wicket. And there's movement, there's big cracks and everything. But I'll tell you what, I reckon Nathan Horitz is the man today. He looked really good last night. I thought Ricky Ponting had some good fields to him. And there's enough here for him. We saw the odd delivery really turn. There's enough variable bounce. And I think he's going to be a real handful for the South Africans today. I reckon he's the man. What about you, Greggy? Well, no, no, I'm down here. I'm down this end. I'm down where all these nasty cracks are opening up here. Now, just to give you some idea of what happened here. When you've got a gentle medium pace, and with the greatest respect to McDonald, this little medium pace delivery, just watch this. McDonald comes in, hits the crack, 
just watch the reaction of the batsman, first of all, and the keeper. I mean, even the keeper's <laughs> taken a vase of action there. So, you know, really for me, that gets into the head. You can see there, he's got a very nervous little smile on his face. This actually shows us the difference between what happens to a ball that keeps low or ordinary ball and one that bounces. And so I really think that that is an issue today. It's just a question of which bowler hits him. So for me then, Siddle from that end, at yep. pace and full at off stump into the crack. Johnson starting from that end, bowling at uh, left-handers uh, and right-handers and utilising the looseness in that pitch. And for you, Nathan Horitz, into that rough stuff. Yeah, I'm happy for the quicks to start for a few hours, but don't hesitate to get Nathan Horitz. I think he looks real good. All right, so that's from Australia's point of view. Greggy? Are you South African today? Oh, the Springboks watch them today. <laughs> uh, you watch them today. Oh, look, I've been so excited about this. I mean, wouldn't it be lovely to see South Africa affect a clean sweep against oh. Australia? I mean, well. 120 years, they're oh. saying. But, uh, it's, it's, well, it hasn't been done yet for 120 years. I mean, Warnie doesn't even relate to what a clean up, sweep. Greg. He doesn't even know what it is, because when he played, <laughs> they kept winning. But, I mean, there's just a slim chance that JP Dermany can come out and do it again. Uh, there's some fighters in the South African side, and uh, I just think it would be a wonderful finish from their point of view. Uh, and look, I think it might just happen as well. I think South Africa have probably been the best side in the series so far. They've played extremely well. But I think today Australia romping. I think the conditions are in their favour. 2009 is a new year. They've had a clean slate. I think they'll be all over South Africa today like a cheap suit. And, but you know what? South Africa will fight like they have all day. Yeah, and all okay. Since. Quite an important thing for Australia because to me, uh, it's irrelevant whether it's the end of an era for the Australians. The point is it's the start of a new era. Mm. So quite important for Ricky Ponting with this young group to get into their head. You can beat South Africa and you can do so because you're going to South Africa soon and you've got to to even up this series. That's very, right. Very good point, that is. I mean, uh, this is a psychological test match yeah. for, for what's going to happen in the short uh, to medium term. I mean, there are another three test matches to go, plus a lot of one-day internationals. Yeah, and it's always nice to get something to say to South Africa. You know what? You might have won the series in Australia, but you know what? We can still beat you. Right. Coming from the master of the spin. <laughs> Is Daryl coming back too? <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, we'll take a break and be back for the live play. For over 20 years, Combank has been supporting women in cricket so that thousands more girls can. Combank, proud supporter of women in cricket. And it's good morning now to everybody around the world who joins us for the first time today. We've got a cracking day at the Sydney Cricket Ground. It's very hot, it's a cloudless sky. The game is set up. The South Africans are one for 62, needing a further 314 to win the test match and take a clean sweep and therefore go top of the world rankings. Waiting for us up in the commentary box, Mark Taylor, Tony Gregg and Bill Lurie. Thank you, Mark Nicholson. Once again, hello to all our viewers around the world. Mackenzie and my not out overnight, a partnership of 60. One for 62 after 26 overs. And from the members' end, that's going to be Bollinger to Neil Mackenzie. Mackenzie did well yesterday. He's very solid. Ricky Ponting with two slips of gully in this morning. Bollinger. Yes. Online, and he works it nicely for a single. Good morning, Mark Taylor. Yeah, good morning, Bill, and good morning to everyone at home. Absolutely vital first half hour this morning for me, particularly, I think, for Australia. That, they'd love to get a wicket. Probably goes without saying, but if they can get a wicket, particularly, I think, this man here, Amlar, he's a good player. He can score quickly. And if they can knock him over early this morning, they'll have the momentum. They'll have a, a greater belief in themselves. Would have loved to have got one or two more last night. Can only pick up that one wicket of Morkel. Whoa, off the crack. Took off. But that won't worry the batsman too much. It was short. But it's a very hot day, and I think that will favour the batsman. It's going to be a hard work for the bowlers. Horace has got a big job to do here. The spinners don't have to bowl a lot of overs if they don't break through with the new ball. There it goes. Wow. Took off a mile. It's very short. Hit the crack and taken in front of slip. Now Doug Bollinger should bowl a few more there, actually. Might loosen that crack up for when bowling from the other end. That crack's in a really good spot when you're bowling from the, the southern end of the ground. That's a bit of line. And good morning, Tony Gregg. Good morning, Bill. Yep, it's uh, going to be a tough one, this. South Africa won for 63.
That's a warm welcome to our Queensland viewers to a very warm day here in Sydney as well. That's the uh, view looking across the city. Uh, really lovely blue skies and temperatures in excess of 32, I'd say, out there even as we speak. South Africa starting on one for 63 on a pitch that's uh, cracking up a little bit. We've already seen one or two move off the cracks. It's going to be tough for the batsman. It is, but I thought their coach summed it up beautifully. We'll bat to T with as few wickets as possible and have a look. <laughs> they need 313 to win with 90 overs at least to be bowled. And a lightning fast outfield. Don't forget value for shots here at the Sydney Cricket Ground. Two gullies now. One slipped. Well, the New South Welshman in the crowd and the ladies yesterday went absolutely bonkers when Bollinger got a number nine. <laughs> hey, number two. <laughs> Opened the batting yesterday, Bill. That'll do you say it was an opening batsman that got out. Second ball, that was Mornay Morkel. He bowled well, I thought, in the first innings without taking a wicket. And uh, came out, well, that was really a loosener. Ball on leg stump, leading edge. Mitchell Johnson did well again, though. Good athlete, isn't he, Johnson? Great moment for Bollinger. It's like your first runs. It's charging in now. Well played. No ball called. Yes, these, uh, these no balls uh, are a bit uh, irritating, aren't they? Just one for 64. Now the uh, the score. Just looking at the, the no balls. Two to Johnson. And now one to Bollinger. Sorry, it's two wide balls to Johnson. Just the one no ball so far in the innings bowled by Bollinger. Interesting feel with those two square gullies for Amlar. Well bowled and well played. A good over. One for 64. Peter Siddle to open the bowling. South Africa about $11. $11. That's about the price they were in the first two tests at one stage as well. And they went on to win both of those. So something to think about if you're a punter. I feel the Australians would be very disappointed that they don't bowl them out today. Fifth day pitch. There'll be some wear and tear. McKenzie facing Peter Siddle. Five for 59 in the first inning, Siddle. He's got his tail up. Way down leg side. The South Africans will want a good start. Both these batsmen are uh, good defensive players. They'll try and get forward. And Peter Siddle will be trying to hit that crack on off stump and be consistent. The law of averages say you're going to get a low one or a, a, one or a fire today. Well, that's what I was going to ask both of you. Um, I mean, sitting up here watching uh, these two out there at the moment and uh, bearing in mind the attack that the Australians have got, uh, a little bit inexperienced. Um, do you think the South Africans have got a a chance here I don't really think they can win but having said that I, I just don't like this field placing at the moment I think it should be a, maybe a bat pad in here I don't think Ricky should be defending runs at this stage of the day I think he should be really going for the jugular before the batsmen are set maybe that man of square leg come into bat pad and maybe mid on come up to a short mid wicket just to put a bit more pressure on Mackenzie who's playing well within himself at the moment Look, I think South Africa can win. It's going to be extremely tough. But as Mickey Arthur said, if they can get to T without losing too many wickets, then they can have a real dash at something after T. Because there'll be, you can just about bet the way the overs have been bowled, there'll be 35 overs after T. So with that in mind, if, own, if they only lose, say, a couple of wickets, and they're three down, and they add you know, 150, for example, so that's going to make them, say, 220 for three at T. They could then come out and say we can get 150 or 35 overs after tea and make it like a one-day game. I tell you, if they win, Mark, Australia got four wickets in the second innings at the Wacker for three, 414. They got one for 183 at Melbourne. Heaven help us. Yeah, if, if they win, I was going to say, if they win um, at the moment, uh, they need 312 on this pitch. Boy, it'll be a huge credit to the South African batsmen, but uh, there will be some serious questions asked about the bowling. Look, I, I think if Stuart Clark was playing, for example, I would give them 
almost no chance because I think Stuart Clark would bowl beautifully on this type of wicket, particularly bowling for Peter Siddle's end. He's got that higher action, whereas Siddle's a bit more of a skid bowler. And I think he would be hitting that crack that we talked about, which is about seven metres from the stumps. And that's about the spot where Stuart Clark bowls four or five balls per over in that area, a bit like McGrath used to. I think it'd be nine impossible if he was playing. The standout for me, guys, is the fact that we're going into the fifth day again when anything can happen. It's been a great series. It's been twists and turns and even today nobody's really sure what's going to happen yeah it's interesting the groundsman actually concedes too that um he started this pitch just a little bit too dry uh, and i think he is seriously thinking about what he does in the future in respect of these strips of grass that he lies that he lays on the pitch i think he probably realizes that a, a meter two is a bit too narrow he doesn't want those snake cracks running down the pitch it's a run. It's one for 65. We've talked a lot about the pitch, but the outfield is absolutely superb for straight players and for the fieldsmen. Always dreamed as a boy to get onto one of the big grounds and have those nice flat outfields where you can pick the ball up. And this is certainly in great condition and good run for the stroke players. Bollinger. Mackenzie getting well forward. Just watching Peter Siddle there finish his last over, or his first over of the day. Just did a bit of a stretch at the end of this last delivery. Just wonder if he's not a little bit stiff from yesterday's bowling. Just there. Just stretching out those hamstrings again after bowling yesterday. And that's been the problem for Australia throughout the series, is backing up after a good day of bowling. In Melbourne, they had an outstanding day, day two, bowling. And they couldn't come out day three, even though they had seven wickets down and bowl South Africa out. That's his first over there today, around about the mid-130s in, in terms of speed. Now, if he builds it back up to over 140, that's OK. But started slowly at the moment, feeling a bit stiff. Got to make sure he finds his rhythm and gets up towards that maximum speed. Not good enough. Your first over should be your fastest. At this level, I remember Ray Windor saying he worked out in the rooms and his first ball had to be his fastest. Not necessarily his best, but make the batsman aware that he's going to be very, very sharp. Having said that, I think it's a patience game for Peter Siddle and all the Australian bowlers here today. Just hit line on length. Don't panic. The odd bouncer may be, but just... I'm just a little bit surprised he didn't open with Mitchell Johnson, to be honest. From the members end Ricky Ponting yes I would have thought that uh, from a South African batting point of view they wouldn't have uh, wanted Johnson on first so it uh, always gives you a bit of an indication I mean what it does is it uh, gives you an opportunity at the end of the day to bowl him if needed as well get him get him in early give him some short spells <laughs> That's going to be the key, I think, for Ricky Ponting as well. Patience, as you mentioned, Bill, but also not to over-bowl his bowlers early on. It is going to be warm there. They're talking about 34, I think, as a maximum temperature. And that's probably in the shade. So it'll be something close to 40 out there in the middle of the day today. Short, sharp spells for his quicks so they can continue to strike. And they've got some freshness about them if and when Australia take a wicket. And they can bowl at that, at that new batsman. So that happens did the right thing this morning too. They used the heavy roller. And the first half hour it should play at its best. Sold it a little bit. And I don't ever believe the heavy roller does any damage to a pitch in Australia. They're so hard. The ball eye in Merry Creek soils. And uh, the ball come onto the bat much better in this first half hour. I had a quick word with Mickey Arthur yesterday, the coach of South Africa, and he mentioned that he saw Ricky Ponting use the heavy roller in Australia's second innings and saw what happened to the pitch. And he agreed that they may have erred South Africa by using the small roller in the first innings. And it did get a little bit up and down on day two. Maiden, one for 65. 
South Africa needs 311 to win. I must also realise we've had three tough test matches in three weeks, which does make it tough for the fast bowlers in particular to come up, and also for the concentration of the batsmen. Mickey Arthur's had a wonderful tour. The fielding of the South Africans in the first two test matches was the difference between the two sides. Yeah, I think that's also a fair comment. They, uh, they caught beautifully, didn't they? There's no doubt about that. And um, as a result of uh, taking all those catches, well, then what's uh, Katic looking for? Trying to get the attention of the captain. Yes, as a result of taking all those catches, uh, you're dead right. They got themselves ahead. The Aussies, of course, put a few down, which made a big difference. Just getting a feel of each other at the moment, the bowlers and the batsmen. Runs. Pick up two. Well, from the batting point of view, I'm sure they're saying to themselves, play a natural game. If you get a half bowl or a long hop, put it away, defend the good balls, and just take our time. <clears throat> the thing that I've liked from the South Africans' point of view is, is the approach to this whole series. It, they've been much more relaxed. Uh, They've been happy with conditions. They've been delighted about being here. They're actually even giving the crowd a, a thanks. Previous, not just South African touring teams, but touring teams coming here generally, generally find reasons that they're not playing well. Something's not right. The pitch is not right. Um, now the, the outfield doesn't need watering, all sorts of things. They find problems that, that aren't there. South Africa have been much more relaxed and I think subsequently have played good cricket. Yes, I think Graham Smith's been the key. That, that hundred at the whack on his leadership, he's catching in the slips. Wow. History will show 2-0 on the scoreboard at this stage, but it's been closer than that. Really has. Oh, there's no doubt about that. It's been a fantastic series, actually. Really has, uh, with the Australians dominating day two, getting themselves into a good position, then all of a sudden um, things slip for them, both test matches that they lost. And uh, of course the reverse happened to the South Africans, uh, they bounced back well and fought well. That's the line, maybe just a fraction more towards our stump it. He gets caught on the crease, am I, sometimes. He doesn't take the big step forward like Mackenzie does. <clears throat> uh, slowly on the improve, that pace. <clears throat> you see, he's, probably average speed would be round, <clears throat> round the high 130s, maybe 140. Quickest ball, 145. So you'd like to see him just build it up towards that next line there, the 140Ks, and hitting the pitch hard. It's one for 67. Beautiful day in Sydney. Once again, the weather's been magnificent for this third and final test match. Oh. Going, for, going for the full shot, doesn't get it properly. Goes to ground, luckily for Mackenzie. Weather's always nice up here, Bill. Pretty sunny, sunny weather, and there's Dougie Bollinger's paces so far today. Also, slow to start, but so I don't mind that so much, provided it builds back up to that sort of 140k area again. Clear skies again. No ball called. Yeah, well, we're uh, heading off to, to Melbourne. Not quite uh, so certain that the skies will be uh, absolutely blue there, but the truth of the matter is there'll be some fantastic cricket. And a big crowd. And a huge crowd. Oh, yes. Uh, if Bill Laurie's got anything to do with it, there'll be uh, a huge crowd there, and uh, always is. Uh, 75,000, perhaps 80,000. So the atmosphere on Sunday in Melbourne is going to be just sensational. Ticketmaster, uh, the, there's the number for you, and also uh, their uh, web address.
it mightn't be a bad idea to pop in there and uh, secure a good seat. strikes Mackenzie going wide and Hussey takes a very good catch yes Mackenzie just threw his bat in the air there and uh, no doubt pretty disappointed he wanted to be part of this fight back not a bad delivery from Bollinger it uh, it just bounced a little bit but oh boy he was stretching a long way and uh, it was nicely taken by Hussey so Bollinger has another one and uh, well, Mackenzie on his way. Caught Hussey, bold Bollinger for 27. It's two for 68. Well, another wicket has fallen. It's two for 68. Doug Bollinger on debut, getting a big wicket. Neil Mackenzie getting an edge, and Hussey taking a good catch in the gully. <coughs> One of the best all-rounders in the world at the crease now, Jack Callis. Had a good series, but hasn't made a big score. Wow, big moment in the game, this. Mickey Arthur mentioned that he thought Jack Callis was one of the keys to this game today. He's a sort of player who can bat for a long time, could bat for a draw, could also make a big score to win the game. Well bowled, right on the money, Doug Bollinger. He was a bit late there, Callis. Well, that was a good piece of bowling, not just that delivery. I thought the one that got McKenzie was an excellent piece of bowling. I reckon it swung away a bit, went a bit wider of the crease and just took it across him. Excellent piece of bowling. Shortened him up early on in the over and then just pushed that one wide of him, swung it away. Really good piece of bowling. And the move to use Dougie Bollinger first up has worked. Loose shot. Playing at a wide ball there. Sure, that's the, exactly the what place to bowl. I mean, because we have seen a few South Africans get out in that uh, fashion. It's a similar delivery. Callis just getting a little further across to cover it properly. So uh, this is Hussey in the background. They're taking the catch beautifully. No problems. The trouble is, Mackenzie, they were so far in front of his pad with his bat, he was... Long way in front of his body, but full credit to the bowl. He drew him into the shot. Good sharp catch. That's the two slips of gully, short cover. Point in the mid-off on the offside. <laughs> Carlos has got a tremendous defence. He's looked solid all, all summer, really. The first in is he played a shocker. Consistent without really firing into the big scores. Was about Fine over, two for sixty eight. Pressure really on Amwar and Callis now with the four that early wicket. Siddle charging in. Cuts, cuts hard. Four runs. Bad ball, great shot. Yeah, good. Well, that's exactly what they've got to do. That's uh, Shaman Jardim. She's uh, Jacques Callis's partner. And uh, very happy with that cut shot. Despite the fact that it was uh, made by Hashim Amla. It's um, Mitchell Johnson's uh, partner in the middle. Nathan Horrocks's wife, Di, in uh, the dark dress, black dress. Another four. That's beautifully played. He's a wristy player. I think one day this guy's going to 
be a superstar. He's uh, betting on a pitch that's got a bit in it. He's still playing his shots. Yep, two great shots, but balls are short and wide. And uh, Hashim Amla has shown us right throughout this summer, you bowl short and wide, well, you'd expect most quality players to put that away. You just cannot bowl there. Particularly this guy, he's a really good-looking player. He's, he's improved a lot, I reckon, since last time I saw him. He plays that shot particularly well, doesn't he? And he also drives through the covers particularly well. They've got a man on the drive there, two men, one in the gully and one at backward point. And that's what I like about him. He can play off the back foot, but he's very quick as well to get onto the front foot when the ball's well pitched up. He's a good batsman to watch because he really does look to hit the ball and hit it firmly. Even that last ball, he changed his mind at the very last split second to play a defensive shot. I think his original thought was to play another one of those drives. He's already hit five drives to the offside and one straight back pass. But watch him here. He's thinking four and then he goes, oh, no. then I'll just hold back on that plays it firmly to cover. Yeah, that's well played too. Uh, the ball is uh, pitching around about those uh, little cracks there and uh, he's been hit on the glove by a delivery from McDonald, which uh, would have stirred him up just a little bit, getting the screen moved a little bit. That's well played. This field, they scamper through, safely home. Well, even that shot there, it was changed his mind late. I think it may have been in the air just fractionally, but. Simon Case doesn't dive on that ball, it's four more. Just beautifully hit. Kadic has to work particularly hard to keep it one. You're right about it being in the air just for a little while. That's what he's got to be careful of. That's why they've got that man in there. Callis, right behind the line, two for 77. Good start by Australia in the first half hour here at the Sydney Cricket Ground. They picked up the big wicket of Mackenzie for 27. Bollinger now to Amla. Nicely played, but straight to square leg. It looks to me as if uh, Hashim Amla is trying to get... Uh, it crossed and gate that uh, problem of the ball going across towards slip. So if he, he gets across just outside that off stump, he'll know when to leave the ball. What he doesn't want to do is play at the wide deliveries. They've got uh, fieldsmen absolutely stacked in that uh, gully area. Now those are the fieldsmen there. These two in there, one there and one there. And they've also got one on the drive in that area. Oh, shot. Not quite to the pitch of the ball, but it'll be four more. Best way to save a match is to play a natural game. Well, this will be good to watch because Hashim Amla is not going to put that shot away. He loves the drive, he loves the, the shot through point, but as Tony Gregg just pointed out, there's, there's a catching cover, there's two men in the gully, so Doug Bollinger will try and swing that ball or at least angle the ball across the right-hander. If Amla is looking to play his shots, you'll see boundaries, but you may just see a chance as well to one of those catching men. Well, that one stayed down a little bit and he adjusted very well and very quickly. Boy, uh, right at this moment in time, he looks the man, doesn't he? 45, he's got eight fours already. That's where Bollinger is bowling at the right-handers this morning. This one's staying down a fraction. Hit it well enough. Front foot... Going straight down the pitch on that occasion. Bollinger doing a good job here. 
Gone for four more. Oh, that's great cricket. Goes to 40. That was short and it was wide. And he went bang. Yeah, once again, there's cries of catch. It was in the air. But, uh, this is going to be good because uh, I'm sure the Australians will feel they are a chance, and they are. He's playing in this way, but also very dangerous because he can score lots of boundaries. Got to be another man in that uh, in that catching area. He's got a slip and two gullies. This is the guy he needs out. He gets uh, Umla out, caught in uh, that area where he looks a little bit vulnerable. Then uh, they really will be well placed. Fifty second of the match. It's well played. Hashim Omar got a rough decision in the first innings. I thought LBW. Well, he didn't even realise it. It shows how much he's concentrating. He's uh, raised his bat now, and uh, boy, he has played superbly. Every time we see him bat, he looks better. He's uh, one of those players too who doesn't mind what the situation's like. He's uh, going to play his normal game. Bollinger's still shaking his head. Oh, well bowled. Two for 86. Two for 86. And Shane Warren, Michael Sader, and Mark Nicholas take up the commentary. Thank you, Bill. Bollinger, Bollinger, what pleasure that will give him and uh, the people of New South Wales, particularly those who come to the Sydney Creek ground, watch the Blues, and uh, now there's a chance for Victorians to celebrate as Andrew McDonald comes into the attack. There's certainly enough out there to suggest that the bowlers can hold sway today and Australia can get this win that uh, Tim Nielsen pointed out before play they so needed. Once again, an unusual field set. McDonald to Amla. Oh, yes, the field Mac. is uh, just a single slip, very wide, almost at third slip is Matthew Hayden. Then a short cover and a short mid-wicket. And an extra cover that's uh, edging closer and closer. They're the attacking fielders. People dotted around all over the place. Donald just at uh, ordinary medium pace. It's a good stop. For a moment, I thought it was going to carry. It's uh, McDonald continuing the plan he employed uh, yesterday and in previous spells during the match, just stump to stump, getting very straight, trying to get a bolder LBW. On that occasion, gets a bit wide, and Ambler did well, didn't he? he? Went to the ground very quickly. That's wider than McDonald wants to bowl. Oh! For anybody that wasn't here in the first half an hour before play began, Michael Slater was over with Yabba. Down with uh, Stephen Harold Gascoigne, what used to be the old hill and is now the new Victor Trumper stand. He's a bit of a lone ranger today. It's. Uh, Quite quiet down there. <laughs> but uh, you had some fun. It's a good sculpture, isn't it? I just think it's a fabulous idea. And he was such a character in the days when there was no one really yelling out. And I think that's why he was such a character then. He, he passed away in 1942, but he was uh, just so well known. He had some great one liners and we we're down there. And Tubby and I really enjoyed it this morning. But I think I know what's just about to happen. A slight mishap. <laughs> and typical TV, the camera's always rolling. <laughs> oh, well, thank you to Rob, our director, for showing that. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> Very good, Mac. With a sore coccyx. And the sunglasses never come off, Slats. <laughs> Good, 
Sorry, yeah. Slats, but it just had to be done. It's two for 86. <laughs> Ricky Ponting, Alan Border, Stephen Waugh, the three Australians who have made 10,000 test match runs. And that's a special bit of memorabilia. You can call 1300 720 552 or visit the website. And there aren't many of these left. Uh, in fact, fewer than 35 of them left. And it commemorates their wonderful achievement. So get onto that quickly if you fancy one of those bats signed by three of the most special Australian batsmen. And the man facing for South Africa, Jacques Callas, only needs 16 more runs to get that, to join that club, 10,000 runs, to go along with his 250-odd wickets too, which is an amazing achievement from him too. There you go, 9,984 runs at 54, 50, 50s and 30 hundreds. And how South Africa would like to make that 31 hundreds for Jacques Callas today to get a big score. Well, there are some stories on the back page of the paper. Oh, Callas has done well to stay in control of that stroke. Just bounced a little awkwardly for him. Mind you, he hasn't done as well as Peter Siddle because if he's kept that in play, that is it's a tremendous effort. He's going at full tilt. I think he might have kept it in play. Deft touch and a lot of commitment. And the Michael Slater wobbles after he stopped it. <laughs> I think that looks pretty good. And so does the wobble. Look at that, that tumble. <laughs> and he didn't lose his sunnies either. A lot of skill required for that warning. <laughs> but great effort there from the youngster. That was one of the headlines that we just read, wasn't it? The rookies. Need to stand tall, this Australian attack. There's about 20 test matches between them. You know that Dougie's on his uh, debut. Peter Siddle in India recently. Mitchell Johnson not that long ago. So much responsibility for the youngsters today. And I, Australia should win from here. There, there's no doubt about that for me on the pitch and everything that's going their way, the lead. And if they don't, there's already been a lot of questions asked, but if they don't win today, it's going to be uh, even more pressure on the selectors and uh, what's going wrong with Australian cricket. There's no doubt for me Australia should win this and it'll be through, uh, it'll be hard work. It will be hard work at times, but everything running Australia's way. Or it should. Saw Mitchell John affect brilliant run out of AB de Villiers in the first innings. He had too much to do on that occasion. It's two for 91. 40 minutes this session, one for 29. Dougie Bollinger took the wicket of Neil McKenzie, caught by, nicely caught, neatly caught by Michael Hussey. I'm getting a bit of stick for inventing a new player called Mitchell John. <laughs> Mitchell Johnson at mid on. Well, obviously, the son of Mitchell John. Andrew McDonald's been quite good with the ball. As I mentioned, he's only at medium pace. He's not unlike the former South African captain, Hansi Cronio. Bounds in, tries to hit the same sort of spot with a little bit of movement both ways. He's, he's aiming specifically at a crack here. He hit it yesterday when he bowled to Hashim Amla. And that might have been it. That exaggerated response from Jacques Callis suggests the ball went rather further and quicker than he thought it might. Well, it's a good guide for him, isn't it? Runs straight down the line of uh, just outside off stump. And on these pitches, it can be harder at times if the bowler's running in, hitting the deck, hitting it a little bit shorter than a good length. 
because some will stay down, some will jump, bounce normally, some will jump up like that one, some will move. But if a bowler gets too full, then nullifies any sort of wear in the pitch. So really important that the Australian bowlers, I think, hit the deck hard. Try and bowl the bouncer. Some will get up, some won't. And they could fall into the trap of just getting too full at times. Just waiting a minute here while Simon Kadic gets some protective equipment because he's coming in a silly point on the offside. Guys, have you, and I don't want to feel we're getting into Tom Parker, the curator here, too much, but have you ever seen a pitch look as dry as that and as rough as that? Oh, look, obviously, 17 years of playing here at international level, I've never seen so many cracks here in Sydney. We've seen a couple of pitches that haven't looked that good, but have played really well. But look, there's been some cracks and there's all those types of things and balls have done things off it. But the other thing is, it is still into day five and there's still three results available. So as much as we see the cracks... cricket from McDonald. The ball sort of hung in the air. Now Cannis is hanging around because he's uncertain, but Bowden's given him out. He's going to have to go, I think. Now, no, Bowden's changing his mind now. I'm going to have a word with a so good a silver. I think Callis is just saying, did you catch it? He wants McDonald to say that he caught it, and then Callis is happy to go. Now, this is one the umpires can make a decision on. They both should have had a clear view. There shouldn't be a need to refer it. I think McDonald is now talking to Callis, away to the right, but Bowden is going to look for uh, another opinion. I, th I think it was good sportsmanship from both. I think Jacques Callis was happy to go if he said he caught it. He said, did you catch it? And Andrew McDonald said, I'm not, not actually sure. So I think it's good sportsmanship from both parties, and hopefully the umpire can make a decision. Oh, and think of what rides on this particular dismissal. It's Callis. He's been earmarked as the real anchor for the South Africans. He's the big wicket for Australia, and we're going to get to... A closer look right now. Oh, does that finger get between the turf and the ball? I think it does. I think that's wedged. Catch for me. Well, I think you're right, and, and it's because of that angle. But I think if the third umpire goes on the first angle, it's going to be very difficult. And so often, so often that super slow-mo makes it harder. Now we're going to magnify it a bit, and that, of course, doesn't look out. And this is the problem we've often had about the camera foreshortening the image it, it's two-dimensional and it, it flattens it out and that doesn't look good I, I really do think that's out but i'm worried what the third umpire might think his fingers are definitely underneath that ball and i think it's shown from the back angle from the front on one here it doesn't look that good but I, from the back angle his fingers are definitely underneath the ball that's out he's not sure and the uh the area of ball you can see it might just lead to some doubt for the third umpire. Did it make contact at any time at the same time? I, I, you, you can see how they could go one way or the other. I think it's a catch. I really do. And for McDonald, he would feel the wedge. Out is the decision. It doesn't have to be shown on the big screen. It's just communicated back to the umpires. Jacques Tallis caught and bowled by Andrew McDonald. It is a brilliant bit of cricket. His reaction here is in his follow through, he completely changes course. Absolutely brilliant. Callis, what a huge moment this is. Gone for four, it's three for 91. Drama at the Sydney Cricket Ground. Jacques Callis is out. Caught and bowled by Andrew McDonald. One of those decisions that might on another day have gone the way of the batsman. But it is a huge wicket. Callis is such a good player and such a stayer. Now A.B. de Villiers, the hero of Perth, who's been strangely quiet since Perth. And we've seen that crack take effect. McDonald is accurate and he's hitting it. Yeah, and he got the length right. That's what was difficult for Callis. He was sort of squared up at the end. He got through a shot, leading edge, and it just hung in the air for long enough. Just long enough for McDonald to dive and get that finger under it, but it was hitting the deck. And uh, he's done well, because in the follow-through, he's coming off the pitch, and then he has to make the opposite movement. Great stuff. I think everything about that what happened then was spot on. I think Andrew McDonald wasn't quite sure. Jacques Callis, all he did was ask, did you catch it, mate? 
Andrew McDonald said, I'm not quite sure. Billy Bowden's first reaction was out. The third umpire then had a look at it. There was no, he thought it was out as well. It had to be something major for him to change that. And he went with Billy Bowden's first reaction, which was out. So I don't think there was anything wrong. And the right decision was made. And that was, he got his fingers under the ball. It was out. That was Ponting's athleticism to try to get involved there if McDonald couldn't get to it. That's a good stroke for nothing. A wicket maiden from McDonald. It's three for 91. Oh, well, Australia have started well today. Three out now. The two today, McKenzie and uh, Callis. Um, let's play very nicely for 51, but it's not easy out there. A.B. de Villiers, since Perth, has faced 104 balls and scored 18 runs. So he's not in Nick. That's a, a strange demise for a man who played so particularly well in Perth. Mitchell Johnson now coming into the attack instead of Bollinger. And there will be no respite for the South Africans with Johnson, who's been uh, the bowler of the series from the Australian point of view. And so hard for the new batsman. I know they were both new bats, and Amler had to start again today. Callis, but he's got it relatively early on the final day here in Sydney. But so hard for AB de Villiers to get in here. It'll be uh, Amler on strike now, though. A slip and two gullies to go with that man at short extra cover for Amler, who's a beautiful driver of the ball through extra cover and square cover. And with the uh, uneven bounce, there's a chance that he'll drive in the air. That's why the field's set as it is. I just want to look at the wicket one more time, and it's more the shot that Callis is attempting to play. Getting the bat across the line, and, and that's a no-no a on a pitch like this. You, you need more of a, a straight bat looking to hit in the V. And so all in all, there was some doubt over the catch. We all think it's uh, been taken cleanly. But the reason the catch was presented was because Callis was playing across the line. And already A.B. de Villiers in that next ball, or the first ball he faced, straight down the, through the line of the ball. I think this is a very clean catch, no problem. I reckon he's got at least an inch between uh, the turf and, and uh, the fingers. What is telling is the point you made. Ricky Ponding scrambling behind him. He was in there trying to uh, get, get involved in the catch as well. Look at Ponding's movement. You wonder what this day means to the skipper of Australia. Well, have a look at him go. <laughs> he's got the perfect view. And he just has a look, actually, Ricky, doesn't he? As if to say, he's caught that, hasn't he? Yes, he has. I'm happy. And he's gone and patted him on the back. Lovely stroke for no run. The field is set to make it very hard for Amla. And just the, the final point on this one. Billy Bowden, you know, we've had a go at him a couple of times about some LBs. But watch the position he gets in as an umpire to have a look at it. He crouches down. He's right in a position. He's trying to see past Ricky Ponning. And his first instinct... <laughs> he saw was out as well as an umpire he actually gets in a very good position to have a look and he could clearly see it before ricky dived across he could see i have to say it but well done billy and well done hashi mamla finding the space at mid wicket again yeah and i think asoka de silva should have had a clear view from square leg i, I think that is one that needn't have been referred but clearly these days with the third umpire available the umpires out in the middle are very reluctant to make a decision if uh, there's someone who can use the camera and the replays to make certain of it. Two from that Mitchell Johnson over, it's three for 93. KFC Pulse and 77% of you out there reckon, yep. Callis was correctly given out. Your lucky number, 23%. Answer sure, Warney. Yeah, no doubt it was out, but 23%. Jesus, early in the morning in South Africa, some long distance calls. Clearly out. <laughs>
gee, that's a good take by Haddon. That was a leg cutter because it hit something on the on the pitch, and he's uh, reacted beautifully to that one. Just a little bit wide from McDonald. Again, he's looking to really be lining up with that off stump, middle stump, time and time again, hitting the deck hard, getting to shoot low, maybe bounce a little bit more. Terrific take by the wiki. Oh! You sure own your corn as a wicket keeper when you're standing up to the stumps to a medium pacer on a pitch that's as uneven as this because you're going to have to make sacrifices. You're going to have to accept occasionally that there may be some buys or some bits of ill fortune that go against you. You're, you're less worried about that than you are about the effect you're having for the team. But Haddon is brilliant with his hand-eye coordination. A lot of what he does behind there will be in instinctive. Or is it Ian Healy? That profile shot, that could be heels. Dead ringer, I reckon. He's definitely watched some footage in slow motion, some footage of Ian Healy, that's for sure. A lot of similar mannerisms to Ian Healy. And does mind a chat behind the stumps like heels as well. Pretty well played. De Villiers is quick between the wickets and will ensure that he gets a couple. Hamler would have made it home, and I'm not sure that McDonald necessarily appreciated <laughs> just how uh, hard that throw was from Mitchell Johnson. He's got a fantastic arm. Whoosh. That is some arm. Three for 95. First signs of uh, some cloud today in Sydney, but it's a maybe even a hotter day than yesterday, which was the steamer here at the Sydney Cricket Ground. Just a... Uh, may look as if it's just a handful of spectators but actually the the noble down beneath us here is uh, not quite full but not far from it and uh, all the covered parts of the members the ladies they're full as well and people keen to get out of the sun that's the noble and then we swing around to the members pavilion and then the ladies and if you look back into the bowels there under cover Barely a seat available. He had to get the skates on there. Michael Clark's got a good arm as well. Yeah, well, it's going to be... Uh, uh, it's another intriguing day in the series, and it's just been so wonderful to see the number one ranked side against number two live up to the hype. There was so much anticipation prior to this series. And it's certainly lived up to that. And that's what I think has been so wonderful for the test match form of the game, which is uh, under a little bit of pressure at the moment, isn't it? To keep being competitive and keep appealing to the, the masses. It's all right. Oh, wow. Only just all right. I don't think De Villiers could have had any idea where that ball was. At first, it looks as if it might pop up in the air to the short leg or the gully. But in fact, it drops over his shoulder and is not far from these stumps. That's oh. why it's so close, but that's why the short ball is so effective on these dry up and down pitches. AB de Villiers thought, oh, it'll, it's flying off safely somewhere. It nearly landed on top of the stumps. Always a good delivery and a good option on these sort of wickets. De Villiers had absolutely no idea where that was. It's as cool as a cucumber. What? It was three inches away, that's all right. He's such a different figure at the crease from the one who played so well in Perth. 
That's much his best stroke. In Perth, he had such authority about him and, and even stature. I wouldn't go so far as to say that he looks apologetic here, but he certainly hasn't looked to dominate in the way that we know he can. Yeah, I know what you're saying. I wasn't sure he started that well in Perth for the 106, even the 60th. I, I thought both those innings in Perth were slow to get going, to get the feet going. To me, he looked awkward in both those, but then he, he got into full flight. Let's hope he does today. It'll make for fascinating watching. It's three for 90 turn, three for 99 and drinks on the final morning. That <laughs> should have gone to Specsavers. Book an eye test online with the test experts. The patience of the coaches, the patience of the staff, the patience of the batsmen waiting to come in next. 277 more runs to win, but that's out of the question in my mind. South Africa 3 for 99. Graham Smith probably not going to bat. Effectively 4 for 99 with 277 to come. A change in the bowling like there has been in the commentary box. Richie Benno and Bill Laurie are with me and Nathan Horrocks at the crease. And a good move too. They're on top, the Australians. Good effort by Bollinger and McDonald so far in the, the first hour. A good opportunity for the off spinner before the Villiers is set. I'd like to see some presence with Nathan in this particular innings. Get in there and ooh and ah and create some things and maybe even force the batsman to have a go at him. Oh! There's a good start. The batsman's after him. What's he going to come back with in the challenge? Well, it's great to play his shots. But I'm not sure De Villiers, he's played a strange shot in the last over and didn't know where the ball went. And he goes for the big sweep. But have easily got bowled. be some turn out there for Nathan Horrocks but this pitcher stood up very well on the one hand uh, it looked as though it could finish up a horror strip but yesterday and the day before played if anything better than on the first day there will be some turn and a little bit of indifferent bounce We've already hear, heard it, lots of catch it, catch it, oh, uh, that type of stuff around the bats. And Nathan Horace has got to back that type of language up. He's got to put the ball exactly where he wants to put it and where his captain has decided the team are going to try and create something. Don't just drift right now, getting it very clear in his mind, the shape of this next delivery, the length, the pace. Get organised. Energy on the ball and stay there. He has to be patient. Off spinners have to be patient. He wants the batsman driving through the offside. And there's a chance of a miss here to catch it mid wicket or mid on. Both our off spinners have been unable to get them to drive through the offside, and there's not much incentive for the shot right now. You can see the Australians have placed a man right out on there, so. They're not going to get much value for that risky off drive or cover drive. So I'll steer clear of it again and work towards the leg side from over in front of their stumps. Three for 101. There's a minimum of 76 overs left in this day's play and Australia's overrate should try to do more than that. They've taken a long time in between that, that over change. Simon Cadditch has been doing something and changing to mid-off now. Mitchell Johnson's been waiting. Matthew Hayden's been slow to get to first slip. And finally, we're ready. Should be ready to bowl lots of overs today, if needed. Amla finds the gap. He's looked the best by a mile. He's still at the crease. He's hitting the bad balls away. He's finding the middle of the bat, even when conditions don't look that easy he's a really good player this guy 
I saw a lot of him in uh, England last year, and he was most impressive. That's uh, the sequence of runs he's made. Very, very impressive. Nine fours. Beautiful strokes on the offside. And that's what they have to do as a South African batsman. Rotate the strike. Just break, try and break up the line of the bowler. Don't really, I think McDonald's got into a, a pattern when he bowled. He bowled eight overs, five maidens, one for ten in his first test match. That keeps the pressure on you. So I think that was good play then. A three and then a single. Just break up the line of Mitchell Johnson. And, and now Ponting's making a change because of that. Ashley Mamla made it 100, Richie, and took it a lot of time, along with Graham Smith and Neil McKenzie, when they were asked to follow on at Lords, didn't they, in England? So they have been here before. The timing's good again, but the protection is out there. So it's one, one, the next test for this young middle order for South Africa, A.B. de Villiers, to see what he can produce under this sort of pressure. It's although... Uh... Amler is a beautiful striker of the ball, a great timer. He plays his strokes in a sort of a languid fashion. So easy. It's all in the timing. Wonderful to watch about from anything else. I wonder if A.B. de Villiers really wanted to play at that one. But Hashim Amla has been very decisive in his stroke play. The ball's there, he's been timing it. If he wants to leave it, he's been leaving it. And as Richie said, he can play square of the wicket on the offside. He can play horizontal bat shots as well as straight bat shots. He can play down the ground as well if they bowl there. And also whip it off the stumps. Difficult customer. That's full by A.B. de Villiers and it's in the gap and it's a good test for the outfield. All match. The ball has been winning when it's hit out through covers there. And De Villiers needs that. He needs a boundary or two. He's really struggled since the great match at the, the whack up. And that wasn't quite off the meat of the bat, but it was good enough. It was there to be pushed away. It was a high half volley. But he placed it well enough. Good bowling, too. The Australians won't mind to see AB De Villiers playing those sorts of shots. Mitchell Johnson might just step up his pace, take one across him. Not just yet. Three for 110. It's been a good start for the Australians. Two wickets in the first hour, 48 runs. The run rate. No, oh, yeah! oh, there's another one. Horrocks spins and bounces one, and Caddix does the rest. That's what our spinners can do if you get it right in the last day. It was 89k, so it was reasonably quick and. Amwa, he'd be disappointed with that. It was a nothing shot, really, but full credit to the bowler. Did it bounce? Oh, yes, a bit. Bat, thigh pad, straight to short leg. He was dragged into the stroke. I think for a moment he was going to let it go, and then wasn't quite sure if it was going to be the top spinner. It's four for 110. This is how you like catches to come to you. Fingers pointing away from the ball, almost into the hands of Simon Caddick. The face of Nathan Horrocks in the background. You beauty. The Australian rebuild has started well this morning in the first hour of play. They've taken three wickets. Victories out of the South African sides now. It surely must just be survival. And they'll have to do that with Australians all round the bat. The left-hander comes in now. The ball will be spinning away from his outside edge. So that was a big grip and look very comfortable. It's always tough when you come in and you're seeing the ball doing a bit from the seam. There's a little bit of turn as well. First half hour is so important for each batsman. So De Villiers, Dumini got a big job to do here. Are they good enough under the, these conditions? Oh, that one slides through. 
So one that spins, and then you'd expect it to spin out of the rough, but natural variation slides it through. No grip whatsoever. And Hashim Amla must be sitting in the dressing room saying, why couldn't my thigh pad get out of the way? Um, it just jumped at him a little bit, but not all that much. I think, uh, on reflection, he'll wish it uh, just raised his bat and allowed it to hit him on the thigh. Front on replay. Oh. It'll be a bye. Tough one for Brad Haddon. We talked about the natural variation. Well, when Horrocks pitch is so full, it's a lottery. But Hashim Amla just wanted to leg glance it a touch better, get a little bit more bat on it and get it past his thigh pad. He didn't go to it very hard, did he? He, was, he wasn't trying to whip it away, he was just trying to turn it away. Full credit to the bower. Oh, yes. Yes, Tidy start to the left-hander too. Four for 112. That's four for 112. First ball of Mitchell Johnson's over. And uh, Betfair Trading has Australia at $1.22 at the moment. That's to win the test. South Africa, $36, and the draw is $5.29. So the Australians, with that um, breakthrough in the first hour, have uh, shortened and shortened again. You've talked about the odds, Rich, but the Betfair hotspot will look good for Hashim Amler's dismissal if you're an Australian player. Not so much if you're in the dressing room on the inside edge. And then the thigh pad, can he lift his gloves? He's turned around a little bit, so he can't see exactly where it hit his thigh pad. That dressing room of the South Africans would hate to see that. 59 from 112 balls, and Simon Kadic takes him at short leg. Now the pull shot by A.B. de Villiers. Well, if you're trying to save a test match, you want two of your young stars at the crease. Great experience for them. De Villiers a magnificent uh, 100 at the WACA. Normally 166 at the MCG, but they really have to play well from here on in. Everything favouring the Australians. The bowling's been accurate enough. All the bowlers chipping in. It's a very good contest between the two left-handers. Mitchell Johnson hasn't um, old with quite the same verb this morning. He could well be a bit weary. He's done a lot of bowling during the whole of the summer. And these are back-to-back -back test matches, all three of them. Well, Baldwin for the Yorker. And they're looking down the pitch for the odd bounce and the one off the crack. He's had a big summer, Mitchell Johnson, but a lot of overs. It's just a fraction leg side. Well played in the end, they're never easy when you first come to the pitch as a batsman. What? Dominic looking really good once again. So Mitchell Johnson's over is finished, four for 113. The South African current run rate is 2.6. They need 3.6 from that minimum 73 overs if they're to win. Nathan Horitz working away well outside A.B. de Villiers' off stump. And gentlemen, we've got a Johnny Walker coming up soon. 
I think Andrew McDonald has come into Test cricket and he's already asking us questions. That's really wide. It's a touch short too, and that's why the protection's out there. Well, everybody's been tested this morning, certainly the South African batsman. Well, uh, Ronald, what have you got for us? Hey guys, who has taken the most test match wickets at the SCG? Yes, yes, yes. Good catch up by JP Dominey. Michael Clark tried for a fraction of a second and then gave up. I'd say that's probably Shane Warne. What do you think, Richie? Yeah. I would reckon Warren. Um, there are a few around, but I think um, I think Warren. He's got over 50, I think. Wait, Probably wait. played yeah 14 or 15 tests here at the SCG more than anyone else with a great success rate. I'd have to say Warren too. Yes, tick, tick, tick. 64 wickets, one venue. Horace oh. has made his start at the SCG. One for 15 after eight, four for 118 South Africa. South Africa have turned around two massive moments in this series. And for the sake of those two instances, it could have been so different. The topsy-turvy nature of this has been fantastic. De Villiers watching that one closely under the bat. And Andrew McDonald doing some great work at short cover. Well, the difference between the sides been the catching. In this, in this test match, South Africans have dropped vital catches as Australians did, it, particularly at the Melbourne Cricket Ground when Clark was put down on 70 by Amwar off Natini. That was a turning point in this match. That was the case in the two test matches at the Wacker and the MCG. The South Africans outcaught the Australians. I thought the Australian batsmen let the side down in Perth. It was the bowlers that were criticised for not being able to get South Africa out. But for the sake of 100 more runs, South Africa would have been chasing 520 rather than 414, and it would have been out of the question. So let's say a draw there for the sake of 100 runs. Then a catch or two when Dale Stone was batting in Melbourne uh, could have given them the exact same opportunity as they're into right now in Melbourne, where they had to bowl South Africa out in the last innings uh, you know, to, to win. And now this. So it's those two moments that South Africa won by getting the Australian batsman out in Perth and Dale Stane's partnership with JP Dumini has got them into this position. I agree with the batsman being a bit disappointing in Perth, but you shouldn't, should be able to defend 414. It's the second highest score in the history of Test cricket. Only four wickets down by the South Africans. Yeah, yeah. But it's been a topsy-turvy Test series. That's why it's been so good. This game's not over yet. Certainly the Australians' hot favourites at the moment, but two young guns at the crease. Boucher to come, 89 in the first innings. They just need a big stand. This last day was set up uh, beautifully by Ponting, who made what I thought was a very good declaration. He could have uh, hung on for, for a bit more time, but what he did, in a sense, is give both teams the opportunity to win. Another bye from Brad Haddon. The wicket keepers have had lots of deliveries bounce before them in this match. It's been a hard slog for them. These are the two that did it in Perth, the 4-14. They, they did a fantastic job. Dumini in his first test, 50 not out to Villiers, 106 not out. They put on 111 where there could have been a little wobble in that South African middle order. So as you say, Bill, this one's not over yet. Australia, even though they've got four, possibly five wickets, have got to keep working at this partnership and others that are going to really try and dig in. And also, Ian, with three test matches coming up in South Africa, for AB to be, as this is a vital innings, a wonderful test match at the Wacker. Since then, he's struggled a bit, and if he can get a good score today and play well, it'll be a tremendous boost to his confidence. He looks superb in Perth. He looked very cool and calculated. Since then, he's looked ordinary. 
Seven in Melbourne was off about 60 deliveries and never got one off the square. This is the best he's looked since that 100. And today, there's 14 not out. Wide and full. It should have been put away, and it is. Confidence build up. Nothing like the middle of the bat. Six off the over. Four for one, two, four. Bottom right, or almost bottom right, Bollinger, two for 28. It's three test match wickets now, but it's Horrocks continuing and bowling very well. Yes, really. Proud moment for all the families of these players. Young 24-year-old, JP Dominey, 24-year-old, the other in AB de Villiers. Nathan Horrocks, his father's followed him around the country from Melbourne and Sydney. Terry goes back to work on Monday, but he's hoping for... Really wow. good success. Something that started here already. Two slips in place. So not only the wives and girlfriends, but mothers, fathers, grandparents, siblings. They just love every moment of a Test wow. match career in the family. Well, he's done OK here. He's, he's got the big wicket. Van White. He should be prepared to throw them up here today. It runs on the board, attacking fields. Oh, no! Good yes, it's good to see two slips in, or slip in a, in a gully by Ricky Ponting to a left handed batsman to an off spinner. Should spin it away. Hope we draw him forward. I wouldn't mind a bat pat on the offside as well at this stage. That delivery, just on off stump, that last one. Just like to get him stretching the way he did here, but on middle stump. Get the ball a little straighter so that JP Dominey has to come down the wicket and hope he copes with the off spin. A little bit wide that time. It's forced away. There's only a small gap, but it's been found. And Dominey goes to six. Two from the Horrocks over. Four for 126. Three for 64, exactly what Australia would have ordered. South Africa more than would, would have been delighted with one for 64, but three puts them back in the box a little bit. Nine overs, none for 28, Peter Siddle. But he can be devastating. This was the end, which he did the damage in the first innings when he picked up five buying from the member's end. Four for seven and 22 deliveries from this end. We saw in the first spell this morning, him stretching that hamstring. He looks, it looks to me like he's quite stiff. Can he come up? Can he get some rhythm? Can he get some fire? First up into the stumps, A.B. de Villiers nails him down the ground. Straight as the dog hit the bowler's marker, as well as it went through, a little bit of a jump from the bowler's marker, but beautifully struck. Nothing wrong with the delivery, that's okay. Good length, just a fraction straight. Perfect straight, what's this? Full face of the bat. Gets past the bowler, and he's got a back up, the little marker there. Still goes for four. Top shot, top shot, 22 from 32, A.B. de Villiers. Is he finding some comfort in another pressure pack situation? The Yorkers on the cards again. He bowled quite a few Yorkers in his first spell this morning. But I was impressed with um, his bowling in the first innings. And he's done nothing wrong in this innings either. Just looks as though uh, he's going to need an over or so to loosen up. Even though uh, he hasn't bowled all that many overs in this innings. It looks easy from here, doesn't it? And watching on TV, you just do not understand and appreciate the stresses on the body of these big men. Big men steaming in. If he has got a little hamstring niggle, it, his mind is off what it should really be on, where he wants to bowl that ball. Well, five for 59 in the first innings, you feel no pain, do you? He'll be charging in and banging in the pitch. This is the final test match. It was picked because he's strong and hits the bat hard. 
Had a very good um, Sheffield Shield final here against New South Wales when Victoria were beaten. Got all the wickets for Victoria. That's where he wants to be. Big shout, maybe Pad first, but looked to be outside the line from up here. And then probably gone on and hit the bat, but worth a shout. And I think he just got confirmation from the umpire that it was outside. They have a little uh, a little message or two going between one another. When Siddle goes back past him, he'll just motion. There we go. And the umpire says, yeah. A.B. De Villiers got himself across in front of the stumps early. That's his technique today. Then his front foot movement got him outside the line well and truly. I'm talking about the stresses and strains on bowlers, um, wicket keepers come into that category as well. What would you do if they bowl 90 overs in the day? You'll be crouching and coming up 450 times. Yeah, that's right. And they're all conditioned for that. And it's fine until you are carrying an injury, until you're carrying a, an extra worry that does distract you from your number one job. And Peter Siddle, if he has got a hamstring strain, will be thinking about it now. He'll be controlling the movement of his running. Then he's got to give it all up and put in and hope that that, that delivery is not the one it rips. Four for 130. Well, you're obviously with Linter Energy. Yeah, of course. Especially with their great energy deal. Shall we test them out? Turn it off, mate. Join over one million Australians. Switch to Alinta Energy, supporting your home team. Full focus now for the Australians. Also for the South Africans, a massive partnership, this one. It's 20 already, but the time is the important thing. Half an hour before lunch, the Australians would dearly love another wicket. South Africa have got to prevent it. In the commentary box, there's a change. Ian Chappell, Shane Warne and Tony Gregg. Thank you, Ian Healy. Yep, four down for 130. 246 more runs to win. That's a bit of a pipe dream, I'm afraid, at this stage. Horrid's continuing. We've got De Villiers, who's beginning to settle down. He looked as if he was in a bit of a daze when he first came out to bat. He's got 22 now, and Dumini, right from the word go, as usual, has looked solid. Yeah, De Villiers has been in a bit of a daze since Perth. Well, they had a big celebration over there or what, but uh, his next match in Melbourne, he was away with the Pixies. And he got run out in the first innings here. Well, that's very well fielded. Beautifully done. Nathan Horrocks has looked good. I thought he looked good last night, too. Oh, there's enough there for the spinner. We saw it all this morning, the pitch and the cracks and the quicks, and we spoke about it, about what role a spinner can play on the last day in Sydney. And I, th I think both Harris and Horrocks in the first innings were a little bit disappointing. Uh, Sydney's always a nice place to show off your skill. As a spin bowler, a lot of the quicks when they go to Perth and to Brisbane, you've got all those sorts of things for the quicks to show off your swing and your pace. But here's something where you can really get into the kit bag and show off and show how much you can spin it and your skill and variation. I think Nathan Horrocks started well yesterday. He's continued that today. He looks like he's got his rhythm up. He's got a bit of shape on that last one as well. A bit on the ball. I think his confidence is up with that wicket. He's got a bit more flight. He's bowling a nice line. And suddenly he's getting a bit of curve and bounce. And he's varying his pace a little bit more too from the last test. Oh. Just one off that over. Four down for 131. So De Villiers on 22. Dumini on 7. And once again we're going to see... Peter Siddle bowling his um, medium fast deliveries from over the wicket here. He'd be um, bowling into the, the nice part. Of, oh no, he's around the wicket, so he he's actually is searching for that uh, little cracked area outside off stump. Dumini is on strike. Well, Siddle no wicket for 32 so far. He's bowled 10 overs. Well, that's well bowled and well fielded. 
The Australians have been very good in the field today. Good catch taken by Michael Hussey to get things off on the right foot. And a lot of runs have been saved. Good example there from Matthew Hayden. They keep a close eye on Peter Siddle's pace. I think he's had a pretty good series so far, but I suppose from the negative side, it's the ability to back up day after day after day. And that's one of the things about test cricket. It does test your mental concentration and your physical side of your game as well, to back up day after day. And then when the game's on the line, to be able to deliver. Still around 142. We're seeing it slowly build up at the start, then take a bit of a dip and actually not too bad. A little bit of a lull late in the day, then he's actually got up that last delivery, 142k. So not too bad. He's got to be able to sustain that for a period of time. You feel if Australia can break this partnership, although Mark Boucher played well in the first innings, wouldn't be too far away getting the last few wickets. Every now and again, he gets one to swing. On that occasion, it was back into uh, JP Dumini. Yesterday, with a new ball, he got a couple to swing away from the right handed Neil McKenzie. Now that's. I, I watched a bit of the, uh, the Pura Cup final here at the SCG. New South Wales and Victoria, and he, he got a few to swing on that occasion. He impressed me in that final. And I think that's what really got him into the Australian side. I think uh, he must have impressed the selectors with a good effort. Uh, Victoria got a bit of a shellacking in that final, but uh, he held up well, bowled extremely well in, that, in the final. And that is the art of a selector. It's when you get your wickets, who you get them against, the opposition, the wicket, the conditions, all those types of things come into consideration, not just the pure stats. We've got nine wickets in that shield fine on a losing team. Yeah, I, I'm with you, chaps. I saw a bit of that final, unfortunately. The Vic's going down to New South Wales, the Blue Baggers. But he was very, very impressive. Yeah, selectors have got to be a bit like a bit like an interior decorator, I right? guess. Uh, they've got to be able to, an interior decorator can look at a rotten old room and visualise uh, what it could be made into. Selectors got to look at a young cricketer and not just see a young cricketer, but visualise what this guy could become. A maiden, it's four for 131. Another little bit of a management meeting taking place down there between Ponting and uh, Hayden and Horitz. Try and sort out the field they want. Mm, Herschel Gibbs is in town. He's uh, obviously here for the 2020 matches and the one day internationals as that one's played away on the onside nicely. Running away uh, over the surface there, and uh, the ball goes into the rope. Very good shot there from A.B. De Villiers. I'm not totally sold on the method of moving across outside off stump to the off spinner. I think there's better ways to do it, but that's a shot that you need to employ against an off spinner a lot. Open up and hit them wide of mid on particularly when the ball runs away down that hill so quickly. Cut. I think Nathan Horitz had the right idea with a follow-up. I think with someone like A.V. De Villiers walking across the crease, the same as Jacques, you need to be fuller and a bit wider. Make him come forward and do what you want him to do. Don't just bowl that back of a length. Sort of all, you've got to be fuller and a bit wider. Nathan Hurrits can get one to grip. He might just bowl him around his legs if he keeps walking across like that. Well, that's one of the problems with walking across outside off stump. You get one that uh, hits a crack or spins a long way. 
bingo, the leg stump's going to be out of the ground. I seem to recall Nathan Hor uh, sorry, uh, Jason Crozier doing that to someone in India. I can't think who the batsman was now, but uh, he spun one past the pad and clunked into uh, leg stump because they were moving across a long way. Mind you, Jason Crozier does spin the ball a lot more than Nathan Horrocks. De Villiers 27, Dumini 7, and uh, about 15 minutes to go now before the lunch break. That's the end of the over. It's four for 136. So an interesting uh, show for you today. Today at lunchtime, you don't want to go too far. Uh, plenty of uh, interesting observations made by those gentlemen about uh, what the selectors should or shouldn't do. As far as South Africa are concerned, they've uh, lost three wickets here today and uh, put on 84 runs in this little period uh, leading up to lunch. They've actually scored at the rate they need to win this match, but um, having lost three wickets, that's now going to be very difficult. Uh, Amla was playing pretty well. Callis didn't really get going. He was out for four. Oh, and that was close. That was close and stayed down as well. Very well picked up by Haddon. There's a bit more aggression on that delivery as well from Peter Siddle. A bit more intent. That hit right mm. on the seam. Didn't hit a crack. 143k too. The last few deliveries have been around one low, mid 130s. That's up to 143. And that, that's the thing. You can't just put it up there and expect the crack and expect the wicket to do anything. You put it with aggression and intent, there it'll do something for you. It's a bit more like it, Peter Siddle. He's got a big heart. He runs in all day, as you've seen. And there you go. Look at that last delivery. The more you put in, the more you'll get out of that wicket. You can't just put it up there. It's got to be aggressive. So you've not only got a bat with intent, you've got a bowl with intent, mate. Correct. <laughs> exactly right. I just think that aggressive mindset of actually having the intent, getting it in there and really whacking it into the pitch... You will get, it's like spinning the ball. If you, There's some big rough patches there. Some spinners think you can just put it up there into the rough and I'll do all the work. It won't do anything. You actually have to spin it into that rough with a lot of work on the ball and you'll get it to go quickly. And that's what creates doubt in the batsman's mind. Ah! Half-hearted appeal there for LBW. Quick uh, look at the dismissals. Um, first up today, it was McKenzie who was out for 27. He uh, really did push very wide at that delivery. And it went straight to Hussey who caught it uh, as clean as a whistle. There's the uh, sideways on shot. Good catch. Second one, Andrew McDonald. Very good reaction there. Caught it millimetres off the ground. Bit of controversy about the catch, but it was a clear catch. And it was very well handled by both the players and the umpires. That was the big wicket, Jacques Hallis, just short of 10,000 runs, but the big wicket for the Australians. Final wicket, little inside edge onto the thigh guard, and a simple catch there for Simon Kadic. Gives Nathan Horrocks his first victim in this innings. there for LBW it was uh, pretty well in line might have been a bit too high so um, it looks as if uh, Siddle thought that he had him a very big appeal from behind four for 137 so four down for 137 Horitz is going to continue with these off spinners about uh, nine minutes to go now before the lunch break Confident LBW appeal from 
well, not only the bowler Siddle, but uh, also the keeper. Let's have a look. My initial instinct was the height. He certainly thumped it into the pitch, uh, Peter Siddle, and he had the batsman hopping. Probably get a couple here. Matty Hayden doing the fielding, letting it rip back into the gloves there of uh, Hayden. Plenty of headlines revolving around uh, Matthew Hayden this morning. He went off the ground and um, didn't really seem to acknowledge the standing ovation that he got. Almost uh, saying that uh, I'll be back. Don't worry about that. I'll be back. Obviously, a lot of people here thought, well, it may just be the last time we see him, and they wanted to stand up and uh, make sure that uh, he knew that they appreciated uh, what he'd done so far for the Australians. You know, a bit of a laugh out there, a bit of a smile on the face. Why wouldn't you? It's really only two results. It's really only two results. Australia win or a draw. Really only two results at the moment. I don't think South Africa can win from here. Their, their job now is purely to try and save the game. Yes, they'll be glancing around for a few clouds or something, I should think. <laughs> but it's a pretty warm day here. I suppose the oh! Oh, when that one turns and uh, it's well negotiated. On warm days like today, there's always a chance of a little bit of uh, a shower later on in the day. Four for 139. Well, this is a desperate search for a few clouds in the area. There are not many there, are they? Yeah, they're a long way away. They're all over the eastern suburbs, uh, Anthony, that none of them are in God's own territory, mate. <laughs> and every South African in Australia has just gone out to start washing the car. Ask the missus to do the washing and the laundry and see if they can get some sort of rain. It's absolutely every time you wash that car, it always rains. Not today, though. Very warm and hot in Sydney. So what, uh, are you telling us that you actually wash the Lamborghini? No. Some people do a wonderful job for me. What? Heel's got a few of his agents in Melbourne, has he? Yep. And uh, they do a wonderful job too. Looks nice and shiny. Hard to keep clean the black colours though on the cars. It looks good, they do a wonderful job. That one did hit something and uh, stopped a little bit. Good delivery. He's certainly putting in a big effort here just before lunch, Peter Siddle. That one's uh, hit on the edge of the crack. But uh, Dumini just got a little bit of bat on it. Well, he's bowling nice and straight, that's for sure. Keeping it uh, right at those stumps, just in case. Yeah, I think early on he made a bit of a blue in, in trying to bowl a lot of Yorkers. I think as a batsman on this sort of pitch, you would be absolutely delighted if the bowler's trying to York you because it's not going to do much uh, when it's right up there in the block hole. As long as you're confident you can keep it out, as a batsman you'd be thinking, this will do, I hope he keeps bowling here. But if he bowls on a good length where those cracks are, then that's when a bit of uncertainty creeps into your mind as a batsman. Oh. 
No, he didn't know much about that one. Dumini on his back foot there, getting um, a few deliveries here that are hitting cracks, and that one's hit him on the finger. That's the last thing South Africa need is another broken finger. I see in Chapel just touch on. He really is steaming in here just on the break. That's a nasty delivery. Remind me of the delivery, I think the first innings back in Perth. Peter Silla just got a bit of his tail up here. He's got some aggression. I like this. I think we've seen all summer with Siddle that he has got a big heart. He will keep running in. He's pretty passionate about it. He's a good find for Australia. That's well played. A maiden over and a good one at that. Four for 139. So four for 139, and uh, South Africa in a spot of bother here. Mackenzie, Morkel, Amla, De Villiers, and Duman, uh, and Callis, correction, out. So four of them gone. Oh, that's a good delivery as well. We've got De Villiers and Dumini scrapping away out there at the moment, doing their best to uh, make sure that they're still there at lunch. Lunch coming up shortly. And then, of course, they've got uh, another two sessions to negotiate. They're going to have to play really well from here. Bouch and Dewey do next. We know he's a fighter. But uh, the ball is hitting the cracks a little bit. And um, Horitz is making them play at absolutely everything. Yeah, he's been pretty consistent in his line. There is a, a crack running just outside off stump there. With the right hand is on strike. That's what he's been aiming at. Certainly got it once when he got rid of Amla. Uh, Just a little wider that time, searching for that little bit of rough. Well, there might just be another over. He's uh, getting through the over pretty quickly. The other option he might even have when if he's going to do this is come around the wicket and get a leg slip in as well. Give me something to think about for the one that the natural variation goes straight on or spins back. Just, that, just something they always throw in there around the wicket. It's always a good option to change the angle. Right, well, that uh, is the end of the over, so uh, it's four down for 139. There'll be one more. Australians are very keen there to uh, get this last over in. Have a look at this. Perhaps they should be doing this all the time. So uh, obviously very keen just for this last one now. See if they can get another wicket here. He's um, He's been bowling pretty well. Siddle, he's been Certainly hitting the, the little cracks just outside that off stump down the far end. Let's see what he can do now. That, uh, front leg of Dornis is taking a bit of a pounding. Just hobbled away after copying that one probably on the thigh pad. Looks like there's a leg gully just going in now. Maybe even a bat pad will be a good option as well. You can see from that angle from around the wicket, it's going to do something. It's going to jump into that rib cage sort of area. It's going to drop around on that onside, around the corner or bat pad, somewhere around there. I think is the hot place it's going to go. Wait! 
Well, he's hitting his spot pretty regularly the last uh, few overs, Peter Siddle. He's abandoned that idea of bowling Yorkers, and I think he's on to a much better uh, length now. And as we're talking about his pace before, he's still hovering around 142 now. As I say, chaps, I think he's got it spot on. And he looks dangerous, too. He looks like he's going to get a wicket every ball at the moment, too. <laughs> Trying a few things as well. So, uh, a bouncer there. Now two balls to go before lunch. This will definitely be lunch at the end of this over. So he's up there a bit more. He knows he's uh, got a little bit of a break coming up. Oh. That's well played. Well played, well negotiated. Uh, just keeping it down. He certainly put in this sort of effort in that uh, Pura Cup final. I saw here at the SCG last summer. That's well played. Solid in defence, JP Dermody. Relieved that uh, lunch has now arrived. A pat on the uh, back, or certainly an acknowledgement from Ponting to Siddle that uh, he's bowled pretty well. So 77 runs, three wickets in that session. South Africa still need 237 more runs to win the match. So I suspect that all the players uh, will be very happy to uh, get into the dressing room just for a little while. It's uh, been a very warm day here in Sydney today. For over 20 years, Combank has been supporting women in cricket so that thousands more girls can. Combank, proud supporter of women in cricket. Should have gone to Specsavers. Book an eye test online with the test experts. Someone's with Alinter Energy? Yeah, of course. Aren't you? Yeah, especially with their great energy deals. Either of you guys seen my wicket keeping? Gloves! Get a great energy deal. Switch to Alinter Energy, supporting your home team. Great cricketers. Wonderful ovation for Gwen McGrath. Shane Warne and Justin Langer. Scoreline achieved only once by Australia. A very emotional time here for Justin Langer, understandably so. The end of a very good career. Part of a great team, one of the best teams ever. He averages 21. Started his career living in a caravan to get a spot in the New South Wales team. Come down from the bush. He's still a bushy, but he's a great fast bowler as well. Oh, look, it's been fantastic to play with this group of guys, and uh, I'm sure that everyone's ent uh, been entertained by the way the guys have played. and. Um, you know, to, to finish off the way we have today, 5-0, is uh, a sensational way to do it. Push is looking for two and he'll get it, he'll come back hard. Back it comes. Miss Field again. They go for three. There he goes. A special moment at the Sydney Cricket Ground, a standing ovation. We've never seen it before here. Superb opening stand of 122 and Warner is 100 not out. Great moment for Test cricket. Oh, 
Oh, that's ripped into the gloves. Off a length. I, I think that could well be broken. Oh, he's tough. That's a left-hand fracture of the fifth metacarpal. Doesn't require surgery, but it does require a six-week recovery. Graham Smith is coming out to bat. A series that has gripped us from first to last continues to do so. The drama is by no means done. This is a mighty figure. The broken hand is bottom hand. Oh, played. Very well played. It will hurt. No single player has more respect than this man, Graham Smith. Glenn McGrath, the last Australian batsman coming into the crease with the score under 250. Ricky Ponding's not too disappointed with that score. 250, not bad, but he needs some runs out of McGrath and Hussey now. Hussey drives and he finds the gap. Charge, good shot, over cover, good use of the feet. That's a wonderful strike. And it's very big too. Oh, this is some innings from Michael Hussey. A hundred for Michael Hussey. And a magnificent hundred it is too. Well, there they come, the two of them uh, off the ground and uh, everyone was on their feet. Hussey will be feeling very happy about that. Wonderful performance. That's out. That's 299 test wickets for McGrath. Gone! He's dropped him into our, he's out. First ball, Glenn McGrath, there's 300. The perfect scenario. It's out! Straight up in the air, and that's a hat-trick. Well, he wasn't on 300 test wickets for long, Glenn McGrath. The ripper, I guess the huddle prior to coming out in the field was let's not get carried away with bounce and cracks, let's get it up there, let's get it up, drawing forward. And it's missed the crack, it's skidded on, maybe clipped the back pad and still clipped the stump. Yeah, there's nothing to do with the wicket there, that's just an absolute peach by Ryan Harris. Oh. He's really gone for that one, there's a chance in the outfield. Oh, and what a very good catch. That's a terrific catch there. Glenn McGrath, he is a good outfielder, but he had to go a long way to get there. But the, the really good part of the work was when he dived and still hung on to the ball. And that's exactly where she goes. Is it enough? Yes, it is! 200 in style and I think Sarah Taylor's saying did it actually go all the way have you celebrated a little bit earlier as we kind of look in no, it's four it's four and she celebrated can you believe it driven down she's taking off and she's done it she's done it for a second time is she going to celebrate the first time just as much as the first time, no. She just puts the bat up and relief for Elise Perry. The first ball, the first test match. Whoa, wide delivery taken and slipped by the skipper. The nerves are showing already. Well, when Mark Nicholas asked me, was I nervous in the combo uh, just about 20 minutes ago, I said, not as nervous as the guy will be who's running up the ball the first ball. And now it's the second. <laughs> He's going to be petrified now. They might need four slips to catch this. It can happen. I remember Graham McKenzie saying to me once when he bowled a delivery like that, we're nervous as well as the batsman. Goes for it. There's a man out there who's getting under it. And he's got it. And Shane Warne tragically finishes on 99. The crowd going off. There's the 300 for Matthew Hayden. Direct hit. He's happy that he's home, though. 
and he's just the second man to make a triple century in test cricket in Australia. Leg stump, that a it! What a wonderful shot to bring it up on as well. What a moment for Michael Clarke. Not just as a player, but as a captain. Pulls it away hard on the leg side. Times the ball well, it races out towards the rope. Incredible from David Warner. 300. A history-making innings at the Oval. He loves it. The crowd loves it. David Warner. Ishan Sharma. He comes yeah. down. Oh, that's it! That's it! Nathan Lyon gets seven. What a performance! They've won by 48 runs. It has been a stunning test match. Well, he's done it. And he's done it in grand style with a boundary. Well done, Glenn McGrath. First ever half century in test cricket. Oh, God, he's got it. He's on edge, was it? Yes, he's got 50. Well played. <laughs> And they're loving it. And don't go before acceptance, just pick up the line first. Yes. Yes. God, it's over! Park's done the damage, Australia win! What a performance! Two wickets in an over, 16 on the track. He hasn't gone yet, he's out, there's no doubt about that. What a test match, from day one to day five. And the hero in the end is the unlikely Michael Carr. One run to win. Seagulls are flying, saluting the Australians. There it is, wonderful victory, wonderful innings. There goes Michael Hussey. Listen to the crowd. Still bowling well. Oh, was there an edge? Oh, he's knocked him over. Knocked him over. Oh, he's going up for the LBW. Siddle's on a hat trick. Oh, my ball is close. He's given him. He's given him. Peter Siddle's got a hat trick on his birthday. Got him. There it is. Wicket number 700. Scott Strauss. <laughs> He's on uh, strike now. And uh, there goes uh, a drive. Now, will he come back for the second? I think he probably will. Clark comes back. He's going through for the second. That's it. Magnificent. Adam Gilchrist, the century. The second fastest in the history of Test cricket. on fire. There's been history between Johnson and Anderson for six or seven years in the Ashes series. Johnson just gave him the stare as he ran past. Final ball, the second day's play. It's gone for it. There it is. Great moment in the history of Australian Test cricket. It was Sir Donald Brabham's tally in hundreds. It was more than that for Stephen Waugh. They stood to him when he came out. They're standing when he's going off and he's not out. Not out 102. What a moment. Get in store and grab your 4X Gold Cricket Edition cans. Square leg. So this is Victory today.
Australians by eight wickets. He's got him. Got him. Oh, he's got two. Beautifully caught. Oh! He's done it. Great to have your company on this fifth and final day of Australia versus South Africa. It's been an intriguing, enthralling uh, series from the first ball to uh, today, and there's a lot more cricket to come. Four for 139, South Africa. That's really five for 139, given that Graham Smith is out with a broken finger and will not bat. They need a further 237 if they're to win the match, or they've got to bat out today. They can't quite get the runs, uh, leaving a few wickets intact for the draw. But Australia, you would think, are in the box seat to get something back in this series that they've already lost. And if we go back through the wickets that fell, this is Mornay Morkel last night. And Dougie Bollinger took his first wicket, Greggy. Yeah, it was a big moment for him, wasn't it? Uh, Bollinger celebrating there. Uh, good catch as well. Uh, that was uh, nicely taken by Johnson moving away to his left. So uh, Mornay Morkel, unfortunately, gone for a duck. And uh, from this morning, Neil McKenzie, that was the first man to go, just reaching at one. And again, it was Bollinger striking. That's two for him. And it was a fantastic catch by Mike Hussey in the gully area. Callis, the next man. And this was uh, a big moment in the test match, given that there was a time before the third umpire had a look at this catch. McDonald felt that he'd caught it. He wasn't quite sure. Callis had a good view of it, and eventually it was given out. And Amla gave Horrocks his first wicket as well. Yeah, that was a very important wicket, that one. Uh, a real lollipop little catch at uh, backward square leg. But uh, vital wicket it was, because he was playing very well, was Hashim Amla, who made 59. So um, Bollinger, two for 28. And the other wicket takers there, McDonald and Horrocks. Well, we thought... Um the first session today was uh, the key one. The Australians have done just about what they needed, picking up four wickets. Graham Smith um, still unlikely to bat, although there have been murmurs that if it uh, got down to a certain situation that he might go uh, out there. Be, um, be a very brave thing to do, but there you go. It's been done before. People like Colin Cowdery at Lords against uh, Wes Hall and the other West Indian fast bowlers. And the second session coming up here will be equally as interesting as the first, I think. Yes, so Colin Cowdery in that test match had a plaster cast on and kept it on when he went out, didn't he? Yes, he did. And um, he went to, he was at the non striker's end, and David Allen, the uh, off spin bowler, was at the other end. He decided to play out the remainder of the over. Not many runs needed uh, to win, but Cowdery was last man in plaster cast and uh, they all survived <laughs> be stronger than any gloves going around that's for sure just lacking a little bit of flexibility it's the left arm or left hand that uh, Graham Smith has broken so it'll be his top hand in control I don't know that he required but he's a gutsy chap just maybe Nathan Horrocks to continue after lunch and he'll be coming from the Randwick end JP Dumini at the non-striker, and it's A.B. de Villiers taking strike. Again, uh, we look down this SCG pitch, extremely dry. It doesn't look too flash, but at times it's played OK. Oh, yes. Pitch is played oh, exactly as Tom Parker, the curator, said it would. Said, uh, it'll play much better than it looks. He also said that he wished he'd put more water into it, but the forecast was uh, for rain and showers. So it's, uh, it's done a good job. Oh, there's one that really does grip. And just getting back to Nathan Horrocks, he's got a, a big session ahead of him because I think he's trying to spin himself on that South African tour. It really is important for his career that he shows some penetration and the ability to take wickets late in a test match. Oh, Ritz. Yes, I think uh, that's probably a fair comment, actually. Uh, he's bowling. Oh, he's, he's doing uh, a pretty tidy job of it at the moment. 
This is his 14th over, one for 25. He's not, gonna, not conceding two runs and over yet. Uh, he's got a very important wicket that, uh, of Hashim Amla, who is, uh, I think, playing better than anyone else uh, out there. Scoring runs as well, made or uh, well, hit nine fours in his innings. Sweet shot running fine. They'll come back for two. Maybe De Villiers just trying to fi find a stride. He's uh, been lacking of it since uh, that magnificent test match he had in Perth. But uh, he moves on to nearly 34 for 141 now. Yeah, the Aussie boys coming out after lunch, and uh, as Matty Hayden normally does, he grabs the flag. <laughs> My Cassie forgot to let go. <laughs> Immediately went back to uh, get it back on the mast. Oh, Dougie Bollinger. That wasn't far away. Yes, he's, um, he's nipping it back a little bit, isn't he? It's, uh, of course, he can bowl a cutter as well. But, uh, if it pitches on those little cracks there, we'll nip back, and that wasn't far away from off stump. It's interesting, Bollinger, in that uh, left armers generally swing the ball into the right-hander and push it away off the seam, but he has actually bowled some away swingers today. Very difficult to do. And I think Dougie Bollinger is going to be a handful here because on that replay, distinctly you can see a shiny side and it's on the inside and the ball narrowly missed off stump there. You can see a shiny side on the inside of the ball there and then there's the rough side on the outer side. So reverse swing is uh, something that Dougie Bollinger is very good at and something that he'll be really looking to exploit after the lunch break. there we see a movement back into Dumini so it's going to be a handful just this little 20 minute period until the batsmen adjust but if a wicket falls it'll be equally as hard for Boucher he's the next man yeah that's um, pretty good bowling that he's uh, you're right he's got some uh, reverse swing going there and uh, what will what will what he'll do now is uh, he'll have the odd one going in like this that one went just a little bit too far and then every now and again he'll turn it around and hold it up and it will it, it may not necessarily move out towards slip but at least it'll go straight through no! there again we'll just see uh maybe at times you'll always see 100 percent effort from dougie bollinger in fact that's been the real plus of all the bowlers this test match siddle johnson he's always giving his all mcdonald i think has bowled well and certainly has proven he's a very talented cricketer nathan horrocks without luck also but dougie bollinger at times probably suffers from trying too hard and now that he can see the ball moving he just needs to make sure that that line is right the last couple have been going down leg side Wait. that's the one tony Gregg was talking about he's uh, had the two that have gone in sharply towards the left hander and that one went straight on. It was quite well played because uh, the batsman had no real way of picking what was going to happen to it. Uh, but it did definitely go away a little bit. Yes, so he'll be having some fun now with that uh, little bit of variation he's got. It'll run away quickly and it'll be four runs. Uh, it's just getting that swing under control. Four for 145. Amla did bat well, 59, and you thought he had the conditions under control, playing nice and straight. It was Nathan Horrocks who got him caught. Oh, that man uh, in catching in the box on the onside, and he's uh, not in the orthodox position. He's behind square Simon Cadditch under the lid. Big moment for the Aussies. Oh. 
Matty Hayden uh, really ripping that one back into Haddon. He uh, went chasing it nice and fast, picked it up and let rip. It's a big day for Matty, isn't it? I, I think if we, well, we could have, we've been reading about him every day for the last three weeks, it feels like. More innuendo, more headlines today. Will this be his last day of test cricket? It's certainly not the rumblings we've got from him or inside the camp. It's all been about Maddie still loving the game and wanting to play on. Certainly wanting to tour South Africa and England. Yeah, I thought they were a bit unfair to uh, your comments, yes, and uh, in the, in the treatment of them in the papers this morning. The way they um, put a headline on, on the story, which really suggest that you were saying that uh, it's time for him to go, which wasn't really what you were saying at all. Oh. No, the article wasn't wasn't so bad. The headline sort of <laughs> meant something a little different, but it was all about, uh, my comments were that I think the selectors will show their hand when they finally announce the one-day squad. And if Matty Haynes included in that, that's the selectors' um, move to keep him in the side and that they want him to go to South Africa. So I wasn't making judgment, just that the selectors will let us know what they think either tonight or tomorrow morning. Four for 147. Right, what does that say? Patrons should be reminded that there are flip-up seats in place. A number of seat bays at the sitting career ground contain flip-up seats. Please be aware that these seats will automatically flip back to their standard position when patrons get up from their seats. Where was that earlier? I didn't read it. Reads very dangerous. <laughs> It'll certainly look dangerous. It felt dangerous too, Rich. <laughs> I think I know who was behind that too. Yes. I think uh, Max Kruger, our statistician, and I also think the, the man who has operated the scoreboard here for many, many years, the statistician in his own right, Ross Dundas, might have been responsible as well. Yes, Ross does a great job, doesn't he, on the board and the. Um the screen there the uh, the operator of it he's uh, he's you're right he's been doing it for years oh. you're right though rich if it's just the words you don't get the full meaning of it so you need the uh, someone to to show what can happen the demonstration was required wasn't it That's Yabba, the great barracker. Lovely thing the SCG Trust have done to put uh, Yabba's sculpture at the front of the Victor Trumper stand, the new stand. Big shout. No way that that was pitching in line. As we know, the LBW law says uh, any ball pitching outside leg, the line of leg stump, cannot be given out or shouldn't be given out. Yeah, it, uh, I think that's right. It wasn't, I don't think it was that far away though. Let's just have a look, see exactly where it did pitch. A little bit of, oh yes. That was uh, way outside, perhaps a little bit too short. Dougie Bollinger, he's got a great opportunity here to get another breakthrough. He's just ill directed at the moment. He needs to get the lines right. Oh! Wasting your time, Dougie, appealing for that, but there might be a run out. Oh, he got back. Dominey was struggling there for a moment. Building and Dominic 
well home in the end, but he wouldn't have wanted to have paused any, any longer in the middle of the pitch. Nathan Horitz, good job. No. Four for 150. There's no great urgency from the South African batsmen. They're, they're in that mode now of just trying to survive, just trying to back time. They're not going to waste anything that's there to hit. And at the same time, it's about immaculate defence. And at times, on pitches like this, that isn't enough. Yes, Ritz. So, uh, round the wicket now to uh, the left-hander, which is uh, the way they normally go. Waiting. has been outstanding. He got a... Uh, a bonus at the start of the series, an opportunity because of the broken thumb to Ashwell Prince, who... The thing with breaks is that you can't hurry them up. They take time, particularly if it's the thumb. It's such a major control in the gripping of a bat. But Dominic got that opportunity, and he made that half century in the brilliant run chase, and then got 166 during last week's Boxing Day Test match. And that's why he, we see him in those figures. Oh. Technically very sound oh, and he's got all the shots as well 242 runs at the moment an average of 80 plus it's just a brilliant start to what should be a, a long test career <laughs> just the one man in the deep Well, the partnership now worth 41. So uh, this is turning out to be a little bit of a steadier for uh, this South African ship. Yeah, and these two don't mind batting together either. The partnership uh, between these two was the one that got them home in that first test match. Four for 151. Dougie Bollinger. Can he get his third wicket? He's now bowling to the left-hander, so that inducker, if he can direct it right, it could be what? the delivery that undoes uh, Dominic. At the moment, though, he's swinging too much into middle and leg. Yes, and Dominic uh, actually likes it in that area. He, he gets himself across nicely, and uh, he's likely to clip him away fine for yet another four. He's done that before. Nicely played also. Yeah, that was beautifully played. That was the uh, one that went the other way. And Dermany leaving it to the last minute. He's playing from the crease. Now that he knows the ball is swinging around a bit, just watch this. That goes the other way. And uh, he lines it up really very well indeed. So he knows exactly what's going, what's happening out there. He's, he's got to watch for the in-swinger. And uh, every now and again, they're trying to find the outside edge of his bat. Quite a splayed stance. Bollinger's bowled well uh, since lunch. Only a few overs his drones have got through, but uh, he's on the spot. That is about the spot he should be aiming at all the time for the left-hander. It's well up, and it uh, brings the left-hander forward, but it's in such a, an area that he can't be absolutely certain that he's got the movement covered. Yeah, and that replay it was probably about an inch off the crack as well. So there's uh, a lot of play on that line. Yes. Nicely played. It's a better technique. The bat was a lot closer to the pad then. That's the big thing about Dominey's game. He adjusts quickly. He's very organised. Yes. 
So this is quite interesting now. He's got a little bit of reverse swing going, so he'll be getting the ball to go across him in that direction. Um, his problem is he's been pitching outside leg stump, so he's been pitching in, in, in this area around here, and uh, there's no LBW for that. And that one will be four. On this occasion, he gets the line too wide outside the off stump. And that's often because of the left-right combination. And too short, that just underlines that the previous length we were talking about when he was rolling the left-hander was correct. But that was short enough to allow the batsman to cut. Got to get him to come forward. He's such an enthusiastic character, Dougie Bollins, as he's sucking them in just a little bit at the moment. It's probably the hottest day we've had. It was a little bit hotter yesterday, but today, as the day wears on, it's sweaty stuff out there for the bowlers, that's for sure. Four for one, five, six. Probably be worrying them a little bit, the Aussies, this batting combination to Villiers and Dumini. They saw far too much of them in Perth. Oh, yes, Harry. Horrocks won't be thinking that, though. He wasn't there in Perth. It was Crazier who was given the opportunity. Yes, Harry. Little tempter. I well, don't mind that. He slowed it down to 80 k's and just put it up there above the eye line. Outside the off stump. Dumini resisted. He seems to have a very good temperament, J.P. Dumini, when uh, when he is tempted. Although the baggy green has been left uh, lying behind. The... So um, if the wall goes anywhere near that, that'll be five. Adam actually wearing his uh, his helmet. That's why that's there. The beloved baggy green, there it is. Yes, Hori. Well, I've got to say that um, at the moment, I don't want to put the mockers on Dumini, but he's uh, certainly playing Horrocks, uh, it seems to me, pretty comfortably, despite all the pressure that's been put on him. Over. A maiden over, four for one, five, six still. That's where the partners are sitting. It's, uh, I think it's the, uh, it is the South African partners at the back. In front of the railing there, three of the Aussie partners. The one talking, Georgie Kanich in the pink. Phone call, you're on Georgie, smile. Oh, big shout, big shout. Bollinger coming around the wicket. Not a bad move, this. He was either outside the line or he got a bit of edge on it. And uh, good thinking by the batsman. Uh, De Villiers just always tries to get outside the line. But I think there was probably a bit of bat in this. Let's see uh, if we can pick it up with a replay. What does it hit first? Is there bat in there? There is. Before it hits the bat, maybe it just hit the inside edge of the bat, but it was a good shout. But it was bad first, so uh, very good shot. Oh, and that's it, the crack, and boy, that's uh, really gone away. Warney's out there. That was a leg break. The only way it was going to do any damage was if it hit the other side of the crack and came back towards the stumps. But have a look at this. That's incredible. He's got some fizz on that one, Dougie. Let's have a look at the uh, LBW shot again, just to see exactly where his pad was here, yeah, just outside the line, just outside the line. No bat there, just pad first, as we could see from that. So, uh, but I think uh, that other shot showed us that that bat pad, that back pad, was just outside the line of off stump. Yeah, not much in it, not much in it at all. 
nature of those LBW shouts if the umpire hears that anywhere near it and whether it was before or after it tends just to be a not out automatically it's just uh, very hard for them to tell what it hits first but the line was also the issue and then the next delivery hits the crack it goes like a leg break and that's what sits in the mind of the batsman the next delivery we saw it in the first innings with Dominic. he got one from Mitchell Johnson that hit a crack and speared down the leg side over his shoulder the next ball out and Bollinger it's paramount he gets these online Time for Johnny Walker trivia, and we've got another player asking us the question, this time Bo Casson. Today's Johnny Walker trivia question is, where did Greg Matthews score his first Test 100? Well, I'm saying out here. I'm saying SCG. And I'm saying against the Kiwis. Well, I'm going to go for Brisbane. Can't remember the year, but um, I think Richard Hadley was playing, but I'm not absolutely certain. Oh, well, it's you've gone Brisbane, New Zealand, Rich. Greggy? Well, I'm not going with you. I'll go with Richie. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a wise choice. <laughs> uh, Gabba. It was the Gabba against the Kiwis. 100% Rich. I got 50%. Kiwis. And Greggy, you copied the right man. <laughs> That's not the normal for Max. That no great relevance to Australia v South Africa. No surprises. Greg Matthews still thinks he's the uh, number one spinner in Australia. Still playing grade cricket. Three from the over, four for 159. For over 20 years, Combank has been supporting women in cricket so that thousands more girls can. Combank, proud supporter of women in cricket. The series has been a seesaw. We've still got plenty more to come today. This is the finale of uh, Australia v South Africa until Australia return to their shores. It's Ian Healy. Bill Laurie and Mark Nicholas in the commentary box. Thank you. So that's 217 for South Africa, but that increasingly is becoming out of reach. It's almost as if they've understood the, the, it's so unlikely they'll win. Rather, they just get a rhythm now to occupy the crease, understand the pitch, understand the bowlers, and they'll be pleased there aren't more attackers around the bat. They've played pretty well, this pair. No great amount of spin for uh, Nathan Horitz. Yes, Mark, I think the big thing for South Africa, whatever happens today, is that the two young guns, Villiers and Dimini, are showing a lot of patience and skill. This partnership, 49, they've been tested by some good bowling and one or two going off the crack. Oh, yes. South Africa playing today without two effectively of their most reliable batsmen the third of them Jacques Cullis is out but over the last couple of years Graham Smith and Ashwell Prince who are both uh, out of this innings Prince out of the match in the series with his broken thumb Smith with his broken hand imagine if they could pull off something special and save this game that would tell you so much about the character of these young players Australia have got to match that character it's been a bit one-sided, one way at the moment. This horrid spell, he's been around the wicket for a long time. He might start to think about coming over the wicket, creating different angle, land the ball in different areas of the pitch. Four for 159. 
Still very hot here at the Sydney Cree ground, though changes uh, predicted later in the day. They're the facts for South Africa, the facts for Australia. They need to take a further five wickets, not six. That five, that four for 159, read five for 159, with Graham Smith definitely not going to bat. It's balancing act for Australia. I still, sorry, Hills, but I, I just, he told me that yesterday, didn't he, when we chatted at tea time. And I suddenly thought to myself, if the ninth wicket falls with 10 minutes of the game left, it's impossible to believe he wouldn't go in and just hold the bat with one hand. Exactly. Not that he's got one hand. <laughs> he's got a broken hand and a dodgy elbow on the other arm. That's good bowling. Oh, at the stumps. Siddle's success was bowling at the stumps. I'm still not convinced around the wickets ago, but at least he's got them thinking. But that's about the line. You must make them play. And nothing Australia try now has to be for long. They have to be really flexible, adaptable to what's happening, how the batsman's looking, how the pitch is playing, and how the ball is performing. So thinking on their feet constantly, the pressure on every decision is in Ponting's mind. A.B. de Villiers has come out of his crease. Can they peg him back with a short ball or two? Maybe, because that was a very good one. It was, but I think I'd go for somebody like Michael Clark. It's just something different. You know, just give him an over two from the Randwick end and then maybe go back on McDonald, who's picked up a wicket today, but... And then put Horrocks on this end, maybe. Just swap things, but but you can't portray the image of impatience either and desperation. You've got to do it in a patient way. The way that ball followed De Villiers, it was pitched much wider than its final line. Must have hit one of those dodgy areas of the pitch. There's lots of things Ponting can try, not least Simon Katic. It may be that the wrist spinner gets more out of this very hard surface than the finger spinner. He needs to be tried this session. If he's going to get a bowl, I would have him in this session so that, you know, that's when you can afford him. You can see how it's going to come out of his hand, how his control is, what sort of impact he might be able to have. Or if he's absolutely no good, don't go back to him. The other thing I, I, I'm surprised about is there's no closer fielders, like a, a short leg, a leg gully, a silly point. And that's four. Quite uh, elegantly played in the end. I know there was thick outside edge involved, but the idea from de Villiers was to guide the ball with an open blade. And soft hands, that was well played. I was just looking down at this pitch and I was just... Brings up the 50 partnership, that was well played. You see, it was forward, soft hands. But that 142 run partnership between Mitchell J Johnson and Michael Clark, how important was that? Really set the game up for the Australians. They could bat a fair bit of freedom in the second innings and have this run chase by South Africa on the final day. But what a partnership that was. And both survived chances. That's the difference. South Africa have caught those chances in the previous two test matches. Clark dropped the evening before by Hamler at mid-wicket. Oh, now, what's that hit? Whoa. I think Bollinger's saying that that is pitched on and straightened and that he had to go with me. You had to go with me, Ahsoka, but Ahsoka didn't agree. It's four for 163. Just over half an hour since the tea break. One or two appeals that have not gone the way of the bowler, and this is one of them. Is there bat involved? Or oh, maybe some outside edge, and maybe the ball missing off stump anyway. Certainly straightened from that very wide angle. That is a difficult ball to play. There you go, hot spot. Proof that the outside edge of the bat was the first strike. There's a big first strike too. And the back pad saves A.B. de Villiers. The thigh pad gave Hashim Amla up. Now Horrocks back over the wicket. Yes, Ritz. So Hashim Amlo was looking to just work it fine, keep it fine. He got it well off the bat, but his left leg was in the way. He hit it onto his thigh pad, ballooned it up to Simon Kadic. Now A.B. de Villiers, great level of this game. Oh. 
cheat as that's the place to bowl. That's unplayable. I'm not sure. Did he hit that? I think there might have been an edge there. I'm not, we're behind. Did he nick it? Definitely, Bill. That's a fantastic call. Definitely an edge. What a delivery from Nathan Horitz. That line over the wicket into a little blind spot and aiming at that crack. And we might see the pad used a fair bit now. And that's when Nathan Horace has got to change his pace. It's all been one taste for a little while now, about 85 k's. This is awesome. Got the shot. And Haddon just couldn't get the gloves high enough, quickly enough. Disappointing. Yes, Ritz. That was beautifully bowled. Coming over the wicket too. Just opened up the batsman a fraction. Spun. Pitched right. Made him play. Could we have a hot spot on that, Rob? Well, this has been a much more testing over for Asheville Prince. He's finding it much harder to line the ball up. He's much more uncertain about what to play and what to leave alone. JP Dumini, I said, Asheville Prince, get out of here. I've got Asheville on my brain here. <laughs> JP Dumini. That has to be the method if it's pitched outside the line of that leg stump. It's four for one, six, three. The KFC Pulse wants Simon Katic. Conclusive, 73% of you out there, 74% of you out there. Simon Katic to bowl. Maybe you're getting um, impatient at home, huh? Instead, uh, Riggy Ponding goes for Mitchell Johnson, his go-to man of the summer. And don't worry, everyone out there on the field will be getting impatient too. A catch has just gone down, but you've got to give the appearance that it's okay, it's okay, all cool. And just hope Mitchell Johnson gets it right. Oh, he'll get it right. But the thing is, the batsmen have found a bit of touch. And I think it's one of these games, if you can get in, it's OK. Even though you get the odd one, it's going to go off the crack. But both these guys are watching the ball closely. They haven't had many loose balls since once to put away. They're playing very sensibly. Two young guns. De Villiers on 41. Dominey on 15. A partnership 53. Good effort. Round the wicket, Mitchell Johnson. Oh! Ponting's board, another slip in. Indeed, it's Ponting himself who's come to a third slip, really. And then there's a gully, so they're, they're evenly spread. Slip, the next slip, the gully. Then there's a man at short extra cover. To go with the square cover and mid off on the offside. Six on the offside, three on the leg side. Mid on, mid wicket, long leg. Johnson striving for the breakthrough. Trying to hit those areas where there's a bit of uncertain bounce. and Indeed, trying to get a bit of reverse swing. Getting it to angle in to the right-handers and then to swerve away at the last minute. Following up, Doug Bollinger, who's got two for 45. Mitchell Johnson onto the exact same tactic Bollinger employed. Wide of the crease, angled in. Just seam it away a little bit if you can. We'll get the edge and hope it misses the back pad and goes through to the slips. Mitchell Johnson has now got one extra slip in place that Doug Bollinger didn't have. He's got a stag at slipcord in Ricky Ponty. It's, he's taking a bit of a risk. There's a first slip, Hayden. He's at about a third and a half slip. Ponty, and then there's a gully. I think he probably should, could go to a second slip. Even put another man in, take the mid wicket away, put another man in there, and put the mid on a little bit squarer. Really apply some pressure and allow Mitchell Johnson to let him fly. Maybe one around the corner. Little leg gullies. So they can get short, fast, and straight as well. And short leg. I reckon you could have extra cover to leg gully and uh, mid wicket to short leg. And bowl a bit straighter and vary a length more. Runs shouldn't be a problem. Ponting can't really think that South Africa can win this game, needing 213 still. And it's a sort of pitch that it's hard to force the pace on even if you choose to. We saw that with the Australians yesterday. In fact, only really Ponting transcended it. Clark was brisk for a time, but 
13 runs in the last eight overs. Mitchell Johnson looks tired. A long, hot summer and a successful one. Not a lot of bounce in his action at the moment. Consistently wide of that stump. Now, that's slightly confusing because of the angle. A left arm around the wicket bowler will need to pitch the ball fairly wide of off stump to hit the stumps. If that was the grouping for a, a right arm bowler, that would be much too wide. But there's a good example. Just a last-minute leave from A.B. de Villiers. It's four for 163. Say whatever you want about the pitch, it's provided for a fascinating match. Yeah, sorry. Position at the moment is that Australia need to take five wickets to win the game and get something out of the series. South Africa have to survive until the close of play or make 213 to win. Win 3-0 and go top of the world rankings. Ian, when you were keeper, did you have many suggestions for Mark Taylor, this situation? Not really, unless I spotted something that wasn't going smoothly. A bowler not uh, sticking to an appropriate plan for the individual batsman. Oh. It's the wicketkeeper's job to make sure what we talked about, we wanted to achieve, we're, we're on track to achieve. So, so there'll be a distinct plan for JP Dominey when Horrocks is bowling over the wicket. The wicketkeeper should keep an eye on the pace of each delivery. Just can, uh, a risky stroke, that, from Dumini. To look to cut from straight on a pitch of uneven bounce is dangerous. You're much safer with a straight bat off the back foot. He hasn't got quite as solid since the luncheon break. His partner has. The bill is this guy's just been a little bit loose. Encouragement for each bowler. Don't let anyone drift into a flat spot. But the captain, everyone knows the vice captain's the smartest person in the team be, because the captain will only approach you when the team's in trouble. So you think, oh, we're having trouble, are we? When it's all going smoothly, the captains are happy. Four for 163. Many regard the Invincibles as the greatest of, of all cricket teams, captained by Bradman. They toured England in 48 and the only team ever to complete an entire tour undefeated. This year marks the 60th anniversary of that historic record-breaking performance and Cricket Australia is proud to release the tribute, the greats of 48, in their honour. Just 60 of these worldwide, so it's uh, truly a limited edition. There's a mini bat as the centrepiece signed by 17 members. And it's complete with an individually signed card by Bradman himself. Limited edition to 60, as I say. Telephone 1300 720 552 or get onto the website. That is a fabulous item. Johnson's got some pain in his toe. He's cut out a hole in the boot to help him when he lands. And uh, truly the summer has taken a toll of him. And you just sense that he's not quite at full tilt. Beautiful, beautiful line. It is a strange field on the offside. They've got three men from Gully across to short cover in the line, Ricky Ponting, for a lofted drive. I think maybe a little bit closer. Bat paddle leg Gully so he can bowl a fraction straighter. Surely you're not going to hold out there in this situation. And the other thing, Bill, is you're taking away the stroke. AB de Villiers has put the stroke away because it's too risky. The Australians, I think, believe should be wanting him to play through that gap that our little field plans left 
but he's really comfortable now just not playing the shot. Mitchell Johnson angling in and either decking it away or swinging it away late is a good, is a good plan, but he must be driving at it, not letting it go. It's a battle of the wits there. See the shrugging of the shoulders there from A.B. De Villiers. He knows it's a lot of tension and pressure. Keep the concentration going. There's the line of fieldsman. There. All on a line. Looking for off to drive, really. It's a very sort of sudden thing this it, we've had a few years of the sweeper back offside and leg side allowing a single but it's only recently i'd say the last six months in the game where we've seen one or two sides an increasing amount of sides actually have these short fielders short covers short mid wicket short points that must also have something to do with the way that batsmen attack look to hit the ball on the up and are probably less good defensively than they used to be but are certainly much more eager to take on the bowling nicely played it's not necessarily ideal to have the left-hander down that end though it's four for one six four Mackenzie Morkel Amla Callis the men who have gone De Villiers Dumini fighting Boucher Harris they're good resistors to come bit more random stain and in, in teeny and we just don't know about Smith we know he won't bat if there's not much in it if it got really tight at the end well we don't know then that's nice touch and I think they're better this way round it's easier for the right hander now at the Randwick end of the ground and easier for the left hander here particularly if Horitz is going to pitch the ball outside leg stump he can pad him away Hunty's got three men around the back now. And there's one of them at short leg. There's a silly point in the slip as well. Great learning experience here for JP Dumini. He's had a wonderful tour. This is something different. Fifth day pitch at the Sydney Cricket Ground, turning one or two, keeping low. <laughs> tight leave. A very tight leave. If he does that and the ball pitches on the line of leg stump, he's in terrible trouble. It has to pitch outside leg stump, but then he doesn't have to play a stroke. Which it just about does. Very close. I think that just pitched outside leg and just even hit him outside leg. If, he, if it had have spun a little more, it might have put a, a lot more doubt in the umpire's mind even. Uh, careful. Just pitches outside leg. Shows you there's a little bit of curve there, a little bit of a drift through the air, away from the right hander. Four for one six six. I think Bouch like Harris. Bouch and Harris will be hard. Definitely a change in the sky. It's got a little cloudier and mistier and steamier on this hot Sydney day. Still this uh, unusual field placement, but this time on the leg side for Dumini with a square leg, two short fielders at mid wicket, and then a mid on. Only one slip and a gully on the offside attacking. Johnson will be looking to land the ball in that crack, the crack that broke Graham Smith's hand, fractionally outside off stump. Around there, what's that doing? Yes, you beauty! Mitchell Johnson traps his man. JP Dominey has to go, he didn't look at all pleased about it. But the persevering Johnson is Ponting's boy. They had the swap around. Dorman had been taking the off spinner for a long time. A.B. de Villiers 
the fast bowling of Bollinger and Mitchell Johnson. Now the lefty gets the crack, gets the crack, darts it into the front pad of JP Dumini, and a very useful partnership is finished. Dumini not happy. He did a good job for his country though. Five for 166. Well, drinks are just leaving the ground in the middle session of the final day of this uh, final test match of the summer, actually. Now, Mitchell Johnson just made a huge breakthrough prior to that drinks break. Removed JP Dumini for 16. Mark Boucher has made his way out to the middle. It took an hour after lunch, but they finally got that wicket. So it'll be Johnson to bowl round the wicket now to Boucher. Edge and short. Short of Hayden Ponting. It was like a leopard there at second slip, leaping across in front of Matthew Hayden. The captain is keen. He's eager. Ready to pounce on a bit of scrap there. Good healthy edge, well short. Look at Ponting go across there. Oh, and a play and a miss. Looking dangerous again, Mitchell Johnson. 16 wickets now for this series and 30 wickets in the Test match summer. The last one, JP Dumini. Not dissimilar to his dismissal in the first innings. Line's good. Height's the issue. Hawkeye is suggesting it's going to hit the top of middle. And you'd probably say fair enough. There's been a number of ones that have gone South Africa's way. This one goes Australia's way. I think that's fair enough. Mark Boucher uh, looked a bit stiff and sore when he was out there keeping in the second innings. Not surprising because he had a long innings and it's a hard, uh, hard ground to be keeping on in this match with all the balls bouncing in front of him. He certainly looked a bit hesitant when he played at that first ball. Didn't look like a man who was uh, at full stretch. Ooh, missed an opportunity there. That was a nice, big, juicy, full toss wide of off. But he lets it go. Five for 166. So five for 166. Horrocks continuing. Men all around the bat now. The bat pad on the leg side is behind square leg. Bat pad offside is a slip. There's a man at what we used to call the box position, or man there left of screen, Andrew McDonald there on the pitch, about halfway down. Well, Australia know they break this partnership. There's not a lot to come. Paul Harris is a bit of a sticker. Morkel opened the batting, so. That's one uh, tailender who's likely to stick around out of the way. Stain, sure, hung around in Melbourne, but he didn't look like he was that interested uh, when Siddle came round the wicket in the first innings. He wasn't looking like he was going to protect his stumps. Yeah, Dale Stain and the rest of the tailenders will have a tough work out there. Nathan Horitz, I think, has bowled pretty well. You know, he's 22nd over, 1 for 32. He's looked comfortable, though, from over the wicket. He's caused some issues Ow! for the batsman. The only other option, as I touched on just before lunch, when Nathan Horitz was maybe just around the wicket. Just to change up the angle, you've got the one that comes straight on with the angle from around the wicket. And then bringing a leg slip for the one that jags, especially the way he's playing it, walking across the crease. If he tries to turn it, the leg slip could come into play too. It's just another option to change it up and give the batsman something to think about. But he's looked pretty good today, Nathan Horitz. It's five for 167.
Well, still five for 167. There's still one ball to be bowled in this over. Well, there's actually been six balls bowled. And that will now be over, I'm assuming. Yes, Billy Bowden is now caught over. That was a seven ball over, that one. That <laughs> should have gone to Specsavers. Book an eye test online with the test experts. Now, uh, A.V. De Villiers takes a single from the first ball of that over, so that's going to give Mitchell Johnson five deliveries at the new batsman. And he's elected to go straight over the wicket. It must be looking for an edge, I reckon, first up. Not easy for Johnson to get an LBW because he doesn't really swing the ball back in towards the right-handers. He tends to angle and swing the ball away from the right-handers. Pretty good field too. The only man or maybe has another leg gully for that one that jumps off a, a crack. Mark Thatcher likes to get across the stumps. Just reckon he might be able to just... One that does jump. The way Mark Boucher plays at the leg gully could be a good position, or even a bat pad instead of the cover. Let him try and drive him through the covers. It might help the edge. Let's get another man around the corner under his nose. He was certainly very tentative playing at that delivery. Johnson had it right on line for the crack. There was the thought in Boucher's mind that this is going to jump off a good length. Well played. The other thing that's going to make it difficult for Mark Boucher is he's normally an aggressive player. Normally a player who likes to play shots and get on with the game. Not really that sort of situation at the moment. South Africa still need another 208 runs to win the game. And with every minute that goes by, you think that's less and less likely to happen. So 43.3 overs left in the game. They need to score now nearly five and over now, so it is getting extremely tough nigh on impossible with the batsman they got left. He's got that away. Just a single. And the other thing about uh, Mark Boucher is he probably experienced a lot more than the other batsmen in the first innings. Batting out so long, he had caught one on the glove, one that ran along the ground. So he's probably expecting a lot more than everybody else because he was out there for so long. He also might have the luck running his way. Shady got a ball that hit the stump, hit the leg stump quite firmly in the first innings off Nathan Horrocks. The bail popped out of the groove and sat on the edge of the stump. You can't ask for much more luck than that as a batsman. You see how far forward De Villiers got on that occasion. He's been out there for quite a while. He's got the feet moving, got a bit of confidence from being out there and Having got used to the pitch, he got well forward to that uh, delivery in comparison with the way that Boucher played forward to the first ball of the over. No. Two from the over, five for 169. That number down the bottom right-hand corner tells a tale. Runs per over only 2.28 today. Now that run rate's certainly slowing up now. And you'd expect that in a test match. You expect the wicket to deteriorate as it goes on. Oi. Oh, I reckon you're right, Chan. I wouldn't mind seeing Nathan Hotch bowl around the wicket just occasionally does give him a greater chance with the LBW. Now, he's got the new batsman, Mark Boucher, on strike at the moment, so this is fair enough. Oh, and he sticks yes, over the wicket. But by going around, he can pitch the ball on the stump. And if he pitches the ball on the stump, he can then straighten it down the line. When he's bowling sort of over the wicket, he's trying to bowl out in that rough. To turn it back that sort of far, he's, he's not going to get too many LBs if the, if the batsman's playing a shot. Oh, yes. I think just to add to your point, Mark, about coming around the wicket, 
that he's, he's that crack to me is going to come more into play if he comes around the wicket. He can he can aim the ball there and then spin it back, and that crack is right in the batsman's mind. And you've got natural variation, the one that goes straight on from there where the batsman plays for the turn, and it can go straight towards Matthew Hayden at slip, or even get a caught behind. Just thinks it gives him a few more options and just change it up to give the batsman something else to think about. Rather than just getting a little bit predictable from over. Still bowling well. Just ask a few more questions of the batters from around, I reckon, for a change up. Five for 169. Chairman of Cricket Australia on the left there, Jack Clark, the head of the Centre of Excellence, Greg Chappell back right. I'm not sure who the gentleman is in the foreground. You can just about bet the conversation will be about the cricket, though. And Peter Siddle has now been brought back into the attack. Mitchell Johnson, a nice, short, sharp spell, that one from Johnson, and I like the way that Ricky Potting has used him in that fashion in this innings. Came on. Just a four-over spell, got the wicket of Dumini. Now he's going to go for Siddle, who should be fresh. Oh, a little bit of reverse swing there. That dipped in late. Yeah, only the four overs. Maybe he's saving Mitchell Johnson for the new ball. Only five overs after this to the new ball's due. So he might want to bowl the two left armers, maybe, with the new ball, Bollinger and Johnson, or give Siddle just one or two. He's changed up pretty well. It's a good start from Siddle right on target on that crack with a little bit of in-swing or off-cut. Takes, takes a little while to get into his... We saw him spell just before lunch. Took a, an over or two to get into his top pace. He's got a big heart and he does keep running in and it looks like he has got a little bit of tail going on. A bit of reverse. Yeah, this is the style that, that I saw from him in that uh, Pura Cup final at the Sydney Cricket Ground it was one of the things that impressed me, the fact that he did swing the ball a little bit. I think that's one of the reasons why they took him to uh, India. You can see there the pace down with the first two, but he has traditionally just taken, as Shane mentioned, a bit of time to uh, build his pace in a spell. Yeah, I reckon that's something that he will improve throughout his career. He's only played just over a handful of first-class games. And now he's into... He's now only into his fourth test match, so he hasn't had a lot of experience of playing four- and five-day cricket. So I think that's something he will improve. 17 first-class games altogether and four test matches. And that's the big difference between playing club cricket, where you play Saturday and Saturday, to playing first class cricket where you play four days in a row. Often you're required to bowl two days in a row. Well bowled. And he's a half a shout there. He's fairly wide of the crease on that occasion, Peter Siddle. Yeah, you play a club game, bowl a lot of overs on the Saturday, and uh, then you can go to the beach and have a bit of a swim and get rid of the stiffness. That's if you live in Sydney. Do exactly the same from in Melbourne like Peter Siddle does just about every week. And the other thing, what you just to back up your point, Tub, about uh, backing up day after day, even these these three test matches against South South Africa have just about been back to back to back. The Melbourne Sydney tests like ten days of test cricket in thirteen days. It's it's even been put back a day, the Sydney test match. So it does take a little bit to get used to. That's a good start to his first class career. What um, beach would he go to down in Melbourne, Jane? Oh, he can choose from so many. Brighton, Sandringham, Abbott Street, Elwood, and so on. Which, all. Which, which one's got the best waves, mate? Uh, all not bad on a little paddle board, a little paddle, or a, <laughs> a drumstick, or a toothpick. Five for 169. Uh, 207 more for South Africa, but as I mentioned a, a moment ago, that looks very unlikely. Looks like an Australian win or a draw this game, the way it is panning out. Australia did at least four more wickets. And 
I suppose if Australia can get those four wickets in reasonably quick time, I don't think we'll see Graham Smith bat. But the closer we get to something like 5, 5.30, then you, Graham Smith will at least think about batting. What did Mickey Arthur say? I might have to chain him to one of the dressing room uh, poles. Oh, yes, Horry. Well, leg slip gone in now for um, Nathan Horrocks. Almost a leg gully, really. And the bat pad on the onside has now gone in front of the square leg. Oh, no. yeah, not bad. Change of angle will be good. Just to go back to your point about those surf beaches in Melbourne. I've just want to disappoint my friends that are surfers down there in Melbourne. We've got Gunnamatta, Flinders, Woolamai, and don't forget the most famous surf beach of them all, Bells Beach. Only about 45 minutes to an hour out of Melbourne. So many options in Melbourne. But you're now not answering the question I said in Melbourne, not in Victoria. Come on, Ritzy. Keep talking it up. You'll convince yourself shortly, Shane. And how many wetsuits do you need? to go swimming down there as well. Oi. Just the one, and it's good fun. Nathan Horrocks bowling well. <laughs> and hypothermia kicks in, what, five minutes, seven minutes, something like that? That's right, I forgot. Nothing's as good as anywhere in Sydney. <laughs> Sydney's got the best of everything. Wonderful place to visit. Not to live, to visit. Gee, it's taking some time to pick that up. She's been a bit slow on the uptake. <laughs> A single there, although De Villiers was a bit late moving. Five for 170. Well, at least 40 overs left to bowl, and only four overs now until the second new ball is due. Well, that's something else that will be in the back of Ricky Ponting's mind. Second new ball on a pitch that won't have a roller on it now either. That will be very handy in about probably 15 minutes' time. Oh, and that one leaps and hits Boucher on the gloves. Mark Boucher, as Ian Chappell said before, he looks like he's expecting it. One to do something. And Peter Siddle just decided to help him out. And that one did do something. Hit the crack and jumped off a length. Oh, ouch. Hang in there, just 206 more runs to go. But I think it's more like 39.5 overs to last for South Africa and hang on for a draw and win the series 2-zip. Really starting to hit the pitch quite hard again now, Siddle. Definitely takes him an over to get loosened up when he starts a new spell. That one, he really banged that into the pitch hard. got that away. And it times the ball well, Mark Boucher. Michael Clark will keep it to two. Looks like Boucher may be starting to think about uh, playing as many off the back foot as he can. Just to give himself that extra fraction of a second if the ball does leap on him. I thought he played the previous one that, that leapt at him pretty well. Just waited on that one and guided it away. I, th I think you can gather from the fact that he picked up two from that last square cut. And they didn't grab a single there when there was probably a, an easy one. The urgency for runs from a South African point of view are gone. They are definitely thinking time now. <laughs> Big full toss, that's close. And he's out. Well, he was very wide on the crease, Peter Siddle, but it hit Boucher on the foot. It was quick. 
was 143Ks. I reckon one of Peter Siddle's quicker deliveries. He's got through Boucher, and he's got Ahsoka de Silva to raise the finger. Well, I think Boucher just moved his guard a little bit, that delivery, and wandered across towards off stump. Still was going at a, a fair angle. I'm not sure that was ever going to hit uh, leg stump, never mind the next one. Well, Peter Siddle gets one there. Mark Boucher departs for four. Six for 172. Well, Australia have struck again, thanks to uh, Peter Siddle. He's having a good match, Siddle. Now he's one for 34 in the second innings to go with his five wickets in the first. Although I've got to say, Mark Boucher, I think, was extremely unlucky with that decision. Peter Siddle was very wide of the crease and it looked, even from the naked eye, to be angling down the leg side. Paul Harris, the new man, he was at out LBW, I think, in the first innings and he looked really concerned when facing Peter Siddle. It's a good shot, it's up in the air, and it's safe. It's landed in between one, oh, five guys there. Beautifully placed. Six for 172. Well, Paul Harris had absolutely no idea where that was. It was good bowling from Harris, so from Siddle. Now, Mark Boucher, we're just going back to his dismissal for a moment. Just watching Siddle bowl it live, he was really wide of the crease. Now, hits him in line, sure, but... The ball still has about a metre to go because it hits him on the crease. And you can see the angle there. It hits him line of about leg, and, yeah, that's going to miss by quite a way. So you've got to say there that Mark Boucher was extremely unlucky. And Peter Siddle got a lucky break, and then he followed it with a good one. Paul Harris has shown that he has problems with the short pitch delivery. He tends to take his eye off the ball. And that uh, was a lot of good fortune for Paul Harris that that fell safely. And not ideal to take the eye off the ball. Oh, John, I'll tell you what, it, went, uh, it missed five fielders, but nearly hit the stumps as well. Avoided everyone. Just a quick update on the odds of this match so far. Betfair trading Australia $1.20, South Africa 380 to 1. And the draw, six bucks. South Africa 380 to 1. Australia a dollar twenty and a draw six bucks. Nathan Horrocks out of the attack now at the Randwick end and uh, Andrew McDonald getting a crack with a silly mid off and a short mid on. Oh, it's beaten Brad had in a race away for four buys I got the feeling that may have been a plan looking for leg side stumping pretty tough for the keeper and you're not quite sure what height the ball is going to come at I suppose the other thing for the keeper in that situation, the height, he gets blinded as he tries to move. He can get blinded by the batsman as well. Real tough up the stumps at around 125k. Very difficult. A little inside edge in that. Stifled appeal again for McDonald, who thought he might have got through. A.B. De Villiers there. Well, they get the uh, single little inside edge onto the pad. May well be that De Villiers will tell Paul Harris to stay at this end. And De Villiers will try and take Siddle. I'm not sure he'll get any argument from Paul Harris. <laughs> Oh, he's got an edge. 
It's got him off the mark, but that was the second last ball of the over. So uh, Andrew McDonald's job here will, will now be to try and stop A.B. de Villiers from picking up a single off this last ball of the over. And actually, Ricky Ponting's moving the fine leg up inside where, where the one-day circle would be. So everyone now saving one. And that's good captaincy from Ponty. He doesn't mind if it goes for four. Just wants to keep Harris on strike for next over. Down, down, down. And he does so. No problem at all. Six for 178. Well, Australia can now sense victory. It's just around the corner. Six for 178. Change in the commentary box. Richie Benno, Michael Slater and Ian Healy have moved in. Thanks, Tubbs. Peter Siddle moving in. Don't worry about that. Again, it's fallen in between two and three men. Paul Harris is teasing the Aussies. But what fire from Siddle. Well, maybe a fieldsman has to go there. A little unusual <laughs> that he could stand just behind the stumps. Yet, uh, not off the glove. It was actually off the arm guard. Full safe, but Peter Siddle is fired up, isn't he? He's really going to test Harris out. The Australia's... The Australians can sniff victory now. Seven for 178. That's inclusive of Graham Smith, of course. The retired hurt. He's looking menacing. I hate to see one go through second slip here. There's one slip in place, and Harris is under this sort of pressure. That was glove. Straight off, flush off the top glove. This one arm guard. But Harris has got the, his work cut out for him. Siddle on fire, 16.2 overs, one for 34. He has had the knack of finishing things off. Here's one for your heels. I just had a look at the weather patterns around Sydney at the moment. There's a storm at Penrith. And a big one, even bigger one, coming over the mountains. Oh, this time it's edged again. Michael, keep that sort of talk to yourself, please. I'm telling you, there's a thunderstorm coming. It's Peter Siddle at the moment who's stirring up the thunderstorm out there, but that's looking west. No signs of it, but it's there. So the Aussies need these wickets quick. Or as Greggy would say, fast. Well, we're busily looking up the, the law books and the playing conditions as to how much time we could make up if we happen to go off the field can you make up time on the last day is it just time that's lost on the last day that you can make up or is it just a half an hour or can you make up an extra hour men everywhere just the one slip it's not uh, that sort of pitch really where you're going to get a lot of slip catches but you've got a, uh, a floater a gully oh. it's another short one and you'll see Siddle banging the ball in it's so effective on these pitches that stay down when the bounces all over the shot the hardest thing to face is the ball that's dug in because you really are told instinct wise to get back and play for the bouncer or you go into a crouch position to, to start ducking then the ball doesn't get up you're in all sorts oh. oh this time it's ribs the body's on the line there's lots of protection there Siddle digging it in men starting to encroach ponting in for the kill The umpire at the bowler's end is uh, trying to catch Billy Bowden's eye to see if there's any chance of a short pitcher being called. But uh, Billy so far hasn't looked back. No, nothing's got up. Time for the Yorker, though, I reckon. And rip into the base of the stumps. Not yet, not yet. Oh, popped it up. They, they need five men on the pitch. <laughs> it is pressure. Harris is absorbing it so far. Six for 178. Well, you're obviously with Linter Energy. Yeah, of course. Especially with their great energy deal. Shall we test them out? Oh, turn it off, mate. Join over one million Australians. Switch to Linter Energy, supporting your home team.
Here's the weather Michael Slade is talking about. It's becoming gusty. 30 degrees Celsius. It's hot. Blowing that in. Andrew McDonald wants to blow the bales off. Oh. In swinger. Four. A.B. de Villiers very composed, in control. McDonald no answers. And 50 is on the board. Yeah, the form didn't really flow into Melbourne from that outstanding opening test match. But uh, a very religious man, he looks uh, skyward and says thank you, or whatever he says to uh, the man above. But he's battered quite soundly throughout this innings. Won't be to any avail, but uh, he's shown a lot of resistance. And in there, mate. Handy for him to finish this part of the Australian tour in a positive sense. Played very well in Perth, and he's played very well here. Indifferent in between. Outstanding learning experience for him. He's making it look easy. As ah! easy as you can in these conditions. McDonald jags it back too far. Yeah, and that's exactly what he's bowling for heels, isn't it? He's bowling stump to stump. On this occasion, it just tails back in, this reverse swing swing there's a, a new ball due after this over and just sliding I think Billy's got that one right big shout though it certainly did come back very sharply but it was missing uh, oh, another couple of stumps slashing cover drive McDonald goes from off cutter to wide of off and dispatched Not the worst ploy at the moment from De Villiers, just to take on maybe a bit more of an aggressive hand, given the field is so attacking. There's men very close to the bat all around, on, offside. The men in the ring are very tight as well. They're not Six. pushing back as they would if a batsman was going or the conditions were, were different. You can ask uh, a few questions of the bowling if he just gets that aggressive mode going. And mixes it with defence like that and clever single pinching which allows Paul Harris, to, first of all, to get away from the fast bowling of Siddle, but just one delivery to face from Andrew McDonald. What were the cover and point and short mid-wicket fielders doing there? Must have known he was going to look for the single. Safely negotiated. 80 overs have been bowled, six for 187. New ball, will it be taken? It's been Horrocks and it's been McDonald from the southern end for some time, but now it can be double quick bowlers if they want it. It's Siddle firing up with the old ball. De Villiers gets under one. Right from the word go, he's been solid today. He seems to thrive in this pressure pack situation. He's lost partners intermittently, but he's stood fast. And he's been able to mix aggression with absolute defense. 130 balls, 55 not out. Yeah, once he'd adjusted to the conditions, he really got into a, uh, a dead bat position, didn't he? Where his technique was holding up, but some nice aggressive strokes in and around that. Second new ball, what do the Australians do? I, I don't mind them trying an extra couple without taking the new ball, but you'd, you'd, you'd think that they, they will take it, won't they, after a couple? Just keep this going because Harris has been troubled by Siddle, but he's at the non-strikers at the moment. I don't know how long Rocky, Ricky Ponting will stay with this old one. It, it, there is a little bit of reverse. I'd take it. I'd take it. I'd have it in Siddle's hand now, I'd, I'd think. Not to be yet. Wide on the crease. Angled in. De Villiers rock solid. If, um, if they can keep De Villiers down the striker's end, not let him take a single, I'd give Horrocks uh, one over from the southern end. And uh, if that wasn't successful, then I'd, uh, I'd take the new ball then. But I'd give Horrocks one over at Harris if possible. 
think both of them might be on left arm orthodox and right arm orthodox if that is the case ricky ponting motioning to michael clark do you, do you want to have a roll and uh, he's come up with the field placings and everything while ab de villiers is waiting for siddle's next ball so a little dash with part-time spin what about that vice captain saying to skip yep i'll bowl from that end <laughs> The question might have come from Ricky Ponting first up, though. Which end would you prefer if you are to bowl? It's uh, 16 minutes to the tea break. And uh, the Australians would love to stay out there for a bit longer. Well, that was the one de Villiers was looking for. He was just trying to nudge that out onto the offside to pick up the single. Now he's going to talk to Harris and tell him to be ready for the quick single. Might be a tip and run job. No slip now. The slips come out into the covers to save the single. I mentioned the Australians would like to be out there for a bit longer than the tea break, but that's only if it's nine down. And my assumption there was that eight down would mean nine down, but it's not nine down, so it would be tea. It's a bit confusing, isn't it? Six for 187. Well, everything's in the mix now. Wickets are needed. South Africa need to survive, and there's rain coming. Andrew McDonald. In blustery Whoa. conditions. Paul Harris is still trapped there. So you're believing me now? Yes, yes, I'm believing you, but I just don't have to say it. Now, we have dug out the the scheduled last hour is 4.30. It's to start at 4.30. If they happen to lose time now, you can make the time up that you've lost prior to 4.30. After 4.30, nothing. So the, the last hour is rescheduled on top of the time that's lost before 4.30. So you confused a high percentage of our viewers a minute ago. Now I've, I've finished them off. Bit of lightning. Amazing what we can do down there in the trucks. <laughs> yes, I was going to say, <laughs> that's just digital enhancement. <laughs> No, it, was it was real, it was real, Heels. It was real. Oh, God. The South Africans will be loving that. Australia probably haven't seen it. Tim Nielsen in the dressing room might have. The TV in the corner of the viewing room, but... It's gripping. Gripping. It's got us right to the end. The batsmen are still working overtime. The bowlers are working overtime to come up with new plans. And the dressing room is tense. Oh, what about that? It's angling in, keeping low, dead straight, and the bottom of the bat hits it. There's definitely a bit of uh, reverse swing there. That, that ball swung oh, a good uh, half a metre. Fight. South African fight and guts. Yeah, they've shown a lot of it right through him, their heels, and uh, they really came to Australia believing. And the reason they had that belief is because of all the victories they had in 2008. It set them up as well as maybe uh, not fearing the Aussies as much, given they'd just lost in India. For the first time, a number of them weren't playing against Shane Warne, Glenn McGrath. Well played. McDonald tried wide of the crease to increase the angle, and Harris survived. Six for 187. Growfoundation.com.au, that's the website. The donations throughout the test match, it's up around the 465, 
$470,000 mark. We're trying to hit the half a million before the close of play today, the end of the test match. But stay around during the tea break because it'll be Glenn McGrath with Shane Warne in the studio, Mark Nicholas hosting, and uh, the final day of this uh, inaugural Jane McGrath test match, if you like. It was day three. That was uh, her day. A lot of pink right throughout the five days. Michael Clark, this could be about getting overs in before the rain. Getting more opportunities at stealing a wicket. Top effort by A.B. de Villiers. He's taken the single, though. Clark's got Paul Harris for five. Oh, surely rain rate won't cruel a victory for Australia. They really need this. It's a, a lot for the Aussies to just to finish with some sort of high. 2-1, the series is gone, but to get that one test match win will mean so much to them. It's the feeling that they don't want to lose for too long. I just like the fact they're in this scenario. The more often they get into this last day scenario where there's a win on the line, if they perform well and if they perform poorly, they lose the better they'll become, the better cricket team they'll become. And they've been in this scenario a lot this season. This, It's really good stuff for the young side that Australia is. Uh, all learning so much with the pressure oh, yes, of having to perform to obtain success. Good, it's been a bit easy for some players in the last 10 years. Now the others have got to step up. Yeah, you've been big on that he heels, haven't you? It, it's not about panic, it's about we've lost great players, but we're still picking good players and they need time to find their feet at this level. Yes, our, our ranks are quality. They are quality, but they're young. They're young. They're, Brad Haddon there has played 12 or so tests and we expect so much of him. Michael Clark hasn't even played that many tests and he's already the vice yes, captain. Michael this is a rebuild, Clark. no question. And they are good players. But I don't even know whether they know how good they are just yet because they haven't been in this pressure pack situation often. Clark's first in that spell's finished. Six for 189. Movement at the station once again. Peter Siddle's been swapped around. You can see the flags in the top of shot that he's going to be bowling into the breeze or more into it than it helping him. So. He swapped ends. He was bowling from the other end. The members end two overs ago. Michael Clark's done a job. And all the men are around Paul Harris. The fine leg has come up. Mitchell Johnson, Peter Siddle might be at the body of Harris again. He's kept it up. And there's the fine leg gap that has just been uncovered. And A.B. de Villiers is happy with just one. Peter Siddle won't be too happy with that. And isn't. Oh. It's a huge difference, isn't it? When Harris is uh, on strike, or De Villiers in terms of the field, a fine leg back in play. You've got another second man out, deep square leg. For Harris, though, everyone is up in a catching position. I've just got to make sure, Australia, they don't lose sight of the fact they can get De Villiers out. Not as easily, but on this sort of pitch, they've really got a bit of striking at him as well. Definitely in the background there, just see one slip. The catches for De Villiers are in front of him. Mike Hussey on the left of screen, Ricky Ponting walking over to Simon Kadich or Nathan Horitz, it is. Having a chat, how do you want to go? Do you want to go at that end? Are we going to take the new ball? Those sorts of questions and decisions are being pondered by every player out there, batsmen included. I'd hate to see A.B. de Villiers nick one through second slip or third slip, catchable height, good bowling. It's 
Just trying to maintain the pressure, Australia. And you've got De Villiers concentrating hard. The skipper in his position, and the way he can look back over the members is probably seeing these clouds coming in quite quickly. De Villiers at the moment looking very sound. It's hurt. Just in the bottom of the knee. Never nice. One ball to go in this over. Australia's target is to keep A de Villiers, A B de Villiers at that end. That'd give him a four. <laughs> Paul Harris looks as if he's getting ready. He's getting the chest guard right. His helmet in line for next over in case he has to face it. All fielders are up. A de Villiers jumps it on! Siddle strikes right when they needed it. Luck really does come into this game. All twists and turns, and there's another one. A.B. de Villiers with one eye on the storm and one eye on Siddle has dragged it back onto the stumps. And the pitch Ooh. plays its part again. A hard shot when it's so close to you. Probably more a judgment error from the batsman, actually. Cutting too close. Trying to get to the other end. So seven for 190 now. Australia can sniff it. This is why Test cricket is unique. 30 hours of competition comes down to two hours of anguish for one team. Anticipation and optimism for another. Everyone thinking what might happen. Dale Stain, so effective in Melbourne with the bat and ball, comes into play at seven for 190. Michael Clark bowled the last over from this end. Mitchell Johnson comes in to attack. Paul Harris, he'll need all that protective gear. He had got ready, last delivery. One for 38 so far. Paul Harris on strike, round the wicket, and he works it through the gap around the corner. They don't have to protect anyone now. Harris takes strike by picking up two. That's what he was probably thinking. No, I've got, to, I've got to take two here, don't I? I'd love just to take one and lean on my bat. Here's De Villiers cutting close. Just came back at him slightly. And we've seen it quite often the last two, two and a half days. Batsman chopping the ball back onto the stumps. 56 from 144. It was a top dig. Probably worth about 80 or 90, given the conditions. Back oh. over the wicket. He hits the pads, but he's got to have pitched it outside leg. A few of the uh, Aussie supporters at the SCG thought, oh, that's out. What's that missing? Well, it might have been hitting leg, but it's where the ball pitched, outside leg. Can't be given. Well, you shouldn't be given. There can, That's right. It can be an error. Could slash shouldn't. But not then. This time it's outside off. He misses it. It's fast. It's full and fast and sliding away. Three balls remaining before T. Two wickets required. Get them all into slips. Ricky Ponding's just put himself into the second. We saw the amount of swing that Mitchell Johnson can get. There's no need for a mid-on, possibly a mid-off. And it's dead set on middle stump, and Harris goes well. Four from 22 balls, Paul Harris. It's a fight. Ponting uh, staying with the old ball, thinking that it's... Uh, Lost its air, it's staying lower because it's old. There's the reverse swing. Oh, short. There's a man around the corner. He gets away with it. So the new batsman, Dale Stain, gets one ball from Mitchell Johnson. 
Might see him go around the wicket before T, just for one ball on that T break. What a great recognition of the McGrath Foundation. We'll have at T, Glenn McGrath and Shane Warne in with Mark Nicholas, talking about the funds that have been raised through the Australian public, the cricketing fraternity itself, the Sydney Cricket Ground Trust support, Cricket Australia's support in the tea break. It will all be wrapped up. Nearly $500,000. About $20,000, $25,000, $30,000 $30, short. But I'll back the Australian public there to hit the half a million. And through. Mitchell Johnson finishes. His figures are one for 41. We break for 20 minutes now. What's that going to do for the storm? How far will it travel in that 20 minutes? I think it we're is... right. Do you? All good, says Michael Slater. It's fantastic. Australia need two, maybe three wickets to win. At the moment, South Africa fighting extremely hard. They'll go right to the end, that's for sure. The Australian bowlers have the new ball to their disposal. An uneven bounce could be a factor. We'll be back after a short break. For over 20 years, Combank has been supporting women in cricket so that thousands more girls can. Combank, proud supporter of women in cricket. <laughs> Should have gone to Specsavers. Book an eye test online with the test experts. Someone's with a Linter Energy? Yeah, of course. Aren't you? Yeah, especially with their great energy deals. Either of you guys seen my wicket keeping? Gloves! Get a great energy deal. Switch to a Linter Energy, supporting your home team. Batting. I've got Verinda Saywag at number one. His partner, Graham Smith. The South African skipper's 26th Test 100. I, I think it was the way he played as well. You know, he was a tough, uncompromising player, um, and, and he took the game to you. Yep. Number three, Brian Lara. Uh, four, Tenduka. Five, Coley. More fluent. He takes on the fielder, makes it. Six, Callis. He's got virtually Ricky Ponting's record with a bat, nearly Brett Lee's record with the ball, which is very impressive. Seven, I struggled with as well, and I've settled on Sangakara. Sangakara had an, a, an immense impact in Test match cricket. Um, I, I decided to give him to the gloves, mainly because who, who are these other batsmen I'm supposed to leave out? Brian Lara, Sachin Tendulkar, Virat Kohli, Jugs Callis. Like, you know, yeah. it's unbelievable. Then I've got Dale Stain for number nine, and I'm going to stick with Mornay Morkel. I guess with Mornay, I just hated facing him. He was big, he bowled that ugly length, he was, he was aggressive, always trying to either hit you. <laughs> it seemed like everything was hit height on the bat, or it was up around the rib cage. Oh, this time, yes! Uh, 10, Jimmy Anderson, and 11, uh, Murali. It starts with the eyes with Murali. As he's running into bowl, you've got these two massive eyes just sort of staring at you as he's running in. And, and then the ball would come out of, of, you know, of his hand and, and it's a pretty scary thought when you're not sure which way it's going. Um, so, so, so you could look like a real goose when you're facing him. And the other thing is you can hear the revs on the ball as it's coming down. It's like really like fizzing as it's coming down. And, and then lastly, there's normally four or five chirpy Sri Lankans around the back, you know, chirping away at you. So. Uh, it was certainly very challenging facing someone like him. Oh, that ball is close! He's given him! He's given him! Peter Settle's got a hat trick on his birthday! Opening up Alistair Cook and Graham Smith, uh, two lefties, obviously, um, yeah, great players, um, very good captains um, in their own right. Um, but yeah, they're always tough opponents, so they did well um, against us when we played them, so they'll open up. So we've got Kumar Sengakara batting at three. He's not wicket keeping, so that's why he's batting at three. Oh, what a shot. Oh, stand up and applaud. They've got Sachin Tanduka at four. 
We've got AB de Villiers at five. Does he get it away? He's got a test match hundred. And and this, I, I nearly forgot to put this man in too. I actually had someone else in this spot, um, but um, and then I realised I'd made a big mistake. So Jacques Callis then got put in oh. at number six. That's a wonderful stroke. His stats just, if, if you're a batter, you, you, you're very happy with your stats. If you're a bowler, you're still very happy with your stats. <laughs> um, but to be able to, yeah, to obviously combine both those, like he's taken just, you think he, he's taken just as many wickets or just under Brett Lee. I've got keeping is MS Stoney's. Guy is he? Yes, he is. Good catch. Diving to his right. Wide ball and he went for it. So... Um, that's why if the, if the opening opening two can uh, can lock in and uh, see off that new ball, uh, there's plenty of runs to be scored um, after those boys. So yeah, it's a solid top seven. I would have thought. Who who did you have instead of Callis at the start? Well, I've got him as twelfth man now. I, I know you only asked for a right. but he he ended up going the twelfth. It's Ben Stokes. The bottom four we've got uh, Stuart Broad. Three of the eighty third over. And bows him. There it is. Five wickets. Uh, I know he's batting at eight. Um, he's batting nowadays. Wouldn't have him at eight, but yeah. he's batting back in the day when he was when he was um, when he was on. Um, he's at eight. Um, but I'm not relying on these blokes to make runs. We've got plenty of runs up top. So yeah. um, we've got Dale Stain at nine. He's gone. He's gone. Unbelievable. And then we've got uh, the only one spin option, and that's Rangana Harath was always one that troubled us a lot um, and had a, had a lot of success against us. And, yeah, was a was a classy player. So, uh, rounding out the 11 is um, Jimmy Anderson. The swing of time. That's a good catch. Oh, James Anderson has won a battle there. Jimmy, Jimmy had a few into the wind, see how they're going, and then Brody can come in first change. But, um, yeah, you can't go past staying open in the bowling, I think. For players that I've played against, uh, he's definitely the best bowler um, I've played against. Had some really good battles with him, but just watching him play is amazing to watch. Luckily, got to play him in the Big Bash this year and got to see him run around again because, um, yeah, he's a beautiful bowler to watch bowl. So, um, yeah, he, he's definitely the, the main man in that bowling attack. The news from the Sydney Cree ground is that the Australians are ever closer. However, so is the bad weather. Tom Parker and his ground staff are ready with the covers. Those are quite dramatic pictures here. Australia on the brink of victory, but threatened by the weather. Waiting for us in the commentary box, Ian Chappell, Ian Healy and Mark Taylor. Yes, thank you, Mark Nicholas. Yes, that will be of some concern for Ricky Ponting. They are off to the northwest. Now, the breeze may bring that in, although I think that's moving more in a westerly direction. So, I'm not sure how much comfort Ricky Ponting will get from that. Ground staff are down by the roller. Down where the uh, tractor is as well. Peter Siddle's going to bowl. Harris on strike. Oh, that wasn't too far away from leg stump. Into the 86th over. Still have a new ball due if they choose to use it. But with this old ball reverse swinging and keeping low like that, I think you might see the Australians stick with this ball for at least a few overs. Afternoon, gentlemen. Afternoon, Mark. Not much fun out there for Paul Harris. Oh, it was in the air. One bounce to Hussey round the corner. Well, Harris is laughing his way through this fun. But Peter Siddle is aiming at the Bermuda Triangle, that crack in the pitch. And it is horrible. Are you uh, suggesting, Hills, that we might lose a ball down there? We, we might see one come back from that crack. Well, the middle bit has sunk down. That's well played. Watch that one pretty well. He doesn't like them when they're coming up at the body. Ricky Ponting has strengthened that uh, leg cordon. He's got two leg gullies now. 
Those middle bits are loose and they're low. Are you talking about your finger or the uh, the crack there? There's a couple of loose bits in that finger too that was pointing down there. <laughs> I wish the pitch would calcify like the finger. <laughs> Chaps, you're talking about the leg gully. Yeah, he strengthened that uh, that leg gully. There's two two guys in there now. Generally, you'll you'll see a leg slip and a leg gully if you're going to have two around the corner. But Ricky Ponting has opted for two squarer men because uh, Harris doesn't like the ball coming up into his ribs. Especially when a couple of intended rib balls have hit him mid shin. That's the difficulty he's and, and he's got to resist spectating the ball. Just sort of thinking to himself, what's this one going to do? Is it going to jump? Is it going to keep low? He's just got to forget it, play with instinct, and trust his skills. This is the classic, I reckon, under 10s feel, isn't it? You set when you're playing under 10s cricket. <laughs> So catch him in on the pitch. Everyone's about 10 metres from the bats so that don't get hurt. Oh. Well, that's got away from Haddon. That'll be another bye, I reckon. Yep, fire signal. Just the one from the over five, seven for 194. Australia need three wickets to win, maybe only two, depending on uh, what Graham Smith decides to do. I, I really think that Australia can get these next two wickets within the, say, half hour, 40 minutes of the tea break, then I don't think Graham Smith will bat. I think it leaves him too long and too much to do, particularly with a new ball due. That could really put his finger and his elbow and all sorts of risks that he doesn't really need at this stage, particularly now that the series has been won. Oh, moved off the crack. I thought there was an edge there for a moment. There's a good deviation. But the only appeal came from the commentary box, I think. Oh, the footwork went away. The ball swung away, hit the footmarks, and the bat hits the pitch. Whoa, that's ugly. Mitchell Johnson gets it right. Paul Harris could be nowhere. I want to know what you think is actually ugly, Heels. That is really one of the ugliest defensive shots you're going to see for a long time. What do you call that? It's called anxiety. <laughs> Another, another swing and a miss. He's going to have to get the ball straighter, isn't he? He's got it tailing away nicely, Mitchell Johnson. Round the wicket, angling in, tailing it away. It's not getting any prettier, that <laughs> defensive shot. He knows straight away, I should be leaving that go. As Mitchell Johnson comes steaming in around the wicket at you, you know the angle's going to be there. There's two men to the right of screen, three men to the right of screen. You're expecting something into your ribs. And then he pitches it up and swings it away. Well, number three. He's getting it closer, though, isn't he? He's moving the ball back in towards off stump, looking for an edge. Well, if Graham Smith is thinking about coming into bat, those three shots may have uh, cons convinced him that he would be wasting his time. Mind you, if the if the storm starts to starts to get really black near the ground, then he be interesting to know what sort of gear he's in at the moment. Has he got changed? Oh, because it's probably going to take him quite some time to get dressed. I would have thought that wouldn't be something he could do in a hurry. We've been on Smith Watch a little bit, haven't we? But we've seen it, I think, last year sometime. One of Brett Lee had his training shirt on like that, like Graham's got on at the moment, sitting next to Mark Boucher. But underneath, he had whites. He had his whites and his bowling boots ready for the decoration. So we need to just pan down and get get uh, past that balcony and see if he's got the, the pads on, thigh pad. Keeps that one out. Bit of a clap from the... SCG members. The, the thing about Graham Smith coming into bat, uh, it, it would have to be if they've only got a couple of overs to go, or, or I guess if the storm was around. He's the, the bottom hand he could virtually keep off the bat. The top 
top hand is the one that does most of the work. So the broken party could get that out of the way. No, he's got the tracksuit bottom on. I think that tells us something. Edge and short of Ponting. And that's the problem. And there's no bounce in the pitch. The edges won't carry either. Harris survives. Seven for 194. Hashim Amla and A.B. de Villiers were the mainstays today. And that uh, wicket of A.B. de Villiers just before T has given Australia an enormous opportunity here. His tittle. And a nicely played from Dale Stone. That'll be four. And that'll get him off the mark. And also give him some confidence because he got him behind that. Peter Siddle went round the wicket in the first innings and bowled him leg stump with Stane backing away. That is how he played in Melbourne. He stuck in there behind it and batted for a long time in Melbourne for 76. So we know he can certainly bat, provided he doesn't back away. And with no fine leg, that takes up a bit of time. While fine leg, in this case, Mitchell Johnson chases after the ball. I think that's hit pad. It may have been an inside edge there. Once again, it flew safely. And it's a great line. Good line by Siddle. The one before, a little too angled down leg. This one much straighter. The batsman has to take more of a risk going across, but can even be a little more middle and off than middle and leg. well played just an update on that storm it's around Parramatta at the moment and I believe it's sort of heading it a bit more of a southerly direction than it was earlier so it's a worry for Ricky Ponting that one there wind still coming from the northeast that storm was moving towards the right of screen there but we believe it's moving a bit more in this direction it's got to be a concern for Ponting it needs two quick wickets The other thing that's worth noting is should we get into the last hour, then it rains, can't make that time up. So while they're off the field in the last hour, you straight away start to lose time. There's no sort of adding on a half an hour or an hour once you get into that final hour. Well, Australia saved one in 66-7 uh, in Johannesburg with a huge black storm coming over the uh, stands. They used to come in late in the afternoon. It was about four o'clock starting the last session and I reckon we got about an over maybe two overs after tea and then down she came oh he's gone the big shot got away with it well, Australia won't mind seeing that Dale Stone can't help himself but play the big drive that we did see at the MCG last week totally understandable too that's good length really good length by Peter Siddle this has been a good over bar the one angled down leg He's pitched it up right in the vicinity of the crack two and staying just good enough. I don't know whether we need these men near the bowler here. Mid off, mid on could be better used up in slips. I think something. No, Billy Bowden says no. I reckon he's right. Shoulder or back, I reckon. Seemed to drop his hands. I reckon Bowden's got that one right. Seven for 198. Hey, Rob, the, the aftermath. Johnson continuing. Down the leg side on this occasion. Johnson just can't quite get it right at the moment. That last ball, the last over, is a good decision from Billy Bowden. Seemed to come off the batsman's shoulder. Stain got his hands down. But he walked out of his crease pretty quickly. Brad Haddon was alert to that and rolls it at the stumps so low. Billy Bowden, the fact that he was walking down probably means that he called over. There he is pointing to the arm. Once he has called over, the ball is dead. So it would have been a matter of uh, when he called over. At the moment, Mitchell Johnson, he 
The one he's firing in towards the stumps, he's just dragging to the onside, and that one that is a bit more round off stump is going too far away. He just can't get that line right. Once again, he beats the bat for about the sixth time since the tea break. Let's have a final analysis of well, this is Johnson to explain your uh, point, Mark. Just all around off stump at the angle. Look, the one that's angled in has been on the body and been, the right hand has been able to get inside it. That green one, for example, and work with the angle to the leg side. But there is three catches there. What's that? That's an off spinner at 140 k's an hour. Thankfully, that crack has taken the ball away from the right handers all day, not in. Oh, that's got, that's got a mile. He's missed that by 10, 15 centimetres. There's no doubt that Johnson's got to get more balls that are going to hit the stumps. There's no one in the world Paul Harris is going to hit that. Well, we used to say, fielding in the slips, this guy sprayed the anti-nick on the edge of his bat. I think Paul Harris has. Oh, that's better. That squared him up. Might be a bit high, though. Much better line there for Mitchell Johnson. That sort of pitched around that off stump, but I think it may have bounced a bit high. Hitting pretty high, and uh, Harris was up on his toes. He's not comfortable at all against Mitchell Johnson. Yes, that second last delivery is the right line. Just got one in the over, though. Seven for 198. So it's still seven for 198. Just two results possible now. An Australian win, which is likely, or a draw if that storm comes over. Change of bowling from the southern end or the Randwick end of the ground. Doug Bollinger back into the attack. A good reward so far in this innings. He's got two wickets. He's bowled well. A number of close shouts turned down. And in fact, the new ball has been taken. So Ricky Ponting's had enough. He's going for the throat. And probably also because he's hoping that Dougie Bollinger can get the ball to swing back in to the right-handers, either hit the stumps or hit the pads. Carry through. I think the key here for Doug Bollinger is not to try too hard. He's just got to find his rhythm, swing the ball back in as he can to the right-handers. Anxiety, you mentioned a moment ago for the batsman heels. That will be Doug Bollinger's problem now if he gets too anxious to get a wicket. And he sprays them around a bit. Dougie Bollinger bowling well with the new ball. We'll get a wicket here for sure. Inexperience doesn't allow you to relax too easily, does it? That's well played. Dale Stain. Brad Haddon will be tense. Mitchell Johnson tense, I'm sure. Peter Siddle and the umpires. The umpires have had a good session since T. This one first, Siddle. Bouncing Dale Stain, everything all in a line. Gloves, arm guard, shoulder, the Australians appeal. The umpire says no. And it's great, a great decision. It's in the air and safe. Beats mid off. Well, it was a, sort of a leading edge. And it hung in the air, well, it seemed like for ages. And, uh, Peter Siddle couldn't get there. Well, there was a hint of in-swing, which will be encouraging for Doug Bollinger. Yep, definitely came back in. Just held up off the pitch, which caused the, uh, the batsman to just close the face on it a little. He was worried for a moment. Dale Stain. No, tucks that array to fine leg. Now, I don't think... But Doug Bollinger will mind that too much. I think he will fancy his chances against Paul Harris. He hasn't looked like getting bat on ball from Mitchell Johnson. <laughs> he hit the important one. Mitchell Johnson got one straight on the stumps and he nicked it to second slip. Didn't carry to Ricky Ponting, so he did hit the important one. But Doug Bollinger has to think here. He can't, he can't be over-hyped. He can't lose control. 
As Mark Taylor said, if he bowls well, he'll do well. He'll do what he's done year after year. That's well played. He's got that away, Paul Harris. Looks for two. Settles for one. They were actually running quite hard, thinking about two. That's when you're in the field, that's one thing you always fancy you've got a chance of getting a run out when you've got two lower order players together. Never know what they're going to do. No! That's pretty well played from Dale Stone. Seven for 202. Australia still need those three wickets. 26 overs or a minimum of 26 overs to be bowled. 15 overs minimum in the last hour of a test match. Peter Siddle's been swung around to the Paddington or northern end of the ground. He's got around about the same sort of field. There's now a bat pad though. Simon Kadich. Simon Kadich is in there. He's looking for something off the gloves. Oh, that's kept low. Really low. Yeah, fair enough. And a tough one for Paul Harris. That's nigh on impossible to play. It was short, it's a brand new ball, and it skids low. There was two noises. Harris looks a little unhappy. And uh, that could be the reason. He may feel as though he nicked that. Certainly, the ball didn't bounce on him. Stayed very, very low. There was absolutely no doubt about height, but there was a noise. Hard to say. There. Actually, it's bounced a bit more than I thought. Not really. It was supposed to bounce a lot higher than it did. No question. He almost walked Paul Harris. He was resigned to being given out there, and he walked. It'll be the pitch that he's not happy with. Eight for 202. I'll be right shotgun. For over 20 years, Combank has been supporting women in cricket so that thousands more girls can. Combank, proud supporter of women in cricket. Makai Rantini. Whoa, that's got to be a wide. No, not called. Mikhail Rantini is the new man for South Africa and maybe the last man for South Africa. Last shot we had of Graeme Smith was that he had the tracksuit on and I still think that uh, with the amount of overs left, 25 and a half overs left, that's too many for the South African captain to come out and bat with a broken finger and a bad elbow. That's their only hope there. You know, it's, it's worse than a broken finger, too. It's a, it's a broken bone in the hand. It's above his little finger knuckle. Makes it even tougher. Brad hadn't a big chance to get a broken bone in the hand there. Sliding low, swinging away, hitting the crack, going further. The right hand was all he wanted to afford on that one. <laughs> Poor old Brad Adnan. I don't think he even tried really to stop that. Happy to give away the four buys at this stage and keep all the fingers in check. Here's the last wicket. Yeah, I don't think you're right. I think Paul Harris was more upset with the pitch. That was banged in short. You'd expect that to be at least chest height. It skids low. Strikes him in front. I don't think there was an edge there. And then Tini gets a brute of a delivery. Well, that one takes off. And actually, he plays it quite well. That was nasty. He's done very well there. That's He's got the middle of the glove to it. His, his reactions uh, were excellent because that's lifted off a pretty decent length. And he's managed to keep it away from the bat pad. It's small consolation, isn't it, that he played that one very well because now he's thinking, what is next? What is next? I've played that beautifully, but I bet he's not thinking that. <laughs> thinking why didn't someone catch it <laughs> oh and it was up there swinging away i think peter Siddle might be best off just trying to hit the deck in that same spot we've got one that skids low to harris lbw and then that one was probably a fuller delivery and, oh uh, hang on hang on what you've been saying for three tests we want him swinging it 
<laughs> he finally swings it. One wicket left in the series, and we say he should be pitching it up going straight. <laughs> Well played. Get there. Very well played. Got him behind that wicket made now for Siddle. Well bowled. He's got three for 38. Tate for 206. Eight for 206. Here's Bollinger. He's got to find the right length now, Doug Bollinger. He probably hasn't got the cracks to work with bowling from that southern end of the ground. He probably needs to pitch the ball up a little bit more than Siddle. Yeah, he's probably got just that one to aim at there, get the ball to come back from there. Oh. That swung too far. It's not a bad length though, I reckon. Doug Bollinger, I'd like to see him pitch it up because he has the ability to swing it back in to the two right-handers. You start the ball around about off stump, and just swing it back a bit. Chance of getting hit for a few. We've got to work on the theory that if they miss, you hit. And that's the stumps, I mean. Dale Stain has shown that he's, um, if the ball's up there, he's going to have a drive at it. So if he can get it to swing back in, always a big chance of cleaning up the stumps. Just that one innings in Melbourne where he's really hung around. One left. Really well left. Said it was quite a strange innings, his innings in the first one here, because he he didn't watch the ball very well, Dale Stain. He tended to back away from particularly Peter Siddle and end up getting bowled leg stump, exposing on the stumps. That's more like how he batted in Melbourne. It, not great foot movement, but you, you don't expect that from your premier fast bowler. But in Melbourne, he at least hung in there, watched the ball pretty closely, just like he did on that occasion. That was much better. He's got it away. Now we'll get a single for that. That'll give Antini one ball to face from Doug Bollinger. Yeah, I think um, Stain is the better equipped of the two to hang around for a while. Antini really is, uh, is more of a stroke maker or a shot player as a tail ender. Tends not to defend too much. Well played again from Mentini. Out of the middle of the bat, 8 for 207. So Australia need two wickets, maybe just the one. Changing the commentary box. Richie Benno, Tony Gregg and Bill Laurie have taken their seats. Thank you, Mark Taylor. <coughs> Peter Siddle. 22 overs, 3 for 38. Stain. Inside edge. Good afternoon, Tony and Richie. Good afternoon, Bill. Yes, uh, this is uh, the last rites now. There's uh, no doubt that even although there's a little bit of rain around, we've, um, we've had our cameras down at the South African dressing room and the uh, South African captain is still in... Um, well, he's certainly not in his batting gear. He's uh, in that green outfit they wear to, the, to and from the ground. So uh, he won't be coming out. So it just takes one wicket now to finish this. Yes, that's all they need. Um, Graham Smith's still in his civvies. And uh, would be very unwise of him to, uh, to come out anyway. 
I know others have done it. We were talking about Cowdery earlier in that West Indies match at Lords. But uh, he has two severe injuries, Graham Smith. And uh, there's no doubting his courage. He's uh, been a terrific player in the series. But um, unless it starts to rain, I think that's a no-goer. Peter Siddle goes for the Yorker. Eight wickets in the match so far for Peter Siddle. Picked up four for seven, his second spell. 22 deliveries to clean up the first innings for South Africa. And he's done a great job here today. Yes, he has. That one's uh, oh, right down on the base of the bat again. Yes, uh, first innings there, five for 59. And three for 38 here. So he'd be pretty satisfied with his work. Great, great effort by the Australian team when you're two nil down. Some new faces in the team. He bowled him in the first innings when Stain didn't cover. If you remember, he went to the leg side and he knocked him over. This time, Stain holds his ground. Almost. He's done his job, Dale oh, Stain. I thought his performance in Melbourne was sensational. Come here with a big reputation. 18 wickets for the series for Dale Stain. It's the number one team in the world. Well played. Nicely in position to pick up two. Yes, he's very much a confidence player, I think. Uh, he's just starting to feel bad on ball a little bit now. He's faced 22 deliveries so far with a one boundary. So um, he's been out there for a little while. What will unsettle him no end will be one of those rearing deliveries. Yeah, you've got to bear in mind uh, about Stane that uh, at the beginning of this tour here, no, they weren't actually writing him off, but they weren't giving him credit for being uh, the leading bowler in the world. And um, everyone seemed to have forgotten that um, he'd had injuries in England, eight for 209. Ricky Ponting will be very pleased that Siddle, Bollinger, Johnson, McDonald and Horrence have all got wickets today. They've all chipped in. It's been a good team effort so far. Bollinger from the Randwick end. Well played. Martini getting right behind the line. Well, that message that went out uh, on the field might be that it's raining at the back of the ground. Don't do anything silly. Yes, I think uh, the closer word for rain is netta. Netta. Tabuyangok. The rain is coming. Bond just worked hard. Two for 50. Turning point of this match, I think, was Jar Kalos out for four today. Amal was going very well at the other end. Magnificent court and bold by McDonald. And all of a sudden, they were three for 91 in the first session. It's... Oh, off the top of the helmet, go away for four, will it? No, it won't. Yes, it will. Making good ground. Well, he was a taking evasive action, so that's four leg buys. The only problem with that is that because it went to the boundary, he's got to face the next one as well. And it's not often when you get uh, smacked on the head like that, that uh, a number 11 batsman handles it very well. So um, this will be a challenge for Makai and Tini now. Makai will be all right. He's been around a long time and he's just got a message from his skipper in the dressing room. And he'll understand what he's got to do. Oh, well driven, Bollinger was up. Maybe he needs to throw one wide, Bollinger, here to tice him into a drive. Sometimes when you get a hit on the head or the shoulder, throw one wide. It was a fraction too straight, didn't swing back enough. Well, that was beautifully played. Having been hit on the head, the ball before, he's lined this next one up absolutely superbly. 
Just watch this. No trouble. Bollinger going around the wicket now. It's getting dull here at the Sydney Cricket Ground. Runs. At least two. I think they'll be happy with two. It's final ball the over. In fact, it's the fifth ball the over. Santini too has got to negotiate this last one now, and he'll um, he'll just want to basically stay down this end and let Dale stay and handle the other end. Ponting making changes all over the place. So two gullies, two slips, two men on the drive on the onside. Round the wicket is Bollinger. Oh, the bouncer. Eight for two one five. Peter Siddle, Dale Stain. Well played. Got a leading edge. He's taking a single shot. They look for two. Yes, they will. Tenny did well there. Well, Ponting's certainly not very happy with that. Uh, he's, uh, he really wanted them just to get the one. In the end, safe. Well driven. Well, take two. Dale Stone doing his level best here to get back to ball. Siddle. He's 24th over, looking for his fourth wicket and victory for Australia. Man now coming into a short mid-off in a catching position. It's time it's through mid-on, that's four. Yes, I think what he's got to do now is go around the wicket. If you remember in the first innings, that's what uh, Stain didn't enjoy, looking down at the bowler over the top of all those cracks. He jumped backwards and got his leg stump knocked over. I think that's what uh, might just affect him a little bit, but he's um, obviously going to stay over the wicket. Whoops. Well bowled and well played in the end. Hasn't been easy for the top order batsman, so it's very tough for the the bowlers. Well, that is interesting. They hit the glove and um, Siddle had a bit of a go at him. Uh, and um, Ponting just drops his head a bit. Uh, I can tell you that Dale Stain um, didn't take a backward step either. Quite right. Let's have a look at the finger. Go on. Who knows, it might rain in about five minutes' time, so no point in uh, doing anything other than dragging this out a little bit. Seven minute could count. It's, it's OK at the moment. Shouldn't be a problem, really, but just put a little bit more pressure back on the Australians. Interesting little sequence there, I thought. Uh, Siddle ran in, bowled a short ball to Stain, then gave him a mouthful along the lines of, shouldn't you be up the other end? With and a couple of little words in the middle. And Stain thought, no, I think that finger's hurting me a little bit. I might just call for a bit of attention on it. That's about uh, nine points to Stain and one to Siddle. Stain on 18. That's the number of wickets he's got in the series. He was a match winner at the MCG for sure. 
He made 76 as well. And the average is about eight or nine at test level with the bat. Right, well, they're um, patching that up, taking a bit of taking their time over it as well. And um, once they've got this all fixed up, they get the glove back on and a little battle will continue. Go back to the stumps and ask for guard again because Peter Siddle's chanting like a mad bull at the bowling mark. Just hold him up, pull away. Only played about 16 first class games, Peter Siddle. He's got eight wickets in this test match so far. The umpires are saying, come on, chaps, can you hurry up a bit? Well, this is the magic device now that um, I, I'm not too sure. I think it. Uh, I wish, uh, wish the umpire would move out of the way so we could actually see this. Righto, I'm fine. And he trots back to his mark. He didn't seem as if he wanted uh, too much of that uh, magic instrument that they had out there. Around the wicket goes Peter Siddle. Dale Stain takes guard, maybe leg stump. There's a leg slip in, leg gully, short mid wicket. Two slips in the gully on the offside. Whoa! Well played in the end, didn't go. Held his ground. Peter Siddle should remember there's a three test match series coming up in South Africa. Well, there's one thing that is a stone cold certainty. There is one stone cold certainty. Dale Stain will remember it. Fast bowlers generally have pretty good memories and long ones. On the ground, a grubber. Eight for 223. Eight for 223. A change at the Randwick end. Andrew McDonald with the big wicket this morning of Jack Callis. Caught and bowled for four. 11 overs, one for 21. Whoops! Back! Oh. Yes! Oh no! Four! <laughs> Tini goes to six. Yes, that must have been quite close to the stumps as well. It, uh, it was picked up and went, uh, was thrown by, was it Clark that picked it up? It was, and have a look at that. Uh, just a little bit wide. I can't really understand why Haddon's standing up here, Mr. McDonald. You can't see Teeny charging down the pitch. You give yourself about a 40% chance of dropping a bottom edge if you, you're up. Okay. I only say that because great Wally Grout said the percentages aren't on. Your chance of a stumping, probably 2%. The chance of dropping a catch, probably 50%. One wicket for Australia. The members are really supportive of this test match. Fantastic, the member stands. The ladies stand there, the members stand almost full on the final day. The binoculars are up. Yeah, very wide, that one at about 120 kilometres an hour. So uh, not even Teeny going to have any trouble leaving that one. Got to get it straight. He's uh, he's hit the cracks there a few times, so it's on his line. Oh, shot! That's four going for the Yorker, maybe, or the half on the middle leg, and he's put that away beautifully. Oh, they're hanging on. This partnership getting into the 20s now. 29 off 33. Well, that is a very straight delivery and nicely played, though. Ntini on 10. Dale Stain on 18. Change by Ricky Ponty. He's going to short mid wicket. There's a bat pad, a short mid on. Short uh, cover, and just a one slip and a gully.
only 120 k's at bouncer. He have a bowl eight for two, three, one. Eight for 231. A round of applause at the members' end because there's a change in the bowl of the series for Australia. Mitchell Johnson comes on, try and win the test match. He's coming over the wicket. He's got the crack there. He's got stain on strike. That's very well taken, actually, down the leg side there. He's, um, he's decided to home in on that leg stump to Dale Stain, who uh, has got a pretty sore finger. You can, you can tell that that's the case. He, he was also out bowled to one which uh, he jumped away from. Straight to mid-off. Last ball, the last over. I think you were saying that was a pretty ordinary over, actually. Another change. A man coming into forward short leg. Mid off, mid off, cover short. Swing and a miss. Oh, that was a, a quick delivery, wasn't it? And um, it was bang on target. It would have gone flying and carried easy to both the slips that are in position. And so I think Johnson wants to uh, finish this off now. Well played. Dale Staines giving it everything. Full face of the bat, the body, pads, helmet. Well, you've got to take your hat off to him, don't you? He's, um, he's gutsy. I, th I thought that... Um, oh, and um, that seems to have changed direction slightly. That's... Uh, in the back, uh, just the south side of the, of the ground here. Furthermore, you can't see anything of the city. In there, so it's uh, on its way. Oh, that was quick. Eight for two, three, one. That <laughs> should have gone to Specsavers. Book an eye test online with the test experts. Clouds coming up over the member stand. It's going to be Peter Siddle from the Randwick end, Andrew McDonald. Just the one over. Well, I must say, I've detected uh, just a little bit of confidence in uh, the batting of these two now. They're getting behind the ball, they're trying to block everything, they just just fighting every single delivery. That's little Ponting. Little Ricky Ponting sitting in uh, the back row. Emmy Charlotte. Whoa! Well bowled, well played. Uh, a little smile on his face, then a little look down at the pitch, and uh, 
We have a little chat together, the uh, two South African fast bowlers. Oh, that was close. They've been there for half an hour. It's a tremendous effort when the top orders failed, apart from De Villiers and Amwa. That is uh, beautifully left by <laughs> Tini, pitch just outside off stump. So he's on 10 of 21 deliveries. South Africa fighting for their lives here, hoping the rain's going to come. And the members quiet, hear a pin drop, waiting for the big roar. Through him, missed everything. I <laughs> can't believe it. Latini can't believe it, nor can Siddle. I think uh, Siddle reckoned he had him. It was just too good a ball. It was a beautiful leg cutter. And Tini played at it all right. Oh, boy, it was close. It was close to everything. Bat and stumps. Again. This is where it can get very frustrating. You can imagine Ponting thinking, oh, it would be great to win this test match, but uh, he's probably got a message that there is some rain in the area. He can probably see it himself. That's a fine over, eight for 231. <laughs> Mitchell Johnson. Al Stain. Wide ball plays and misses. Is the difference with Mitchell Johnson is he's that, uh, that little bit quicker. So when it's up in the block hole, they've got to get their bat down real fast. And of course, these two will also be thinking about the short ball. They've received a fair few of them. Managed to keep uh, themselves out of the way. Stain has got a nasty smack of the finger. That'll smart for a while. towards 4.30, the wonderful old uh, grandstand here at the Sydney Cricket Ground. Bang! <laughs> it's a teeny in the road. <laughs> Typical number 11. Yes, and Tini's getting it from both ends now. Getting bombarded by the Aussie bowlers, and um, that one hit at him nice and hard. He just couldn't get out of the way. Oh, well, no, he did get out of the way. Obviously, he wasn't hit that hard. It's gone bang. Well, they're doing their best to survive, and it's not a bad way to do it. Was up. This mightn't be so full. This next one. And I think that might have hurt his finger a little bit too. It hit right on the base of the bat. So the, uh, the bat would have jarred the finger. He's had the glove off and back on again. I think once you've hurt your finger, there's no point in taking that glove off. Oh, magnificent delivery. 146 Ks on the last day. He's Got a lot of overs in his 19th over. He's very sharp. 
Good carry to the keeper. That's the over bowl, eight for 233. Just coming home from work, Australia need one wicket to win the Sydney Test match and go down 2-1. It'd be a great comeback by Ricky Ponning and his team. Clark 138, Siddle so far eight wickets in the match. It's getting darker and closer. Through him again. Well, Mackay and Tini is doing everything he possibly can to try and play this ball in the middle of the bat. And the last uh, three or four, he's, uh, he's he's thought he's got them covered like this. Look, he's really trying to play it. That is just missed the bat. A little bit of thigh pad and just over the top of the off stump. Siddle should be learning something from this. He's just got to get it straight. Trouble is, whenever it's straight, he plays with the middle of the bat. No trouble. It's been a hot day. The fast bowlers have had their share of work. Siddle on his 26, Bollinger 17, Johnson 19. with him that's the way that's the call that uh, is going on around the ground at the moment and uh, Dale staying down the other end and is saying well played boy that's been a bit of a fight this is 31 the partnership now Hello. 39 minutes they've been there together And what's more, Ntini's getting better at ducking as well. He's uh, been hit on the helmet once. And then played a brilliant forward defensive to the next ball. Actually, it's more of a drive to the next ball. Runs. It's four more. Great value for your shots here at Sydney Cricket Ground. Just a little push through the gully. Pass. I think Brad hadn't thought it was three. He was looking for the run out there. Not on Brad. He's laughing now. Got all excited. Typical wicket keeper. Just one ball remaining in this over from Peter Siddle. Latini on 14, Stain on 20. Well fired, 8 for 237. Crowds coming up over the member stand. And 
it's going to be Peter Siddle from the Randwick end, Andrew McDonald. Just the one over. Well, I must say, I've detected uh, just a little bit of confidence in uh, the batting of these two now. They're getting behind the ball. They're trying to block everything. They're just, just fighting every single delivery. That's little Ponting. Little Ricky Ponting sitting in uh, the back row. Emmy Charlotte. Whoa, well bowled, well played. Uh, a little smile on his face, then a little look down at the pitch, and uh, <laughs> they have a little chat together, the uh, two South African fast bowlers. Oh, that was close. They've been there for half an hour. It's a tremendous effort. And the top orders failed apart from De Villiers and Amwa. That is uh, beautifully left by <laughs> Tini. Pitch just outside off stump. So he's on 10 of 21 deliveries. South Africa fighting for their lives here. Hoping the rain's going to come. And the members quiet. Here a pin drop. Waiting for the big roar. Threw him. Missed everything. <laughs> can't believe it. Natini can't believe it. Nor can Siddle. I think uh, Siddle reckoned he had him. It was just too good a ball. It was a beautiful leg cutter. And Tini played at it all right. Oh, boy, it was close. It was close to everything. Bat and stumps. Again. This is where it can get very frustrating. You can imagine Ponting thinking, oh, it'd be great to win this test match, but uh, he's probably got a message that there is some rain in the area. He can probably see it himself. That's a fine over, 8 for 231. <laughs> Mr. Johnson. Dale Stain. Wide ball plays and misses. It's the difference with Mitchell Johnson is he's that, uh, that little bit quicker. So when it's up in the block hole, they've got to get their bat down real fast. And of course, these two will also be thinking about the short ball. They've received a fair few of them. Managed to keep uh, themselves out of the way. Stain has got a nasty smack of the finger. That'll smart for a while. Getting on towards... 4.30, the wonderful old uh, grandstand here at the Sydney Cricket Ground. Bang! <laughs> it's a teeny in the road. <laughs> Typical number 11. Yes, and Tini's getting it from both ends now. Getting bombarded by the Aussie bowlers, and um, that one hit at him nice and hard. 
and just couldn't get out of the way. Oh, well, no, he did get out of the way. Obviously, wasn't hit that hard. It's gone bang. Well, they're doing their best to survive, and it's not a bad way to do it. Was up. This mightn't be so full. This next one. So I think that might have hurt his finger a little bit too. It hit right on the base of the bat, so the uh, the bat would have jarred the finger. And he's had the glove off and back on again. I think once you've hurt your finger, there's no point in taking that glove off. Oh, magnificent delivery. 146 Ks on the last day. He's Got a lot of overs in his 19th over. He's very sharp. Good carry to the keeper. That's the over bowled, eight for 233. Just coming home from work, Australia need one wicket to win the Sydney Test match and go down 2-1. It'd be a great comeback by Ricky Ponting and his team. Clark 138, Siddle so far eight wickets in the match. It's getting darker and closer. Through him again. Well, Mackay and Tini's doing everything he possibly can to try and play this ball in the middle of the bat. In the last uh, three or four, he's, uh, he's, he's thought he's got them covered like this. Look, he's really trying to play it. That has just missed the bat. A little bit of thigh pad and just over the top of the off stump. Siddle should be learning something from this. He's just got to get it straight. Trouble is, whenever it's straight, he plays with the middle of the bat. No trouble. It's been a hot day. The fast bowlers have had their share of work. Sit on his 26, Bollinger 17, Johnson 19. with him that's the way that's the call that uh, is going on around the ground at the moment and uh, Dale staying down the other end and is saying well played boy that's been a bit of a fight this is 31 the partnership now Hello. 39 minutes they've been there together And what's more, Ntini's getting better at ducking as well. He's uh, been hit on the helmet once. And then played a brilliant forward defensive to the next ball. Actually, it's more of a drive to the next ball. Runs. It's four more. Great value for your shots here at Sydney Cricket Ground. Just a little push through the gully. Pass. I 
think Brad Haddon thought it was three. He was looking for the run out there. Not on Brad. He's laughing now. Got all excited. Typical wicketkeeper. Just one ball remaining in this over from Peter Siddle. Latini on 14, Stain on 20. Well fired, eight for 237. This will be an interesting over because Mit Mitchell Johnson's going around the wicket now and try and aim it at the body of the batsman. No, no red go in or bat pad. I find that surprising. Sixteen overs remaining in this match. After this over, if they survive, it'll be drinks. So in the final hour of the game, Mitchell Johnson. Whoa, staying under the bouncer. Mine goes back to the Adelaide test match when Ken Mackay and Lindsay Klein batted for a session to save the game against the West Indies. Indeed they did. Right through the session. Him again, that was uh, Hall and Sovers. Yep, and um, it uh, made the last test match in Melbourne an absolute beauty because uh, it um, saved the game for Australia. I'd sent Lindsay Klein down to practice, and um, he'd been bowled six times in 15 deliveries. So uh, when they came back up, I said, Why are you back here? Oh, Spinner hasn't been able to get the bat on the ball. And he went out and batted for a session. Tempted Yorker, well bowled. He's 143 k's. He's still sharp, Mitchell Johnson. It's a great effort. Takes a lot to come back when you're tired and it's hot. It's a great athlete. That's consistent pace. Warm day. Certainly is. He's bowled uh, very well indeed. And uh, he's round the wicket here now. He's trying to bowl at the stumps, isn't he? He's uh, keeping it nice and straight. <coughs> well, with the ball to go, there'll be drinks after this, and then um, these two batsmen will be saying, right, oh, 15 overs to go. We'll just count them off one by one. See if we can break all sorts of records here and um, bat for 15 overs. Runs. I'll pick up two more. So it drinks. It's eight for 239. Well, you're obviously with Linter Energy. Yeah, of course. Especially with their great energy deal. Shall we test them out? Oh, turn it off, mate. Join over one million Australians. Switch to Linter Energy, supporting your home team. South Africa fight on, 8 for 239. This partnership for the ninth wicket worth 37 and occupying valuable time. Australia not desperate by any means, but just looking an iota edgy. Seems as if the threat of weather is uh, dispersed. It looks to have gone past us. That's a signal that we've got the final hour's play beginning. We have to have a minimum of 15 overs in this final hour. Nathan Horitz is called upon by Ricky Ponting. Surely he'll do the trick. Oh. Almost does. McCarantini still has the ability to play and miss when he most needs it. That's good seam position. And uh, there's a bit on that from Horitz. Can he get one? to really spin it and teeny can he convince and teeny to do something rash oh ah, there's bounce there too exciting shane warne he's with me along with ian chapel 
Yeah, I think he's bowled pretty well all day today, Nathan Horitz. Harder ball. Good take from Brad Haddon, too. Thought he's looked really good. Done a good job today. He's been a bit unlucky. Beat the bat lots of times. Well, he's flighting the ball nicely, which was a good idea to the lower order players. They generally get pretty excited. And they see it up there in the air. There's a man at deep mid wicket, which is where Ntini likes to go. Oh. I'll tell you one shot he has added to his repertoire, the let go. Makai Rantini, he did it well to the quickies, and now he's doing it again. Very well there, because he watches the ball so closely, holds his body shape. Two balls left in this hurry, it's over, and then there'll be 14 to go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is becoming quite some show. The right bit of thinking by Horace to try to bowl a quicker, straighter ball. But it's to no avail. It's eight for 239. I don't know that the weather has necessarily passed us. I know that the ball is passing the bat with alarming frequency as far as Australia are concerned. That's ugly. That's behind the Noble and Bradman stands. But it's a bit further away than that picture makes it look. Fifteen minutes, 5-0 at the crease for this pair, Stain and Antini. It's Stain on strike. That's the sort of frustration that uh, we're referring to. Well, he's living up to his name. Hard to remove. <laughs> Very good. Never wear the white shirt to an Italian. Lasagna, spaghetti bolognese, pasta goes all over you. What about the prosciutto and some nice seafood? Um, no, don't go for that. No, meat, lo meat lasagna or spag bowl, that'll do me. And don't overdo the bread at the start. I tell you what. If someone's just turned on, that's a surreal bit of commentary. <laughs> Mitchell Johnson. Striving to win the match for, South for the Australians and South Africa. Hang on. We're all confused. Eight for 243 now. The partnership worth 41. And Ricky Ponting has every right just to begin to think this is just... Uh, getting ridiculous we've got an uneven pitch we've had a new ball we're bowling at numbers 10 and 11 we've been at it for nearly an hour without result a period there particularly when Paul Harris was in when balls were doing all sorts of things hitting cracks jumping going low and moving a long way off the seam last I don't know half an hour or so just seems like um, either the pitch has died a bit or they just haven't hit those spots this is the third most successful partnership of the innings in terms of balls faced Oh, Johnson put a lot into that. Really slung it with that strong body action of his. Eight for two, four, three. Nathan Horitz. Oh, well played. Very well played by Makai Rantini. That was class to play off the back foot and let the ball come and to drop it down with nice soft grip on the back. So often we've seen Antini just throw his wicket away. But 
this pair the third most resilient of all partnerships in this innings. Seventy nine balls they've survived as against one hundred and seventy six Mahen McKenzie and Ambler. Oh, and then uh, De Villiers and Dumini, one hundred and seventy five balls. Well, we've all said a lot about the pitch and how it's played and how it's gone up and down and the cracks. Tom Park will be one pretty happy man that's gone into the last hour on day five. He might have been too happy about how it's dried out with those cracks, but at the end of the day, it's another test match that's gone down to the last hour on the fifth day. How? I've got no idea. And we've continued to have all those fluctuations that have we've had right through the series. Amazing fluctuations. That's right. Just as we think one thing will happen, something else happens. We assumed an hour ago that this game was all done. So you don't think there's any chance of Graham Smith getting his gear on? Uh, I don't think so. Maybe if there's one over to go, who knows? But uh, yeah, I don't think so. Good stop by Michael Clark. Three overs bold, which means there are 12 to go. It's eight for two, four, five. Well, Cheer around the City Creek ground because Dougie Bollinger is back into the attack. Still only the two slips in a gully. You'd think that everybody would be somewhere around the back in case the ball pops up in an odd place. Oh, good delivery. Good delivery to freshen up his opponent at the start of the over. Mark, you just asked Shane if it, if he thinks uh, Graham Smith will put the uh, whites on or not. There's, I think he's got to put them on now because there's one situation where he has to come in, and that is if a wicket falls off the last ball of the 14th over, then he doesn't have to face. All he's got to do is stand at the non-striker's end for six balls. He'd have to come in, I'm sure, in those circumstances. We suspect that he may have worked that out because when the eighth wicket fell, he disappeared from the balcony and he hasn't been seen out there since. So it could well be that he's back inside with his whites on, not wanting to show his hand. Eight for 2.45. Is it one or two wickets that Australia need? There's a man at short mid-off, just uh, Mitchell Johnson, just... Actually, there are two men, and they're sort of... It's hard to describe their position, but short extra cover and short mid-off would do. These guys that are... Just down in here. And they're there for that drive of Staines. Tends to drive quite uppishly, but he's very keen to play that stroke when the ball is full. There's also a short leg and a leg slip. Well, Shane, you were talking about uh, Graham Smith not being able to clean his teeth at times because of the, um, of the elbow problem. I wonder how long it takes him to get his gear on. He probably had to start about when you... When uh, we said he disappeared, hasn't come out since. He's probably still trying to dress. Yeah, he's got injections in one elbow. He's got a plaster cast on the other one. It's going to be quite difficult to get ever all the gear on the box, the thigh pad, the socks, everything. Do the shoelaces up. That's the line in the movie. Just a mere flesh wound. <laughs> Help! Help! Oh, hello. Have a look at that ball. We've talked a lot about the cracks on the pitch. This hits the one well wide of off stump and goes sideways. <laughs> You'd have been proud of that off a full length. Especially at 134 k's of old leg break like that, to go that far. Just for people that are interested out there, Australia on the Betfair training have come in and drifted from a dollar and five cents to one dollar and forty and the draw is in from $14 to $2.92. Come 
be. Surely not. Can't be. And the other good bit of news is that for the McGrath Foundation, we've hit the half million mark. It's eight for two, four, five. This pair have now survived an hour. Oh! How oh, oh, has that missed off stump? And it may have hit the hat. This could well be five anyway. The fact that it's rolled over the... Yep. Billy Bowden doesn't miss much. The ball hit the hat. It's worth five. Uh, the good thing for South Africa is that's not five buys anymore. It's now five penalty runs. Now, does that mean that they don't have to change ends because they're only penalty runs? Obviously, it does. And I think South Africa are reasonably happy with the guys at this end. I, I, in fact, I think they should make a decision now. Just, Makaya, you start at that end, I'll start at the other end. Because that way you get used to playing the same guy all the time. Don't think Makaya heard you. Good, Ritz. No, I, I really think it would have been the thing to do, but anyhow, they're out in the middle. I was talking to Mark Taylor a bit earlier about the England game here back in on the 94-5 tour when uh, Tim May and Shane Warne were busy blocking out against England. There had been some weather. Some weather did its bit in the end. But no, oh, now they're going to have to really go here. I think he's made it. I'm sure he's made it. But uh, Asoka de Silva does what he has to do. There's another thing about staying at the same ends all the time. You don't have to run between wickets. Therefore, you eradicate runouts. Oh, hello. Is his bat? Oh, I think he's all right. I don't think they can give that out, can they? There's certainly a moment at which his bat isn't grounded, which is now, and then it gets grounded just in time. This should clear Makaya and Tini. Not out it is. Did you and did Tim May take an end each, Shane? Yeah, we decided about 12 overs to go that we both just stayed, as Ian Chappell pointed out, just stay at one end, he stays at the other. Whoever bowls, we just get used to the light, the conditions, what the ball's doing, the cracks, everything. You know, we managed to hang on. Oh, maybe they now do have that tactic. The pair have put on 50, they survived for more than an hour on, Come on, Ritz. we think six balls have been bowled billy bowden's given a seventh now hang on, hang on. He's got the message. i think billy bowden's getting a message over, over is called oh. it's eight for two five two well there are 10 mandatory overs to be bowled the play can go on until 20 to 6. Oh, no, they've taken the single. Is that wise? Oh, this means Antini will be on strike to Bollinger. Now, we thought, having turned down the single at the end of the previous over, that they decided they'd take an end each. Yeah, I think they had decided that, and they've just blown it. <laughs> I'm staggered that a message didn't come out after the last over. Someone come running out and say, listen, you guys, just stay in your crease. Eliminate the run out. You're doing all right at the at the ends you're currently at. Stay there. Bollinger. Waiting. It's also very well played. You might have just seen that Antini's best score in Test match cricket is an unbeaten 17, but he's presently unbeaten with 16. Wouldn't we have a human drama if uh, Graham Smith did come out to bat and could barely hold on to the bat? Waiting. 
Well, it did evoke memories of uh, Colin Cowdery at Lords coming in uh, with a broken arm, I think, for one over against Wes Hall uh, bowling. And then you've got uh, Rick McCosker at the centenary test with his jaw all bandaged up. If you were Smith, would you back KFC Pulse? Yes. Mind you, not necessarily knowing what it's like to have one elbow injected with new blood and you can't even brush your teeth with it and the other one in plaster because you bust your hand yes 61 percent of you well we have no question about graham smith's courage or indeed the enormous role that he's played in this series maybe that role has a little longer to play out and while we're on the subjects of captains What's he thinking about? Well, there's a little bit of swing there for Doug Bollinger. I must say the there was a point about, uh, I don't know, half an hour ago where it looked like these two really started to, the tail enders I'm talking about, just started to gain a bit of confidence. Amazing, this partnership has lasted 100 deliveries. The way it's all happened and unfolded, as Ian Chappell pointed out before. Is there another twist? It's been plenty so far in this series, but is there one more? Tarantini has batted for an hour and five minutes in a test match. It's eight for two, five, three. A little bowling change from Ricky Ponting has gone back to Andrew McDonald. He bowled well earlier in the day, not so well when Ponting tried him a while ago. And Tini and Stain now put on 51 in 101 balls, more than an hour at the wicket. And the Australians desperate for this breakthrough, desperate. One of them's got, oh, we've got to drop back, we've got to run out on, we've got to mayhem out in the middle. What is going on out there? For heaven's sake, why isn't someone sending a message out there and just saying, stop with the running between the wickets, will you? Yeah. Mind you, it's too fast bowlers, isn't it? <laughs> Correct. I tell you what, the man just threw that in, Michael Clark. Think back to last summer, India. Three wickets in an over, the second last hour of the match to win the game. Will it get down to him to give him a bowl? <laughs> Have a look at that, chop the bat. Panic, confusion. Michael Clark could be the man, or is it Andrew McDonald? Oh, that's it, he dropped it, he dropped it. McDonald, who caught Callis earlier in the day of his own bowling, has just shelled McCairantini. The catch that might well have won the match. Wow. Wow, Andrew McDonald on debut took a scream of the, this afternoon. I think the lack of pace did him. Just how to put the hand out. I think just the lack of pace did him. Wow. Actually, I thought it was smashed uh, when I saw it originally, but it's come high off the bat, so it wasn't coming quickly at all. Which is probably what Andrew McDonald thought. He probably thought it was smashed back at him. Get! Well, this is what McDonald did earlier. This was Jacques Cullis. How's that for reactions? Fantastic effort to get Kalis. Kalis, not so good against Antini. Partnership worth 55. Ah! Oh, now then, now the W, yes! McDonald's got it. The 
Maelstone LBW. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute, what's happening? Graham Smith is coming out the back. Graham Smith is coming out to back. A series that has gripped us from first to last continues to do so. The drama is by no means done. This is a mighty figure. One of the great men of the modern game, and Sydney is standing to him. What a thing. And the Sydney crowd really appreciating Graeme Smith's courage to come out and bat for his country. The captain leading the front like he has all series. The Sydney crowd all up on their feet. Andrew McDonald dropped the catch, gets the wicket, think it's all over. Then what? The captain walks through the gate. No plaster cast. Bit of tape on the gloves. Wow, this is a, a massive effort. 8.2 overs have to be bowled. But almost certainly Australia would bowl more than that by 540. 20 to 6 is the cutoff point. So we've got 34 minutes on the clock or 8.2 overs. Nine down the South Africans. An extraordinary circumstance with Graham Smith, who has a broken hand and a desperately un unwell and unpleasant elbow in which he had injections just uh, 48 hours ago has come to the crease in an attempt to save his team it is the elbow is the top hand that's his right hand his right arm is the problem that's the one that grips the back mcdonald now oh and he survives Well, Andrew McDonald dropped the court and bowled, threw the ball into the pitch after he dropped it. That one was moving a little bit off the seam. Stain hadn't moved that front pad very far. And Billy Bowden says, you're gone. This is almost X-rated and it's nine for two, five, seven. We have the ultimate drama at the Sydney Cricket Ground. Makai Rantini, unbeaten with 16, is on strike to Doug Bollinger. Oh, and he's actually and Matthew Haynes now dropped it. You can't credit this. No. Every picture tells its story. There's another twist. Wow, Matthew Haynes generally pretty safe in there. This is unbelievable. This is unbelievable. It was full. He's hung the bat out there. Basically, like slips practice in the morning. He's run off the face of the bat. And Matty Hayden put it down. It's generally very, very good in there. It's pretty tense out there in the middle. Oh, another one survived. Well, if Intini survives this over, and Graham Smith's on strike. I think it's got to be Mitchell Johnson, whatever happens at the other end. And first thing, Ricky Ponting, and I don't think he'll have to encourage him too much, will be a bouncer at Graham Smith. That's the second chance that's gone down in the last 10 minutes. A court and bold, Andrew McDonald. But he uh, recovered the situation by getting an LBW. played McCarantini three balls of this over survived 
seven remain after it. There's the court and bowl, shelled by Andrew McDonald. Now Matthew Hayden at slip, a man so safe, so good, so consistent. Puts down a catch that would win the test match for Australia. Some technique, isn't it? Well, he's got, I think he's got carried away with that letting go shot. He wants to play at every ball. Even the one that he nicked, he was sort of trying to let it go. That might have been what put uh, Matthew Hayden off because he sort of let it go and the edge came from probably further back than you normally get. Normally, if the batsman's pushing forward defensively, you get slightly longer to look at it, but he, he let it go and it hit the edge well behind his pads. That might have been the thing that put Matthew Hayden off. Oi. Just looking at Ricky Ponting, whether he signalled to Mitchell Johnson or to Peter Siddle to warm up and maybe check out halfway down the wicket. And bowl some serious bumpers to Graham Smith, or will they run a single to the keeper and get Natini back on strike? They try and steal a single. He hasn't looked like he's signalled to anyone, so he might be sticking with Andrew McDonald. Well, which batsman's most likely to survive an over? Smith, Smith with one hand, with one arm, or Natini? I think if Mitchell Johnson or Siddle's bowling, probably Natini. Oh, oh no, Mackay. <laughs> Maybe Smith. <laughs> it's nine for two, five, seven. The Australians need one wicket to win the Sydney Test. And at least extract something from a series that has so frustrated them. And it is Mitchell Johnson to whom Ricky Ponting turns. Graham Smith is out there with the damaged elbow, his top hand, the broken hand, his bottom hand. Leg gully, short leg, silly mid on, silly mid off, two slips, a gully, a square cover. Sentiment counts for nothing. But tired bodies count for a great deal. Well, you've got to, as a captain, you've got to give the ball to Mitchell Johnson on two counts. One, he's been the star performer for Australia throughout the summer, particularly in this series. But two, he's the guy who broke Graham Smith's finger. So he's got to be the guy who has a crack at Smith. We've talked a lot about uh, uneven bounce, and that's just straight low bounce. If that's straight, you've got no chance. Graham Smith will be getting towards off stump, I reckon, as much as he can, because that's what he'll be wanting to do. Let as many go as possible. He's letting him go. There's a chance he's not going to break anything else. It's not easy for Johnson. He's got a seriously painful toe. He's actually changed boots, but earlier in the day he was bowling in boots where they'd, he'd cut a hole in the leather. He's now using some older boots that are clearly softer and a little easier on, on the toe. He's also bowled so many overs. So mentally and physically he's tired. He's into his 22nd in this innings alone. And at the moment he just can't get it straight. Pretty harsh to boo the bloke that's been the glue of the team through the summer. And every ball, Graham Smith is saying, well bowled. Just keep him there. 
You're doing fine. After this over, three overs at each end, or 26 minutes. Wow, this is unbelievable. Well played, very well played. It will have hurt, it will have really hurt, but it is magnificently well played. He'll be just saying to himself, well, I'll have every good reason to have a few beers tonight because that finger's going to be aching, whatever happens. One ball left in this over. Smith survives it. Staggering scenes at the Sydney Cricket Ground. It's nine for 257. There are the facts and the figures, but they don't even begin to tell the story. Graham Smith is at the crease, the number 11 for South Africa in this innings. Makai Rantini is unbeaten with 16. He's been out there for an hour and 20 minutes. And still he's fending him off. Rantini has faced 60 balls. Survived 60 balls. One drop chance to Matthew Hayden just a moment ago at slip. Australia have thrown everything they've got at Makai Rantini, a man whose best score in his test match career is 17. That's his test match career against Australia, 17. I wonder what his record is for balls faced. This may be it. Certainly... He's never faced 60 more important ones. Amazing, not one bouncer to Graham Smith in that last over. Mark Nicholas said it, no sentiment in this game, and I just can't believe he didn't receive a bouncer. Back to a few, Merv Hughes, Glenn McGrath. Want to follow it down with a welcome too. It's halfway down the deck. Waiting. Played, very well played. It's slower and craftier from Bollinger. And then Tini gets a nod of approval from his leader. The thing with Antini now, it's starting to enter into his mind that uh, we can definitely save this now. And that may be a bit of a problem. Before, I'm sure it's just been, oh, well, you know, let's just see what we can do. Now he's thinking we definitely can save it. That's when he might make a mistake. And still a tremendous amount of people here, the, the members have supported this test match in huge numbers every day and they're continuing to do so. They've been mainly in the covered areas, it was very hot here earlier. Look as if any have gone. Fingernails are bitten, hearts are pumping, hairs are up on the back of the neck. South Africa nine down, five overs left after this one, or 20 to six, and it may be that that is the time. And again, Antini survives. One ball of this over left. Thank heavens there's a batsman out there. He called no straight away, Graham Smith, just in case Antini was thinking of running. He was starting off. Graham Smith just screamed no. You'd be kicking yourself if at lunchtime you thought, shall I go down to the Sydney Creek ground or not? Nah, I won't bother. Had you been here, you'd never have forgotten it. You could cut this atmosphere with a knife. Bollinger to Intini. One ball of the over left. And it's safe. And no run. And Michael Slater went down to interview winners and losers a whole hour ago. He's still there.
Yeah, over an hour. I'm sucking in the deep ones here. The heart's racing. I know you've got the view up there, guys, but this is where you really want to be. It's so special out here. When Stain got dismissed, let me tell you, the Australian support thought that Australia had won the Test match, and we were all starting to uh, celebrate with the Aussies, and then it was, no, the Test match is not over. Graham Smith is going to bat, and there was a standing ovation. The moment he walked down the race, everyone got up and clapped this heroic man coming out. It's one of these sporting moments that everyone here will never forget. It's to say the atmosphere is unbelievable down here is the understatement of the year, I would say, so far. The year is young, but a uh, very special place to be. I'm very pleased I've been down here for an hour because every one of us is soaking it up. Back to you. Well, we certainly feel it up here. Nine for two, five, seven. The partnership that hasn't recorded a run yet has taken 20 balls 20 valuable precious time eating deliveries possibly only 30 balls left in the match probably Australia will bowl another over than that 19 minutes or five overs what will it be Peter Siddle into the attack and will bowl now to Graham Smith he's clearly fresher than Mitchell Johnson and immediately he gets Smith onto the back foot. 29 balls. Well, Mitchell Johnson forgot about the bouncer. Maybe Peter Siddle can. I'm with you, chaps, and Mark. No sentiment here. It's time to give it to Graham Smith. He's doing a wonderful, courageous job for his country. But it's time to give him a couple of... Something to think about here. If he wants to stand out there and bat, it's time to give him a couple of real good short ones. But if he gets injured, he won't be able to play for your team, Rajasthan. Plenty of time. I, th I think the, the, the pitch has really lost any semblance of life unless the ball hits a crack. And I think it is a terrific physical effort to make a bouncer threatening. The ball is now softer. And probably at the end of the day, it's, it's a harder delivery to get right than it might have been even an hour ago. Definitely worth a try, though, Mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all with that. Played. Very well played. <laughs> Just a little blow of the cheeks from Graham Smith. He's not going to show this is hurting. He's certainly not going to show any Australians who are within yards of him. Probably last night when he was sitting around with the guys and talking about how they're going to play the game, the last thing on his mind would have been that he would have come out with a few overs remaining to come out and try and save the game for South Africa. Really has been one of those series with so many twists. Is this the ball? Whoa, he's played at one that he might not have wanted to. He's going to get a couple of runs too. But they're happy to stay at those ends. They've obviously made a decision. I think it's not a bad thing for Makai Rantini to face the left armour, is it? It's... it's you're just a little less likely to get LBW. Those may be famous last words. Plus, Graham Smith wouldn't want to stay on naught. Nice to get off the naught. Even if you're batting injured, you still don't want to make a duck. Two balls in this over left. Oh. Decides not to take a run. That's it. He's got off his naught. Now it is just a question of somehow keeping out the Australians. Remember that bottom hand is broken. He's doing pretty well because he, he didn't take the, the bottom hand off the bat. So every time you get that impact, you can imagine how much that would be jarring and hurting. One wicket needed. Another over gone. The drama continues at the Sydney Cricket Ground. The tension is quite extraordinary. It's nine for 259. Four overs, just conceivably five. We've got about oh, 15, 16 minutes on the clock here. Still needing one, one wicket. South Africa clinging on, nine for 259. Mitchell Johnson now around the wicket. Will bowl or well played. 
It's a good move to get Johnson on around the wicket at this end and bowl at Makaira and Tini and make him play at every ball. Yep, he's starting to think like a batsman now. He's thinking, I've got to save this from here. It's going to be more difficult for him against Mitchell Johnson because he's got a chance of getting the LBW from there. Almost as if Johnson is just fractionally cutting his pace, happy at about 137, 138 Ks, and ensuring that uh, Antini has to play. The key now is not to waste a ball. The other thing about Mitchell Johnson is he, he's just getting it to tail away from right-handers, so if he can get one sort of pitching around about middle and leg, you might just get Antini looking to hit it on the onside and bowl him. Well, they'll take a couple. Can be a nasty ball, a high full toss. We saw Mark Boucher get out to one earlier today. Admittedly, it was a cruel decision against him. But, but a full toss a little higher than this one, you can get a panicky prod out with those short fielders in there. The slower ball isn't a bad idea either, which Johnson bowls very well. That cutter of his rips his fingers across it Australia close the vultures wait and Tini survives two more little jogs up the pitch for this pair a chance has been missed Matthew Hayden dropped and Tini at slip <coughs> what a moment this was Catch going down there, Matthew Hayden dropping it off uh, Doug Bollinger's bowling. Could well be that Graham Smith faces the last over of this game. There'd be some symmetry to that, wouldn't there? He conducted the first toss with Ricky Ponting. He may face the last over. One ball left in this over from Mitchell Johnson. Now the crowd are sensing something amazing happening at the Sydney Cricket Ground. Mark, I mentioned a few overs ago when Michael Clark chased one down the fence. Think back to last summer. India, two overs to go. Michael Clark took three wickets and over. Might be Roy with him for an over and bounces at the other end. No. And again, Antini survives. Another over survived. Nine for two, six, three. McCarantini has his best test score against Australia. More importantly, he survived for 70 balls. Graham Smith, with all his injuries, he survived for 14 balls. Australia just cannot complete the kill. So Nathan Horrocks is called back into the attack. He replaces Peter Siddle. There are 11 minutes left on the clock. There are three overs available. Four if Australia want it, but it's surprising that they haven't rushed between the overs. It's taken a minute just to begin this over. Everybody round the bat. There's a man down at deep backward square, but he's being brought up a little, as if Smith is likely to play a sweep stroke. Here we go. Three overs remaining. Nathan Horitz to bowl the first of them. Smith survives. Oh, hello. Now, Makai and Tini to face the off spinner. I can't help but think that's a mistake. Well, I must say I'm a bit staggered that they've run the single. I would have thought that Graham Smith would have been saying a prayer of thanks when they brought Nathan Horitz on because it's not going to jar his hand. And also, the tail enders, just spin does seem to mesmerise them a bit. With everybody around the bat, surely Smith was the man. Five balls in this Nathan Horitz over. Two overs left after this one.
One survived. 16 balls left. That's all it is. 16 deliveries. Is there one with one of the batsmen's name on it? Name on it. Got it. Really is doing an amazing job, Makai Nantini. 73 deliveries he's faced. Unbelievable. This is just fantastic cricket. These two sides have gone hammer and tongue at each other. The three test matches. Catch! Oh, he's given it a slap and it's safe. There was a man at short mid on, not orthodox mid on. Everybody's hard in their mouth, not least Graham Smith. The ball shot past him. What was that about the Taylanders can't help themselves, chaps? Getting the coin at Tini. Normally bats number 11 on strike. Couldn't help himself. Two overs left in this over. Two balls left in this over. Oh no, Makai, and it goes again. No trouble. <laughs> Members of the South African players' family there applauding. They're as tense or more tense than anybody, perhaps. An hour and 40 minutes at the crease for Makai Rantini. Slash, uh, sorry, uh, spinner Klein in the draw in Adelaide. 110 minutes for spinner Klein. Now mid on in position and Makaya goes with the block. The big pound thrust out of the ball. Another over is survived. It's nine for 272. You you just have to look at the pictures. This is extreme tension at the Sydney Cricket Ground because there are two overs remaining. Seven minutes. It is conceivable that a third over could be bowled. Do you reckon Graham Smith is going to try and get a single off this over and try and face the last over? Surely he'd have to now, seeing that he's, he's actually batted for a little bit. Only a mid-off, back a bit. Everybody else around the back. Mitchell Johnson. Good delivery to Graham Smith, but no, he decides against the single. Six minutes, 11 balls, one or other. I reckon that was when Makai and Tini was slocking. <laughs> Makai and Tini, he's obviously thinking, I'm not going to be robbed of this test half century. I'm going to get him. Australia this summer. What drama we've had at the Sydney Cricket Ground. And what a part Graham Smith and McCarantini have played in it. Well done, Mitchell Johnson. Well bowled and well done to Graham Smith. You can't help but feel for Graham Smith there. He went out there and gave it his all. Been a wonderful series by both teams, played in the right spirit. But well done to Mitchell Johnson. He has been Australia's go-to man for the summer and did it in style by knocking the stumps out. Well, what a couple of test matches we've had at the SCG in the last two years. Tom Parker will be saying, well, you can say whatever you like about my pitch, but uh, what drama. And uh, both matches finishing right, well, I think virtually the same time, second last over, both of them. The Indian match, now this match, uh, finishing in dramatic fashion. Very good delivery from Mitchell Johnson. Appropriate that Mitchell Johnson should be the one that finishes it off because he has been the star bowler all summer. You got to feel sorry for that man. He's given everything for South Africa. Kyrantini, what a terrific job he did. Well, both teams have earned the respect of uh, these wonderful crowds here at the Sydney Cricket Ground and doubtless of everybody at home all around Australia and indeed around the world. But perhaps no single player has more respect than this man, Graham Smith. He's led South Africa to a series victory for the first time on Australian soil and he so nearly was able to ensure that they didn't go down in this final match here at the Sydney Cricket Ground.
great enthusiasm from uh, the many spectators who have stayed on to watch this staggering final chapter in a story that has captivated us since we got going in Perth just a short while ago. It doesn't feel just a short while ago, but it's been a wonderful series, a series that's had a little bit of everything, a series that's confused us, fascinated us, and ebbed and flowed like few others. And Ian Healy is downstairs with McCarantini. Yes, Mark. Well, it's all happening down here. The crowd are loving it. Makai, I've never seen you watch the ball so closely. You made it look easy. No, it was not that easy, but he, when you practice all the day, every day, they say I must always uh, make sure my bed is straight up down the, down the ground. But I think I enjoy myself today. No matter what happened, Australia and the they absolutely bowled well. They keep us uh, asking questions all the time. And it was a commendable batting performance all the way through the day. The boys just would not lie down. The middle order did well. The partnerships were gathered. They, they, they fought hard. Of course, we are the fighters that we came here to fight. You know, we, we never say that we're going to die for any moment. We make sure that even we as a tail enders, number 11, we still got time that you can go in and fight for until the last ball been bowled. What sort of strategy could you have on that pitch? It looked bad. How'd you go? You just have to look for a ball, eh? you play straight and watch the short one and then when you hit the creek there's nothing you can do about it. You're excellent mate, congratulations on a wonderful series. Thank you very much Matija, thank you. The uh, uh, relief, oh, I've got a serious headache so I don't know how punters punt is going. <laughs> um, mate, what a game, what a series, look I think uh, all the boys are obviously uh, pretty toey I guess that last hour, rain was coming, didn't know who to bowl um, and Mitch what a ball to finish on, an absolute beauty so Fantastic to get that result, finally. Well, after last year's efforts, were you calling for the ball at the end? Oh, I asked, uh, I asked Punter a couple of times, but uh, we had a few better options today and the boys did a fantastic job. So when Stain got out and then you saw Smithy coming through the gates, you thought, <laughs> oh no, not more of them. I thought, Smithy, not again. I'm sick of seeing him. All summer he <laughs> scored runs. So, yeah, look, a fantastic end of the game. A fantastic series, like I say, Slats, but we did a great job today. And you're batting this test match and right through the series, a great contribution. Yeah, it's been good to contribute. It's been good to, uh, to get some starts and to make the most of them. But like I said, I think this game, we can certainly take some positives out of it. Jeez, it was hard following you guys. Thanks for a great <laughs> thrill towards the end. Congratulations. Thanks, Back to you, Heels. Thanks. Yes, and with Doug Bollinger, Dougie, how does this stack up with Seven Hills RSL <laughs> team, which only seven years or so you were playing for? Yeah, mate, this is, uh, this is pretty inspirational. This, no, it was a, um, it was a good win until the line, mate. And um, yeah, it was pretty nerve-wracking. That is one hard day. Mm. How did you set about approaching it? Mate, you just got to go in there and bash the wicket as hard as you can, especially here, and try and swing the ball and use the cracks is what we try to do, and hold in there, and it came our way, so it was a good time to finish. Now, it's fair to say you haven't had a, a whole lot of luck in this match, mate. No, mate, but you just got to keep going forward, and hopefully they'll come off in another game, hopefully, so come out with eight for next time, I hope. <laughs> well, that's good. I suspect you, you want a, a bit more of this sort of test cricket. Yeah, mate, I had a really good time. All the guys were great, and just shows you know how tough it is and how many good players there are you know it's, you can't bowl a bad boy you just have to be patient after patient it was great you've heard us talk about the topsy-turvy nature of this series and it was on right to the very end mm. on the final test as well so you've had a taste for a future south african tour yeah mate they, they were a great team they done well and um i'm just glad the boys held in there even though it's a third test you know we go out fighting and win one yeah that's great mate congratulations on your mate. debut i see you've picked up a stump have, mate i'm gonna take this home and ride on it so, mate. <laughs> excellent you, excellent Dougie. congratulations mate and i don't know where we are now i'm over here hills i've got one of the finds of this tour jp dumini mate what a series you have had it's been so entertaining and your batting's been simply unbelievable yeah no it's been unbelievable um i couldn't ask for a better start to test cricket and uh yeah, no pressure now from now on. Um, I think I've set a high standard for myself, but it's a good way to start. Take us into the dressing room for those last, oh, well, that last hour, I suppose. Yeah, obviously we, we backed ourselves with, with Graeme in next, um, but unfortunately the way it ended up, um, it was, we, we, I, think, I thought we did pretty well to get to where, to where we did. At what stage did Smithy say, I'm batting? I think we had about 20 overs left. He said if we can get it down to about 10 before he goes in, you'll, you'll give it a go. But it's unfortunate where it ended. I think, uh, and all of us will agree here and people watching at home, that this has been one of the more entertaining series of Test cricket, which is great for Test cricket. But for you to start and debut in such a fine manner, it's a nice way to start against a great side, Australia. Yeah, obviously Australia's the number one team in the world. Um, I couldn't ask for a better start. Um, I always felt that um, my start is going to be against tough opposition, and, and yet it did. So it's a great way to start, yeah. A lot of belief in that side. 
Yeah, no, definitely unbelievable belief in our team at the moment. Um, you know, hopefully we can take this home and uh, play well against Australia at home again. Thanks for your time and what a great tour. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the presentation area. And can I say right off the bat what a wonderful test match we have just witnessed and what a wonderful series we have seen over the last three weeks. Please congratulate both teams for some outstanding test match cricket. We are very lucky in this country to have some wonderful sponsors of not just test match cricket but all forms of cricket. But to talk on behalf of the three mobile company who have now extended their sponsorship through to 2013, I'd like to welcome the Chief Executive Officer on my right, Nigel Jutes. Thank you, Mark. Thanks very much. I feel uh, incredibly proud to stand here representing all our staff and our two million customers at 3Mobile as a sponsor of this test versus South Africa and a sponsor of the Australian team. To both teams and their captains, Graham Smith and Ricky Ponting, thank you. Thank you for a fantastic battle. It's been a tough battle and all three times it's gone to the full five days and certainly been a while since that's happened. It's a real testament to the strength of your two fantastic teams been full of twists and turns and been really entertaining whether you've been lucky enough to have been here at the ground, uh, listening on ABC, watching on Channel 9 or on your 3 mobile. Thank you both for leading your teams with such a fantastic spirit and uh, great sportsmanship. You're both examples to us all and particularly to our children. Thank you. To Ricky and the Australian team, guys, you are still brilliant and uh, we are still with you. Uh, I'm very pleased uh, to be able to confirm what Mark has already told you and that we are continuing and extending our sponsorship until 2013. Uh, we're delighted to be able to do that and we're strongly behind you on behalf of our staff and our customers. Thank you. There are huge changes going on in the team and the way you've continued to play is just amazing. Uh, many fantastic individual contributions, including Ricky, Michael, and, and, and Michael Clark's amazing batting, uh, Mitchell Johnson's incredible all-round contribution, and some wonderful debuts. Uh, you've made this game a continuing and more exciting one, so thank you. South Africa, you're really great competitors. Congratulations on your amazing series win. Uh, we're delighted to watch a truly great team of sportsmen in the field and on the pitch. Thank you. I believe what we saw from you was just fantastic teamwork. Thank you. The standout contributions were many, but uh, you know, JP Dimini and, and Dale Stain were just amazing. So thank you. Uh, before I announce the three player of the match, I'd also like to thank everyone, everyone here and at home for digging in so strongly to support the McGrath Foundation. Our own uh, three mobile staff volunteers collected over $90,000 here at the ground and I thank you all for digging so deep. You've made a fantastic contribution and changed the lives of some cancer sufferers, so thank you. And now it's my great pleasure to announce the three mobile player of the match. And that is Peter Siddle for his fantastic bowling performance through, throughout the series. Peter, um, 17 first class matches and now four test matches. How much better is that than the uh, other 16 first class matches you played? Nah, definitely a lot better. It was, uh, nah, it's been tough work and over the last probably a few months and just working through it. But I'm nah, very pleased now that yeah, I'm going okay and it's great to get the victory today. Just give us an idea of your thoughts in those last, say, 15 minutes of that test match. Did you think the chance had gone? No, nah, I thought there was always a chance. It's, that's the funny thing with test matches. It usually comes down late in the fifth day to sort of get victory. And, yeah, lucky enough, obviously, we had a few chances a bit earlier on, and then lucky enough, we could finish it off at the end there, and yeah, just before the break. And how have you found it? It's been a, the series is all over in about three weeks. You've almost gone back to back to back test matches. How have you found that as a fast bowl? Yeah, obviously, it's been tough, and obviously, it's my first uh, test series, so it's a lot of yeah, a lot of hard work, and a lot of it's just something I've got to get used to and start uh, yeah looking towards for the future. But no, it was um, exciting and tough, and no, I just uh, can't wait for the next next few matches.
Well, mate, you've done terrific. Uh, eight wickets in the test match. The three mobile player of the match, Peter Siddle. Thanks, Peter. Well done, mate. I now ask Nigel to come back to the lectern and to announce the man of the series. So the three mobile man of the series is Graham Smith for his historic win, great captaincy and fantastic batting. I've just, I just got to quickly ask you, mate, I want to give you another, another trophy, but you can't hang on to it, so uh, hard luck, mate. Um, when did you decide today that you were going to bat? Well, I arrived here with no kit this morning, so I wasn't going to go out this morning. I was hoping that it wouldn't, need, wouldn't be needed, but uh, obviously as the day unfolded and uh, um, things got a little bit closer, I started to get a bit more nervous, I guess, and uh, off to tea with about 25 overs to go, I started to think about it. and. You know, once uh, we lost a few wickets, AB got out in the tailwind. Uh, you know, I decided I was going to go from sort of about 20 odd overs, and uh, I was really pleased that the guys managed to hold out for 100 odd balls and made my life a lot easier. And what about Makaya there? There, not. I've been watching Makaya play now for a dozen years. I've never seen him bat that long anywhere. Nets, uh, game, series. What about that today? How was that? How good was that? Well, uh, uh, look, I think. Um, both tails have played a big part in the series, you know, they've made uh, captains' lives nightmares. So, uh, you know, it was, it was really great to see that the guys have worked really hard in the nets. And I think just Dale and Makaya's uh, stand at the end there just epitomises the character of the team and, and what this team is all about. So it's a real, real privilege to watch guys really dig in and, uh, and really give it their all like that. And I'm going to ask you a few more questions in a moment when you come back to get that trophy. So, ladies and gentlemen, man of the series, Graeme Smith. Uh, as Nigel Jews mentioned, it's been a, a wonderful test match, not just because of the cricket, but because of what's happened and the money that's been raised for the McGrath Foundation. I can inform you that over $500,000 has now been raised for the Foundation. I'd like to invite to the lectern to say a few words a, a favourite son of this ground, a man who played 12 test, ma test matches here, Glenn McGrath. Well, thanks, Tub. Uh, firstly, let me say it's a, an honour to be standing here today. Uh, to, think back, to think what we've achieved over the last five days uh, still blows me away, and I know Jane would be very proud. Jane was an amazing person who had a real Jane was an amazing person who had a real love for life, and she used to say that every day was beautiful and something to be treasured. And I guess that's how we try to live our life each and every day. Uh, for something to, uh, to get come off like it has during this test match, um, it doesn't just happen overnight. And I guess on behalf of the McGrath Foundation, my family and myself, I'd like to thank so many people. Uh, a huge thank you to, to Cricket Australia, uh, Cricket New South Wales, uh, the Sydney Cricket and Sports Grounds Trust, uh, 3 Mobile, um, Channel 9 and Women's Weekly, with a special mention to the Channel 9 commentators. Uh, the Daily Telegraph, Adidas, and all other media that have uh, worked with us over the last, last little while. Um, I'd also like to say a special thank you to Ricky, uh, the Australian boys, and their partners for what um, the support you guys have given me is unbelievable. And you know, I love you guys, and I could never thank you enough. Um, To, uh, to Graham Smith and the South African team, uh, thank you very much for your support and I'd also like to congratul congratulate you guys for winning the series. You've played some awesome cricket. Well done. I'd also like to thank um, everyone at the McGrath Foundation uh, with a special mention of Kylie Tink and Tracy Bevan. Uh, you two guys is why this has been so successful um, and without you here, um, my job would have been a lot harder, and uh, thank you very much. Uh, you know, we've got some great things happening, and look forward to working again. As, uh, as Nigel mentioned, the volunteers that have come along here, uh, it still amazes me that uh, they would give their time up for, for myself and the Foundation and come here and do that. So a huge thank you to you guys. Um, to my family and friends, 
over the past six months, it's been pretty tough. And uh, without you guys, I'm sure I'm not sure I would have got through it. So uh, a huge thank you. And finally, to the crowd and everyone who came out and supported the boys, and everyone at home who uh, who supported the McGrath Foundation, uh, a huge, huge thank you. This is without you guys, this wouldn't be possible. And I'd like to finish off by thinking what we've achieved over the last last five days is amazing. And I stand here now a very, very proud Australian. And as we say at the McGrath Foundation, together we can make a difference. And I think we've definitely achieved that over the last five days. So thank you very much and have a great day. Thank you, Glenn McGrath. It's now my pleasure to welcome the Chairman of Cricket Australia, Mr Jack Clark. Thank you, Mark. We've seen this three mobile test series why test cricket is rightly regarded as cricket's premium format and the ultimate test of a cricketer's character and ability. Every match has ebbed and flowed and both teams have ch had chances to win every match. On behalf of Australian cricket, congratulations to Graham Smith and the South African team for the historic test win. Your victory is well deserved. To Ricky Ponting and the Australian team, not the series result you wanted, but true cricket followers admire your fighting qualities, particularly to come back and win this test. We look forward to the Commonwealth Bank series and the further three test matches between these two great sides to be played in South Africa in a few weeks' time. Thank you once again to 3Mobile for making it possible to stage this series, to Channel 9 and the ABC for their great coverage and to the print media for helping keep the public excited about Test cricket. Thank you also to the public for getting behind this series, either by attending or tuning in. And above all, thank you to 3Mobile, Channel 9 and the people of Sydney for their wonderful generosity and support of the McGrath Foundation throughout this, throughout this game. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. It's now my great pleasure to welcome to the stage the captain of Australia, Ricky Ponting. Ricky, as Jack mentioned, um, obviously a disappointing series result, but you've got to be proud of how the boys bounce back in this test match. Yeah, obviously, look, I'm very proud of the way we've played right through the series, to tell the truth. You know, I think, um, you know, the results, obviously, in the first couple of games weren't what we would have liked, but for different times uh, through those games, we were in good positions in the games, but we just weren't good enough to hold our position. And full credit to uh, Mickey and, and um, Graham Smith, the way the South Africans have played this series. It has been very, very good test cricket. They've been behind the eight ball and they've been able to bounce back and turn you know, pretty negative situations into very positive situations for their team. And that's a sign of a very good team. So congratulations to you guys. But as I said, Mark, I'm very proud of what, what we've done. Um, to fight back and win this test match was a, a great effort, especially with some of our younger guys coming in. And it's, it's always nice to get young players off to a, a winning start in their, in their test careers. Mate, just a quick word on um, your heart rate now. Is it back to about 140? Where was it about well, 15 minutes ago? It's been up about 180, 190 for the last hour and a half, I think. When I saw that storm coming in over the top of the grandstand there, I must admit uh, the blood pressure went up a little <laughs> bit. Um, and I was rushing around the field and trying to get guys organised and make bowling changes or whatever. But uh, luckily for us, the, the weather uh, held off and we've been just good enough to get across the line. Well, mate, thanks very much. It was a terrific series and you certainly played your part. Ladies and gentlemen, the captain of Australia, Ricky Ponting. I'd now like to welcome back to the stage the captain of the South African cricket team and ask Jack Clark to present him the trophy for winning the series 2-1, Mr Graham Smith. <laughs> Do you want to say a few words, Graham? Just one, just one quick question, mate. Obviously you're very proud of your players. You came over here, you played relaxed cricket and you seem to enjoy it. Yeah, look, I think uh, 2008 for us was an extremely successful year and um, there was a lot of hype and build-up going into the series and there's some fantastic cricketers on both, both sides of, of the fence here and I think uh, 
the best thing about this series was the way the, the series was played. Um, it was played in a great spirit. I think the fans came out and uh, they obviously support Australia, but they, they treated us with a lot of decency. And I think uh, Cricket Australia obviously gave us a, a huge amount of support uh, throughout the series. So thank you to everybody. I think to, to Ricky and his team, I think obviously, you know, we've got another series coming in South Africa and it's, it's been a hard fought series. And, I'm just really chuffed that we're on the winning side for the change. Well, mate, you did a terrific job. I'll ask you to welcome your team up on stage and get Jack Clark and Nigel Jews to leave the, the stage along with Glenn McGrath. Please, the South African cricket team, make them welcome. Winners of the series, 2-1. And it is with these fabulous scenes that we say goodbye after what has been one of the great test series. Graham Smith, a wonderful leader. He's taking to South Africa to places they couldn't have dreamt of only a few years ago. Ricky Ponting can look forward to a new era, but in the moment, or at the moment, he must watch these celebrations as the champagne flows. Will those guys have a party tonight or what? Three test matches in Perth, in Melbourne and in Sydney that have captured our imagination from first until last. There have been some quite brilliant individual performances. We can have a last word here from Shane Warne and from Tony Gregg. It's really been spectacular to watch. Oh, it's been a wonderful summer and all credit to both sides. They both played well, but in the end, South Africa were the best side. I, as far as I'm concerned, it's great that we've got some competitive cricket happening in test match, at the test match level and uh, South Africa does get to that point. Competitive cricket at test match level. We'll look at those scenes. We've got about uh, half a minute before we get to news, so all of you hanging on for news, don't worry, we're right there. All I can tell you is we've had drama here at the Sydney Cricket Ground today that was barely believable. Australia thought they'd won this test match until Graham Smith, with his two injuries, came to the middle to attempt to defy them. It was Smith who was bowled out by Mitchell Johnson. It's been a wonderful and hard-fought series, and Macarantini's smile at the end there and his resilience seem to sum it up. We hope you've enjoyed it. We hope you'll be with us for the one-day matches to come. Until then, from all of us at the Nine Network, goodbye. <laughs>